Good morning and welcome to the Jamaica Creative Career Expo. Please stand for the national anthem. You can't outrun the simple truth. There is just something about Jamaica. Yes, it is the land itself, rising up out of the Caribbean Sea like a colorful, warm promise. A place where discipline and training meets the winning spirit of a people who not only know how to make champions from humble beginnings, but also how to win and win graciously for everyone. But it is also the Jamaican people who have raced through time and history, producing a larger-than-life culture that lifts everyone higher, then cools you down with the life-giving heartbeat reggae music. Jamaican music grabs you by the beat of your pants, moves your feet, stirs your heart, and satisfies your soul. And here in the land where 96 degrees in the shade is a joyous song, our artists craft one love from wood and metal and even the screen. As if fashioning next level concepts, designs and style from every rocks, the sea, the sand. And yet sometimes antique pieces rise up from ages past to excite and to wow you. Our fashion designers bring the natural mystic to clothe bodies and feet, while our world-class supermodels strut where angels fear to tread. It is not paradise, but there's a heavenly taste to the food, and that spirit in the rum makes it almost paradise. The aromas, the spices, the tastes bring that warm feeling to your body and that ah feeling to your face heavenly. Here in Jamaica, the spirit of imagination whispers in the hungry ears of our literary artists. Lyrical genius resounds in dub poetry and spoken word, but sometimes it's as quiet as pen on paper. Either way, the voices of generations are just keyboard and mouse clicks away. Our performing artists, like soul athletes, soar with sound, rhythm, and color to bring dance, music, and drama alive in places that you never even knew had a pulse. The steadiness of the Jamaican cultural and creative industry is remarkable. From the historical theaters and dramatic forms to the dance halls where we link up for feats of magical movement. The creative energy here is vibrant and alive, just like the culture. Here, the race is not only for the swift, but also for the culture that endures in an industry that is growing brighter day by day. This way of living is how we are meant to, meant to be, champions of love, life, and liberty. Jamaica boasts a diversity in culture, true to our motto, out of many, one people. Please welcome to the stage, Rainice Barrett, 
a soloist with the University Singers, performing to dream the impossible dream. To dream, to dream the impossible dream to fight the unbeatable foe to bear Please welcome to the stage our hosts for this morning, Dr. Terry Carell Reed and Roshane Rushkam Campbell. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, I want to tell you hi, but first of all, can we speak about Renice Barrett? Wow. Can we do can, a better job? Can we get a wow? Can we? Yeah. I actually thought she was worthy of a standing ovation. But that's Agreed. just me. I thought she was worthy of a standing ovation. What you were just in the presence of is a creative. Yes. When you may not, it's not necessarily tangible, but when you are in the presence of a creative, you feel it. They move, they transcend. I got goosebumps. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the university singers, because maybe you live under a rock, they are the standard bearer in the Caribbean, not just the English-speaking Caribbean, but the entire region. 
They are excellent and they are the standard. Top tier. You see me over here? I'm like, yes. <gasps> yes. She but looks Terry, stunning. creativity touches everything we do. Look at you. You look amazing. You Thank know who you. did your dress? A creative. Doesn't Thank she look amazing? <laughs> and I mean, Terry, I forgive me about the compliment. Terry, Terry. Terry, what you have for me? What you have for me? Come down. And I was about to say okay. that we cannot speak about creatives without um, supporting our local designers. Right. And I do believe you're wearing the Carlton Brown. Right. Can I? So, you know, the question is, why are we here? You know, over the years, we've been creatives. People have told us that we are talented, that we have all of these gifts. But then if you speak to some of our parents back in the day and we told them that we want to be singer, they'd conk in your head and say, go, you better become a doctor, you know. And if you said you want to become a professional dancer, they'd say, well, yeah, that now go pay you no money. And if you are talented and you are a painter, they'd say, well, yeah, go do it, that. That now we put food on you, table. table. But today at Jamaica Creative, first of its kind, a career expo, we are here to really salute and to honor our creatives Creative. and the orange economy. And the creative industry is a growing, the strongest, the fastest growing industry in the world. And Terry, when I think about high school, I'm like, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm a trained attorney. And if I went to my mother and said, mom, I'm going to a creative conference, she would say, tell me how it goes, because this is it. I'm not going to hear from you again. But let's get into some protocols. Absolutely. Yeah. So, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our Honorable Minister, Olivia Babsley Grange, Minister in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sports. And even though she's not here with us, certainly she will be en route and she will join us later on. We also would like to acknowledge uh, our state minister within the same ministry, the Honorable Alanda Terrellong, who will also join us later on, hopefully. Another creative, by the way. Yes, we'd also like to acknowledge Mr. Denzel Thorpe, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. We say good morning to Her Excellency, Emina Tudokovic. We also say good morning to His Ex Her Excellency, Dr. Maureen Tamuno. To Mr. Yuri Peshko, Doble Utra. Dr. Sadia Sanchez Vegas, good morning to you. Mr. Alessandro Martinotti. We also say good morning to Mr. Frank Bernat. And of course, we could not acknowledge all of these persons without actually acknowledging the presence and the hard work of the National Director of Jamaica Creative, Marissa Benin. So we want to thank you all for being here. It's of very, course. very, very important that you guys are here with us. And we know that you're coming from all over Jamaica, different high schools. We know you're watching us on Zoom. And so we feel like we should take a little roll call. Terry, what do you say? Absolutely. So we know that we have our esteemed keynote speaker who we cannot wait to hear from. Oh, yes. We have amazing presenters and we have panelists. We have creators and we have students in the audience because the thing is the Jamaica Creative is not about being a talk shop. No. There are a lot of conferences and seminars that are talk shops. What Jamaica Creative wants to do, the, the fundamental objective is to get students, the high schoolers, the college students, to integrate and to actually interface with the industry experts. And so we welcome our presenters, our students, and those of you who could not be here in person, but who are watching via all the Facebook pages, we thank you so very much. So, because we know that we have students, we do something called a roll, roll call. call. I love all a roll right. call. Listen, by the way, I know you're sitting at tables based on your okay. industries and whatever, but when I call your school name, I need a little noise. Please. It, it's creative. I know. Daddy, daddy, something. All right? So, can I hear it for Troy? Hi. Troy. Come. <laughs> Troy. You know, since just the other day, I learned about Troy. Hi. Troy. And I love the fact that it's just two of you, or maybe three of you. Look here. It's four of you. Troy sound like 17 people. St. Jago. St. Jago is on Zoom, Terry. Online, maybe. All Online. Right. Not the problem. Yes. Monroe. Monroe. Monroe still stuck in traffic. St. Catherine High. I born and raised in Portmore, 27 years of my life. Big up St. Catherine St. High Catherine, every single time. Early. I love that. I love that. So let me hear it for hmm, Manchester High. Are you here? Why me call the school? Cornwall College. 
Oh. All right, Terry, all right. Me, me could, mm, bridge for a tie. Not bridge for a tie, I'm gonna need something. More. You know bridge for a tie. Bridge for a tie. Woo! All right. St. Catherine, please. Bridgeport High is like five minutes from our house, and I thought you guys were going to do like a <laughs> real, you know? Welcome, Bridgeport High. St. Hughes? The St. Swan? No. Terry, can, oh. I dro can, I dro can I go a little up and then come out? Can I go to Yui? Yui, are you here? <laughs> wow. Terry, which school you used to go? What about? Which school you used to go, Terry? Which school you used to go? Campion College. Champion College, ready strong? Ready strong? No. Okay. Ready strong. All right. What about Mount Alvernia High School? On Zoom. Zoom? UTEC? <laughs> Big up to UTEC. I, I have a student or groups of Herbert Morrison. Herbert Morrison, one student. Shout out now, please. No. Love that. Thank you to all <laughs> one of you. Okay, Woolmers. <laughs> present, present <laughs> students. But we appreciate you for representing Dahlia and Mikey over there. Kingston College. I never saw the sun and the wind man in Coppina. I knew, I knew he was going to say that. How about VTDI? Vocational Training Development Institute, fantastic institute. All right, they might be on their way, or maybe they're joining us via Zoom. That's all right. We're happy that everyone is here. Absolutely, all absolutely. Right. So, Terry, I would like everyone to do me a favor. Look on the table, in the center of the table, you see a nice card with a QR code. It unlocks something very special. Yes, everybody is like, <laughs> prize. I just love people who get it. You know, the yeah. students know exactly what to do. There's a QR code. When you scan that code, you should get access to this beautiful, I mean, perfectly curated digital magazine, magazine that will give you more information about the objectives of this Jamaica Creative yes. Career Expo. And more information on our panelists Absolutely. and what industries are available, job opportunities, occupation, and so on. All right, so I think that is it for housekeeping. Again, thank you so very much to those of you who are watching via Facebook, whether it is the MCGES Jamaica page, Jamaica Creative 876, our streaming partners, PBC Jamaica and the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. Thank you so very much for being here. We cannot wait to get into the discussion. And so, the show begins. Now, when I think of trifecta, and I think of triple threat, I think dance, acting, drama, and a little song, I think of the stalwarts, Ashe. They have won wonderful, amazing international awards. When them sing and bust the place and dance and everything, everybody just says, woo, 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 can I get a woo, woo, woo? So can I get a woo, woo, woo for Ashe? As they, oh, me never mean real woo, 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 people. Round of applause for Ashe as they present, this is me. This is me. 
I think they get better and better each time we see them. And that is what Roshkam was speaking about when he referred to the fact that can dance. Can and I've had the privilege of seeing Asha perform on world stages. And I consider them to be ambassadors of Jamaica. Every time they step on a stage, you get the feeling that you're in the presence of authentically what is. And I feel it is like a Jamaican. lot of homegrown talent comes from Asha. When you look at people who have made it on the international scene, they started at Asha. Asha, you can start at Asha from five all the way up here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the song is not by chance, right? No. This is me. This is we me. have persons who are in traditional institutions who are studying maybe traditional uh, subjects and careers, and there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes they feel out of place because they are really meant to be creative, food, fashion, performing arts, film, sport. And sometimes we feel out of place because we don't feel as if our place is necessarily there. And so when you hear the words of the song saying, this is me, and this is what Jamaica Creative uh, Career Expo is all about. And I'm happy to be here because I feel like this is an opportunity to empower the next generation. Because you know, you're just like, boy, you know, how am I going to do it? And this gives you the roadmap or sort of a roadmap in how to get there. And the panelists will definitely help us to figure it out. But before we get to the panelists, 
I have a challenge for you. Lion King challenge. Tell me more. I'm going to... Tell me more. Where you have... Tell me more. Dance. Give me a, give me a tour. Tell me more. Give me a... a because I did tell you. No, I said ah, singing that time is now. A, so, so we don't get a forward for that. <laughs> Thank you. I was, I, was I mean, Terry, I was doing my audition. <laughs> I mean, okay. And if you're gonna do an audition, you might as well do it here because this is the place, right? That right. But let's talk about it. Disney is known for creating some of the best animations, movies, hands down. And I say this unapologetically when Top I tier. say that the best Disney anything to ever come out of anywhere is the Lion King. And so much of a stalker <laughs> am I when it comes to the Lion King. Where's the pamphlet? We went to New York and we watched it. I know all of the choreography. Give me a little giraffe. The giraffe. And then I took my daughter recently to the UK and I said, you must experience the Lion King, Broadway, the costumes and everything. And Jamaica is everywhere. Absolutely. Because when you look at Lion King across the world, there's a Jamaican in every single production. Come on. Absolutely. We're little but we tell our whole find ourselves Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So there are 10 productions all over the world. And I believe, except for Tokyo, maybe, he's right. Not only Jamaicans, because we're also one Caribbean. So not just Jamaicans, we're also looking at the collaborative effort with the presence of Caribbean yes. people as well. So the question is, are we thinking too small when we think of ourselves as creatives? Are we thinking globally? Do we believe that we, we know we have the impact, but do we believe that we can actually contribute to make that impact even bigger? Well, we couldn't ask for a better. I thought about it and I was like, who would be the most amazing guest speaker to speak at our first ever Jamaica Creative Career Let Expo? Let us introduce him, shall we? Let's hear it. Our guest speaker for the event is the world music supervisor for Disney's The Lion King. He's applause, I'm sorry, applause. We need yeah. to listen, listen. No, listen. I was like, the, the audience and I get it, Terry. So I'm going to read sorry. it over, Continue. right? Right. No, I'm going to start from the top. Our guest speaker for the event is the world music supervisor for Disney's The Lion King. Oh. Only can work in the audience. He's of Caribbean descent and is the first and only black man to ever hold this position with the Lion King. I don't want to give his name away yet, no. but he oversees the staging and restaging of all Lion Kings around the world. He also auditions all the singers for the musical. Can this I hear is that where again? I, this is when I'm going to all. hint, I'm going to wink to all of the singers, them in the room. If you want to just burst out in song for absolutely no reason, this would be the place to do it. He also auditions all the singers for the musical. And he also intends to host voice workshops while he's here in Jamaica. And in case you're asking, because wow. we did say he's of Caribbean descent. I heard him this morning on Smile Jamaica with Dalia Harris and Mar uh, Marissa Benin, and he said, unfortunately, I'm not Jamaican. You got stripes for that. You got stripes for that. Close he said, enough. He said, but I am Bayesian, and I said, don't worry, we claim, we claim all of you. Land of the flying ship. Ladies big, big and man. gentlemen, yes. students all, those of you who are in the room, those of you who are watching via Zoom, please put your hands together for the one and the only Mr. Clement Ishmael. Clement Ishmael. Clement Ishmael is a British-born Canadian composer, conductor, and arranger. He is currently worldwide music supervisor for Disney's The Lion King. Conducting credits include Abbey Players Opera Company, Addison Jazz Ensemble, and West London Gospel Choir. 
West End credits include Five Guys Named Mo, Ain't Misbehaving, and Smokey Joe's Cafe. He has also written and arranged the music for numerous shows and plays. His classical compositions and arrangements have been performed worldwide, as well as being broadcast on television and radio. A concert of his songs, Deep Like the Rivers, was performed in Toronto and in London, and is due to be performed again in 2022. His latest project is the music of the musical Playboy of the West Indies, which will be open in Birmingham in June as part of the Commonwealth Games. Thank you. Uh, can you all hear me? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for that um, unexpected, amazing introduction. Um, I'm so honored to be part of this uh, Jamaican Creative Career Expo, and uh, I'm amazed at all of that, but thank you very much. So I have a, I'm going to do a very short talk, really basically about myself and how I got to where I am today in the hope of encouraging people to do the same. Um, so you've, you, you've all been told who I am. Um, and what I do, I've been doing the Lion King now for musical supervising it for 17 years. So that's a long time. <laughs> um, and, and what the job entails is, is the upkeep, the quality of the show. I'm quality control, so anything to do with music, it's down to me. And um, as your host said, there are, there are actually 10 productions worldwide at the moment and I'm responsible for all of them. And there are, there are Jamaicans in, as she said, there are Jamaicans in every single production except the ones in Tokyo and Fukuoka. So there's two, in, there's two in Japan. And there's no Jamaicans in that. They have to speak Japanese. So that's not gonna happen. But, um, well, actually I don't know. <laughs> because because we, we have um, Jamaicans who are speaking Spanish, German, all over the world now. So um, that's interesting. So yes, I shouldn't say no. But the Japanese, it's an all Japanese company, so there are no, it's the only, it's the only um, company that doesn't have any South Africans in it. So, so that, that's the one in Tokyo. So there, and we just opened one in Paris and there's Jamaicans in there as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a quite a global concern and I'm actually very proud to be a part of that. And when I come to Jamaica, I see a lot of talent, a lot of talent, as, as you saw today. And it's, I want, I'm hoping to be a part of exploring that talent and moving it forward. Because when we do come and audition people here, a lot of times we see the talent, but they're not ready. So how do they become ready? And I think something like this, the uh, Jamaican Expo, is something that is going to help and encourage and push the talent forward to the place where we can actually hire them and put them straight into a show. So that's, that's very important. And as far as Disney is concerned, we, we want to impact. The show is set in Africa, so there are black people in it. And it's very important to have black people. I'm a, I want my people in the show as much as possible. So that's, that's a very important part of it for me. So I thought, I thought today I would talk about how I got to where I was, how I started. I was born in a city called Leicester. Has anyone ever heard of it? I cannot believe it. I, yes. My, my, my parents came over from Barbados, and I was born in this city. I never even said it was Leicester. I used to say I was born like 95 miles north of London in the Midlands because nobody knew where it was until Leicester won the World Cup. Not, not the World They won the Premiership. Do you remember that? Just a few years ago, yeah. Then put Leicester on the map, so I thought, well, I can say who I am now. So yes, I was born in Leicester, which is a city in the Midlands, in the middle of, of, of England. And it's about, it's a little less, it's a little smaller than Kingston. So there are about 400,000 people in there. So I was born there. It wasn't a very inauspicious start. We, were, we didn't have any money. But my family moved into a house that had an upright piano. It was a huge piano that, that wasn't moved that couldn't be moved, and so the people, the tenants before us left the piano there and couldn't afford any lessons or anything like that, but there was a piano. So I actually started playing the piano when I was about three. So, so that's how music kind of came into my life that way. 
And I continued studying. I studied in, in um, England and then I went to, uh, went to Canada and continued there. So, so that's basically my background. Not an not a auspicious start, but uh, <laughs> this poor kid from Leicester who went to Toronto and then ended up in London. I'll explain a little bit how that happened later. But I wanted to also say, in looking about, um, look, thinking about my life and how I got to the place where I was now, in the hope of encouraging you, I was coming to Jamaica and I realized that the three people in my life who, who impacted me the most were actually Jamaicans. And um, which, is, which was a surprise to me. I, I, there's Jamaicans everywhere, all over the world, as you know, as you know. But for me, they, they impact me, impacted me really greatly, and I would, like to, I would really like to talk about that a little bit. And the first person that I met um, was a woman called Joyce Britton. She was from Jamaica. Does anybody know Joyce? She's just the most amazing person. She went to, Ju she went to Juilliard and studied voice, and then um, she went to Toronto. And that's where I met her for the first time because a friend of mine was studying with her and she, she um, invited me down to hear her sing and then Joyce asked me to play for uh, the auditions for, and, the, and the actual concerts that she used to put on. So I did that and then I started taking lessons with her. And it was hugely impactful because she taught me everything I know about the voice. She talked... She would talk about Jean Scorby, who she studied in New York, and she was passing everything from Jean Scorby down to all her students, and she passed it all down to me. And I can honestly say that every time I work with anybody vocally, it's all Joyce. Everything she taught me, I try and teach everyone else. So that's, that's she, had, she had an amazing impact on me, and she was from Jamaica. So that was, that's... That, that is the first person who, who, who I met. And, and I do want to say to all the students out there, education is extremely, extremely important. You have to study hard to get where you are. And I know I, all these people who are performing on stage, who are performing in Jamaica, have jobs, in very important jobs. But it's very so difficult to be a musician, an artist, a creator. You have to be, you have to have your law degree, your chemistry degree, whatever it is. That seems to me the, um, the going concern of Jamaica. So it's really important to be able to survive as, a, as an artist. And it's very difficult. It's not easy. So I want to be part of the process to help people who need that, who need the encouragement, who needs the support. And it's financial support. Everybody, is there anybody in the house here? It's financial support as well. That's what people do need in order to achieve. And you have so many people away from home in, in, other, in, um, in other parts of the world who are flying the Jamaican flag. They really are. And it's the creatives that are doing that. Not just the creatives, but it, they are doing it a lot. So the second person that I met was, um, in, was her name was Denise Nossis Mare. Does anybody know her? Has anybody heard of her? Denise Nossis Mare? She was, she was a professor at, at Queen's in Canada. So I, I, moved, I moved to Toronto. I continued my studies there. I went to U, U of T. And with Joyce, I started to sing. And so I joined a choir at the university. And Denise was the conductor there. So she was fierce and scary. Um, and I don't know what, she, she impacted me completely because of her passion for music, but she took no prisoners. She was that kind of person. She was a black woman that was out on a mission. Uh, she she um, conducted the choir. We went to, we did two European tours with her. It was total and amazing. It was an amazing experience, actually, being under her tutelage. So, but I was very scared of her. I really was, to be completely honest, because um, she was so fierce. And she, after, two year, after a couple of years, we did two tours, she asked me to be her associate conductor at the Royal um, Conservatory of Music in Toronto. And I was really nervous about doing it, 
but I thought, yes, I'll do it. It's not going to be easy, but because uh, she's a tough person. So I did. And that, after I did that, after I made that decision, I didn't live to regret it, but it was very, very tough. She taught me how I always need to, you always need to be prepared for what you do. There was one incident which I still, which gives me palpitations when I think about it now. I had to rehearse. She, we were rehearsing a, it was a, actually a Bach chorale. Hadn't practiced. I thought I was good. I thought I could say read it. I came to rehearsal and she, she ripped me apart because I didn't, I couldn't play it perfectly. And I never forgot that. She, she castigated me up, side down, sideways, left and right, in front of everyone, of course. So it was, I was totally humiliated. And, but I'll tell you one thing, I have never gone into a space unprepared since then. And I, I honestly do think, or as tough as it is, we need those people in our lives who are going to say, you need to do this. And, um, and it, for me, it was Denise Narciss Mayer. She, she taught me what it meant to be a proper practicing musician. And she pushed me on the road to conducting. And I did not realize it at the time, but she was just tough on me because I was black. I was the only black person in the choir that, that time. So it was hard, but she stood me in good stead. So I, I, I'm publicly thanking Denise, she's passed. Denise Narciss met another Jamaican for that. So, so thanks to her. So, so what, what, what has helped me in my career more than anything else is, is being bold. Being bold in the decision making that I've, that I've made. I'm, quite, I'm really quite a shy person. I don't mind sticking behind the piano and, and um, not and just playing my music but stepping out stepping up into the spotlight that's tough to do it's for somebody like me and i'm sure i'm sure it's the same for a lot of you so the career choices that you make you have to make bold ones you have to you have to step out of your comfort zone and try new things that's the only way you're going to find out whether you can do it or not and i had i do have three quotes that I'm going to, to touch on, but one of the quotes that, that um, means the most to me is, is it's about boldness. It's by Goethe, a uh, 17th century German writer. He said, whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. So that, for me, is a mantra that I keep here. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it, start it. Start it, because if you're bold, that has genius, power, and magic in it. It's a great quote. I love that. So, so that's, that's what has helped me make my, the, the decisions that I've made in my life. Be bold. Take it on. Go to the Jamaican Expo and speak. I'm out of my comfort zone right now, because this is not something that I would do normally. <laughs> But, um, but I think it's important to try these things, and, uh, and that's, that's one of the things. So, to, so be bold. Um, I want to now go on to, to the third person. In fact, in fact, before I do that, let me just read you the second quote, because this applies to us all. There are some things we can only achieve by a deliberate leap in the opposite direction. One has to go abroad to find the home one has lost. And that's also dear to me. Uh, I, in Jamaica, well, so many Jamaicans are around the world left Jamaica to go on and do something, something else in another part of the world. And when I was in Toronto and after I graduated, I thought, okay, I need to do something else. I need to kind of push myself. I need to be, surround myself with people who are excellent and better than me to, in order for me to improve. I mean, in that, and again, it's making those decisions. You're out of your comfort zone. I was, happy, I was doing choirs. I was conducting in Toronto. But I needed something else. And so I made a decision to move. And I just left. 
I left and I, I was going to go to, it was the choice was London or New York. And I was like, I was born in England, so I could work there. So I went to London and I went to the Guildhall of Music and I studied composition and conducting there. And it was tough. And it was a really hard decision to make. And all my family back home were like, and my friends were, no, don't go, you're doing fine here, this is great. But I knew here that it wasn't fine. I needed to be better and I needed to move. And it's really funny because when I, went, when I go back in the future, you know, I went back and I was doing okay in London and, and my family, my, my, my friends would say, oh, we're so glad that we encouraged you to go. You made the right decision. I have to roll my eyes because I know they were the, they were the ones that said, don't go. So when it comes to making decisions, you make them for yourself. Don't let people make them for you. Because at the end of the day, they will come along and they will, and they will actually take credit for it. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know what I mean? But, but honestly, it's your life and you're the only person that can lead, uh, uh, use it and lead it, okay? So, so be bold. I made, a, I made a decision to go to London and that's what I did. And that's when I met the third Jamaican whose name was Len Garrison. Does anybody know Len? Sadly, well, I'm showing my age because all these people are now past. But Len Garrison, was, he was part of ASA. Um, of, um, let me see, ASA. It's, it's the African Caribbean Educational Resource Project. He started that in, in London. And also, he was co-founder of the Black Cultural Archives. So he was, he was instrumental in bringing black artists and historians together. And we, we found each other, I think I was at um, uh, a mutual event and he was there and he, I told him I was a composer, blah, blah, blah. And that just lodged in his brain and the next minute you know, he had commissioned a, a work from me. And it was, I wrote the Marcus Garvey Suite and he, we performed it at the Queen Elizabeth Hall it was great, and it piloted me into my first professional composition performances. And that was Len Garrison, again, Jamaican. So, you know, so, so I, have a lot, I have a lot to be thankful for um, being here and making this, making this speech. So I performed that, and, and after that I did another piece. He commissioned another piece at the Queen Elizabeth Call, which was um, Pushkin Song Cycle. And we had uh, four composers on the bill. I was on the bill. There was, it was performed by all black artists and sung by all, um, there were all black singers. It was an amazing event. And it brought together a lot of classical black musicians that were working in London at the time, but didn't know of each other, because we don't. We just don't. We just work in our own kind of sections. And Glenn, um, Len brought us all together and we performed at this concert, which was amazing. And at that concert was um, a person called, a guy called Ron Avant, who was playing harpsichord in my piece. And he said to me, listen, you know, I'm not feeling very well. I'm doing a show in, uh, in Oxford, Ain't Misbehaving. Would you, would you take over for me? because I'm just not, not well. And I didn't want to do it because I wasn't really interested in music theatre, to be completely honest. But uh, I said yes. Again, I made a decision. I, it was out of my comfort zone. He gave me this massive score, Fats Waller. I, it was unbelievably hard to do. And, and I did it. Not very well. I did it, though. And he called me up again and said, could you continue with the tour because I'm still not going to be well. So I actually went to Liverpool and that's when I practiced. I practiced and got it because it was, we did Liverpool and then Manchester and then and continued on touring. And that show, I practiced, I, I remember practicing like four or five hours a day just to get it. So practice, practice, and that was Denise in my head, be prepared. So I practiced and, and I did that show and uh, Clark Peters, who's an actor, do you, you know Clark? Does anybody know Clark? He was in The Wire. He was in Spike Lee's last film um, with uh, Chadwick Boseman. He's quite famous. Anyway, Clark came to, to the show 
And he said to me, listen, I'm doing a new show called Five Guys Named Mo, and it's Louis Jordan Peace. Would you be, would you MD it? And again, I was like, no, because I don't really want to do music theater, but here we go. I'll, I'll do it because it's four weeks. So I went and did that show, and four weeks, um, Cameron, it, it just exploded because it was the first time we had a band, live band on stage. Cameron McIntosh came to see the show, and he brought the rights in the interval. It just went global. It's, and so I, then I was, I was in music theater, and that's how I, I, I kind of fell into it, I guess. So, so I went to um, Australia with the show. I went, did it in the West End. And after that, every black show in town, it was me. So, so, so I, I, start, I did show after show after show in town, Smokey Joe's Cafe, uh, Soul Train, Grapevine. Um, uh, and I found that I was, I was now heavily ensconced in music theater, which I actually began to love which I began to love. But then I thought, okay, this is, it's time for me now to move back to my roots, which is composition and conducting. And, and um, a friend of mine came to see me. I was in Smokey Joe's at, in the West End at the time. He said, listen, I've got, um, I'm doing a new show called The Lion King. And it's supposed to be, it's great. You should, why don't you do it? And I was like, not, not really, because I'm thinking about leaving. I'm thinking about going back into my writing more, um, more full time. So my agent said, go see it, because it's amazing. So I went, I went to see it in New York, and then I thought, oh, maybe I could do this. Because I'll, t I'll tell you what was, what, what the impact it had on me was, um, I love it, yes, it's set in Africa, and there are a lot of black people in it, but it's not just a black show. They compartmentalize us all the time. Let's, put, let's do this black show. Let's do that black show. Let's do that other show. But this is a show that involves everybody, but it focuses black people. And that was the difference for me, and I thought, this is different. This is, this is, and the music was great, and it was written. And I had met um, Lebo in, New, in London. I did um, a, a, an event with him uh, with the gospel choir, and I was playing for it. So he... Um, so he told me about the show also. So I got it from both sides, and I thought, yes, I can do it. And that was in 1999. So I came, and I conducted the show, um, associate conductor. I took over after a year, and then I started supervising Europe, then Asia, and then the world. And, so, and here I am. So I just want to say it's, it's, you don't know where, where life is going to take you. Uh, but you have to be flexible and take these opportunities as they, as they come. You don't know where they're going to lead, but be bold. Take them. I had not, this is not what I expected to do. If you, if I, if you spoke to the 17-year-old um, me and said, what, do you, what would you be doing in your career? It would not be this. It would not be this. But, but my choices have taken me to this moment and, and, and now I use the, the, I have the influence of Joyce, Joyce Britton, who is, who I'm teaching people how to sing in the show. She's right there. Denise Narciss Mayer, who tells me, be prepared all, in everything you do. Len, who is telling me, you know, you, you can conduct, you can write your own music, present it and do it. These voices are still going around in my head, and I feel that I've come full circle now because I feel I can do anything. Um, yes, I am doing, um, we're, we're actually auditioning now for the new musical Playboy at the West Indies, which I wrote the music for, which is, which is hopefully opening, it's opening in June, in a, couple, in a few months. So um, all these things, I don't think I would have had the courage or the energy to do without the people who were piloting and pushing me, and the fact that I'd made difficult decisions at crucial points in my life. So I would encourage you all to do the same. Um, since I, I, I was speaking about three Jamaicans who, who had an impact in my life, I went to three of my friends from Jamaica who actually live in London, and I said, listen, I'm going to be going to Jamaica and, and making, doing a little talk. Would you, would you send a statement for me? 
would you give me a statement? And so they did. So I want to read them for you now. The first, the first statement is from Shelley. Shelley Maxwell. So I suppose Shelley, uh, for those of you who don't know, it seems that you mostly do. She, she, she's working all the time. She's an extraordinary movement director, choreographer, and she's just finished. Um, she just did How Do They Come, which is in the West End. She's working on a movie right now. Uh, she's just always working. So this is what Shelley says. Uh, believe in yourself and what you have to offer. That self-belief will provide the important fuel for the long path to realizing your dreams. That's Shelley. So. The second Jamaican is David, David Blake. Very popular, David. So David, I met David as a dancer. And David now is, literally, he's, he's acting and he's performing in the show right now as Banzai. He's playing one of the leads. Singing, he's not, he's not dancing so much. He's singing and acting in the show right now in London. He's got, he's, he does his choreography. He's done a lot of stuff. We've done one, stuff, one piece of um, music together, which was amazing. So, um, yeah, and of course, I know David was going to say something about taking advantage of your situation where you are. So this is what David says. He says, bloom wherever you have been planted by taking advantage of the opportunities you have in your life. And most of all, be grateful. That sums up David to me a lot. So, David, thank you. And finally, finally, Joanna, Joanna Francis. So Joanna is an actor, fantastic actor and singer. And this is what Joanna says. Take that chance, even if it's a road less traveled. You can never win a battle you've never fought, and you will never predict the outcome of something you've never tried. No journey taken in life is void of risk. So you might as well choose to take said risk on something that makes you happy and fulfills you completely. That's Joanna, thank you. So, so I mean, um, I, think, I think for me, I just want to, want to close, right, by, by saying how important it is to, to be bold, to, be, to make those decisions for yourself and for your life, because that's what's, that's what's impacted most most on, on me, on my life, and really put me where I am today, this poor kid from Leicester who just so happened to have a piano which half the keys didn't work. I have moved gradually, step by step by step by step. And it's a journey, you know, you, take, you do take it step by step. You don't suddenly get to this place. It's a process, and it takes a long time. So I'm just gonna clo close again with my favorite quote, which is, which is the bold quote. Let me just find it for you. Um, yes. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. So be bold, everybody, and dream big. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I think we can do a better job than that, right? It's, it's interesting that sometimes people see you at the peak of your career without actually knowing where it is you're coming from. And there are a lot of gems and a lot of nuggets and things that we can relate to, to what he said. The biggest takeaways for me sometimes is that we think people are out to get us, right? because someone is hard on you. We blame, we make excuses, but what he's saying is that, listen, sometimes, you know, these people are strategically placed in your lives to get you to move to another level. So as creatives, we can't be egotistical. You have to drop the ego and you have to be willing to be open and to learn. The other ones, of course, is that preparation will eat talent for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So no matter how great you think you are, you are to always be prepared. He spoke about hard work, good work ethics, experimenting, being bold in the decisions that you make. 
And something that was a common thread that I thought was very interesting is ask yourself as a creative, what is the legacy you want to leave? He's standing here in the position he's in because of the legacy that was left by people who impacted him. So as a creative, the idea is not for you to just be me, 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 it's all about me, but it is how will I impact the people who I come in contact with? Sir Ishmael, thank you so very much. So going back to the objective, and we have a fantastic announcement that we'd like to make at the end, right? Because I told you that it's not a talk shop. What this is, is putting you guys in the same room with industry experts. But at the end of the day, some of you will get internships. You will be gifted with the opportunity of making an impression with some of the panelists who are here, correct? And so you would have handed in some resumes and we just want you to stay around to the end to find out who those persons are. So what has the Jamaica Creative done? They looked at the orange economy, they looked at the topic that is creative industries, and we've broken down the panel discussions into four areas. The first panel discussion that we will be starting will be the performing arts. And hello, welcome, welcome, thank you for being here. So we'll be starting with the performing arts and film. And at this time, we'd like you to meet the panelists. The real life heroes of stage and screen are seen behind the scenes. They may not stop bullets or leap over tall buildings, but their magic is in their contributions to our cultural and creative industries. Delia Harris, Saeed Thomas, Michael Holgate, and Greg Sims are creative producers and professionals of the first order. Their body of work stands out strongly in the businesses and institutions they develop, manage, or lead. CEO of DMH Productions Limited, Delia Harris, has steadily made her mark as a writer, actress, producer, and director, mounting several award-winning and critically acclaimed theatrical and television productions. Among them are Jamaica's top-ranked television dramas Ring Games and Thicker Than Water. A multiple nominee and winner of Jamaica's Actor Boy Awards, she has penned, produced, and directed 14 stage plays. Her work in theatre has earned her a place in the Caribbean Hall of Fame, the Bigger High Achievers Award, and the Flair Magazine Distinguished Woman Award. Delia was also recognized by the All Woman Magazine as one of the 20 women who rocked 2020. She is the convener of the Jamaica Women in Theatre Festival. Channeling passion into a career, Saeed Thomas is a creative professional who worked his way from the ground up. He is the co-founder and managing director of M1, a Jamaica-based full-service video production company that aims to deliver creative, cost-effective solutions for video content. Their curated staff and network of video creatives represents the evolution of the video production industry. A recipient of the 2020 Prime Minister's Youth Awards for Arts and Culture, Saeed's journey has taken him from being a stage technician in 2012 to backstage assistant into stage management and audio for film and video. He has collaborated on projects with renowned international companies and organizations such as Hulu and UNICEF. Saeed has worked on numerous short films and was selected as a participant of the Clermont Ferrand 2020 Euro Connection program with his script Black Girl in the Ring. His most recent produced work is a Jamaican short drama, Sugarcake. Holgate, as artistic director, works alongside executive director Conroy B. Wilson to lead a team of multifaceted performers, content creators, teachers, and social intervention specialists. Holgate's work extends to the University of the West Indies, where he is the head of the Philip Sherlock Center for the Creative Arts. His extensive body of work includes Garvey the Musical for Theatre, the webisode TV series Chill, and recently he directed and co-wrote the film A Jamaica Independent Story for Jamaica's 2021 Independence Day celebration. Greg Sims is the Director, Events Management and Production at the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. He is a consummate creative producer, operating as coordinator, stage manager, curator and manager of festivals, concerts and dramatic events. The Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, JCDC, is a dynamic cultural agency of the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. With a strong brand Jamaica flair and vibrancy, it has positively shaped the image of Jamaica through its many functions, which include promoting cultural programs, annually organizing independent celebrations, stimulating the development of local talents. 
For over 50 years, the JCDC has been the prime vehicle developing Jamaica into a cultural superstate. Its contribution and impact on brand Jamaica is unquestionable. Greg Sims is also a highly respected music arranger and musical and choir director of the Jamaica Youth Chorale. Please welcome our panelists. Hello, welcome, welcome. And by the way, how this works, we're going to have 20 minutes to sit and um, speak with our panelists, but we'll then have 10 minutes that we will ask, well, you should take advantage of them. Oh, you should take, are you okay? We're just making sure that she's okay. And if you are wondering, because you would have looked at the names, you would have looked at the faces, you would have looked at the titles. The lady who just came on the stage is the one and only Maxine Walters. Um, yes, please give her a round of applause. And we cannot speak, we cannot speak about production and film without her, but I think you might be. So she just migrated into the our panel, it's okay. And I can understand why that could be I can totally understand because when you think about production and you think about film, I mean, really and truly, she is right there at the helm. So I can totally understand why she probably deserves to be here, but then overlaps in different areas. So we invite you while we speak to our, our panelists to jot down your questions. Those of you who are here, we have our, our gentlemen who might be helping with the mics as well as those who are asking questions online. Thank you so very much for being here. Jamaica Creative Career Expo, very quickly, back in the day, not that we are old or anything, did you ever imagine that we would ever have a career expo that focused only on creatives? No, sir. Creative, I want him, sir. <laughs> Especially as a, as a boy growing up in country. I'm a country boy, proud from the hills of Montego Bay. Big up Cornwall College, wherever you're there. Um, the real thrust to have this sort of discussion, you know, I was head boy of my school. I went to University of the West Indies to turn doctor mm -hmm. and turn upon my head and said, no way. Um, but no, it's, it's interesting, though. It's good to see the evolution of the space and where we're going as a country. Yeah. Lovely. I mean, I think Jamaica just has talent and it's so natural. It's so organic that the sitting down now and saying, OK, we have it. How do we now um, evolve and, and move it to another level? I think that's what makes today just so critical. Because we sit down, we tell stories playing domino. Mm -hmm. We sing at night night. We dance at a party. It flows from us. But, but to sit and say, how do we now refocus that energy and into it. the economy? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you. Michael? Well, we're, we're normally... We're normally having these conversations among ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and so we're talking about these things. So we're talking about the value of the creative art um, and culture and stuff like that. But to have this kind of a conversation um, in such a large forum, it's really important, especially with young students who are themselves interested, yes. young creatives who are going to get an opportunity to hear what the industry really is like, the good and the bad, and see if they really want to be there and, and see what the steps are to be a part of it. Absolutely. Saeed. Yeah, I, I never expected to even be a creative, per se. I went to UWE to study geography. So, I mean, just, just being in this space, and it's, it's, it represents an evolution, it represents growth, it. and it represents a broader perspective as to what we can do with our talent, for sure. All right, thank you so very much. I don't think I've ever met anyone who said they went to school to study geography, but I'm sure you probably use, you know, you're probably using the, the knowledge that you gained in the areas that you're in now. So this topic is performing arts and film. And sometimes when we hear film, there's an excitement. Everyone, ooh, everyone wants to do, you know, the film, the, the movie industry. But then performing arts 
I want to get into that because sometimes we speak to students and they can't quite define what performing arts is or how it could possibly impact them or how it could be something that they can monetize. Daily, I'm going to come across to you performing arts for persons who may be here not sure of the career path they want to get on. They hear performing arts and they think, eh, nah. What is it? How do you define or how should we define the performing arts? I'd say, first of all, is there a career that performing arts can't Touch. get you in? Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. There are so many of us who work on television and our base really is the performing arts. And, and sometimes I say to people, what kind of job you want me to do? Because I can't act it out. What do you want me to be? <laughs> yes, you want me to come in the room and pretend to be a doctor? I can't act it. I can't act it. <laughs> And so the arts really is, um, it's dance, it's singing, it's, it, it's, it's, I think it's just an expression of, and an extension of who you are in whatever form um, you have the ability to, to do that. And so it's, it's motive. have you ever seen a motivational speaker? That's a performance art. Mm -hmm. So performing arts is in everything. It's the security guard when you park in a car park. It's the person who meets you at the front desk. Performing arts is a big part of tourism. When you go up on the plane and the flight attendant start tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you exit through there and you, no, no. it's performance art. Mm -hmm. There is no job you can't get when you develop your art as a performer. May I, may I just say something very quickly, Absolutely. please? Just that, that is also one of the issues and the problems that we have in that everybody in Jamaica thinks of them as an artist. <laughs> so because everybody is an artist, why should I pay to see an artist on stage? Uh -huh. Why should I pay to see you dance? Let's why should talk I pay? about it. Because everybody can dance, everybody can sing, mm -hmm. everybody can act. And so if I can do it, why would I pay you? And mm -hmm. so there's something that we need to talk about, another conversation about professionalizing of the arts in, within that context. And it's interesting you should say that because I think a part of what the Jamaica Creative is trying to do is to establish this directory, right? We're trying to make this um, something that is not just to be seen as, uh, you know, professional, but that these are persons who have taken the time to hone their craft and they are available to offer these services in a manner, of course, and you shall pay them for it. But let us, I'm going to turn back, I'm going to come back to you, but I think um, Gregory wanted to add something. Yeah, I just wanted to pick up on this conversation. Michael is right, everybody I dance when everybody I dance, sir. Right. That's one thing. Everybody can sing, but not everybody are a singer. singer. Darling. Right. Um, but, but I want us to, I'm challenging us mm -hmm. and the generation after me, look at me sounding ancient. We must reimagine how we think about academic pursuit. Mm -hmm. A part of the legacy that's been handed to us is that bubble is that, that study is that, you are geography, you do this. But there's an interdisciplined way of looking at academic study and life and interests where you must believe, especially our university students, be liberal in your approach and engagement with opening your mind. This is someone who was both in pure and applied at the time mm -hmm. and the humanities. And that is the way of the world right now. Think, broaden your scope, go where you feel like you're ukum there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if me can tell you what ukum means to of me. Course. To me, it may mean something to everybody else here. It's where who you are meets mm -hmm. why you are. Yeah where your purpose connects easily with who you are. Mm -hmm. It makes you happy. It feels good. It's the part of you that goes, mm, when you hear a song, we right. Mm -hmm. You know? And if you connect that, you can't go in any field and do you want to and dabble and intro mm -hmm. and then just learn and grab information and, and, and be fascinated with life. And I suppose, I mean, I know that everyone has always said, and I saw this tweet, uh, especially at the, the, the top of the pandemic in 2020, and the tweet said something to the effect of, remember in your darkest times, your happiest times, your saddest times, that you turned to creatives. And it's true. We turned to music, we turned to dance, we turned to movies. And so they were saying that creatives and creativity touches absolutely everything. So there does not need to be this divide between the traditional subjects or the traditional careers and arts, but why not have, you know, it being intertwined? Saeed, especially not in Jamaica. Espe especially there. Uh, Said, I know how I met you is that you have been the producer for me many times when I have done live. 
always in the background. And I think that whenever we speak to a lot of students and we speak about film, uh, or even the performing arts, they think or they want to be the talent that is on camera because naturally, that's what everyone sees, right? That's the person who's the face and the voice. And yet still having worked with persons like you and of course my colleagues in the back, we realize that on, talent, you know, on camera talent can't look good without the work that is put behind the scenes. So I want you to, to, to help these students understand, those who might be going into film, help them understand the depth of what that looks like and, and, what, and what you do specifically. Heavy. All right, well, I think I'm a jack of many trades, I'd say. Um, I started off doing audio. Mm -hmm. I, I actually did audio engineering for phase three. Um, and that's where I learned many things. Um, actually, I, I should say I started off in theater. So I started off in theater, which would have helped me to learn the fundamentals of production, mm -hmm. for sure. So I would have even something as simple as always wear black. Um, professionalism. Um, yeah. So I started off in theater, and then I transitioned into TV. And through that, I learned various practices. So it would have been audio engineering, it would have been stage management, it would have been lighting, it would have been producing. Um, and there are just so many opportunities within the field to capitalize on and to learn from. And what I always try to do was, I always try to, being somebody in the shadows, yeah. I always try to sit back and listen and learn um, just the different ways of doing things. So I would have worked on a couple of Michael's productions and I would have just sat back and looked on how Michael directed the talent. Michael organized himself. Um, and then I would have probably picked a few tips and tricks for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Make I it mean, yours. Pardon? And make it yours. And make it mine, for sure. So I, mean, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> or if, if I am answering your question. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, to, so today I produce more, so I, I don't do audio engineering as much, but it's still a passion. Um, and for produ producing, especially um, people like yourself, it's, it's very nuanced sometimes. Um, definitely I would have to look through, I, I am the creator of the show, the look and right. feel of it. I'm looking through the script or building the script. I am communicating with my host. Um, some hosts are, are very detailed, such as yourself. Some hosts do it on the whim. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it is just building that relationship and being very detailed and having a vision for sure. But the, the beautiful thing with, with our industry and with, and with what we do is that you are able to have a vision and you yeah. are able to materialize that vision. And not many industries give you the opportunity to do that. To do so. All right, Daly, I'm coming across to you. Um, looking at local talent, right? We are looking at the fact that Netflix and all of these different um, streaming uh, platforms are carrying content all over the world and we are all logged in. And yet still we have quite a lot of actors, actresses here. Um, your shows, for example, I've seen, I've gone into offices and heard people talk about the drama and the plot and what is coming next. The question is, we all know that we have this talent. This is something that we've heard, we grew up, we know it's in our DNA. In terms of the money, the monetization, taking this talent, taking this passion and turning it into something that is a livelihood and getting the support of corporate dollars or funders or grants, is it easy? Is it hard? What are the things that our students need to be thinking about if they want to be content creators within the performing arts? Yeah, not easy at all, but I don't think it's easy anywhere. Mm -hmm. One of the things I wanted to go back to what Michael was saying is, it's a job, mm -hmm. it's a job. And when students ask me, I say to them, listen, the doctor goes to school for years mm -hmm. before they are even able to look at a patient. And so do not believe that because I can sing, 
I can just walk into Lion King and go up there and sing. It's, it's every night being able to hit the notes the same way. And, to, and, to, and, and, and he'll tell you, you can't go into Lion King and say, I wonder if I can add a riff in this part and make them see me. It has to be clockwork all the time. And so I say to, 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 to the students when I meet them, this is a job. Mm -hmm. Read as much as you can. Train as much as you can. When you see people like Denzel Washington and them saying, listen, I go back to, 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 to Broadway because I want to keep perfecting the art of how I, I become characters. Mm -hmm. And Denzel Washington are act for all long. But it's constantly making sure that you get it done, you get it improved. And one other thing I thought of when I came here, when Usain Bolt and Shelly Ann mm -hmm. train, our athletes train for the Olympic level. They train at a global level. So when we think about our art and our abilities, we must also think <laughs> at that level. You can't want to be on Broadway and West End and, and be on HBO and Netflix and not hit that level. Mm -hmm. And not hit that level. And so you have to, to, to work at it, train, perfect it, and, and it will happen. Absolutely. Dahlia just spoke about so many things, right? That we, that's the right attitude and the right attitude and the right approach. Michael, with... Ashe, you know, you're a creative director, you put on productions, you are always seeing cohorts of youngsters come in. I've seen them come in raw, and by the time you get them on the stage, you can't believe it. What is the canvas? What is the mold? Because we do have this um, argument in the space or this debate that youngsters are lazy. I mean, we've heard it, the Gen Zs. I think, it's, I think it's unfair because I think across any generation, you'll have those who really are hungry and those who aren't. But for the students who are in the room, what kind of attitude, apart from what Dale is saying, how do you even see who the stars are? What is it about them that makes them stand out? And how can they do the same? OK, so what I do is um, pick up on what my panelists, co-panelists have said. So I think one of the major things is that we help people to find the ukum in them. So we call the ukum the ashe. Yes. So we help to bring out the ashe spirit. That's what we're interested in doing. And a lot of the times people see ashe, they don't talk about the singing, they don't talk about the dancing, they talk about the energy because there's an energy, we call it the energy that transforms. And so that energy is underneath all of the, the, the training that we're doing. So that's one of the main things that we do. Um, the other thing related to what Dahlia said is that we get people to understand that this is a job. It's mm -hmm. a professional space, and with professional space, there are two levels of professionalism, which is one is that you're getting paid for it, and ASHA members do get paid for what they do. Great. We have been paying people since 1993. It's a full-time job. We have 40 people um, hired at the ASHA company now, and we didn't stop during the pandemic. So that's a part of the professionalism of it, so professionalizing the space, but in addition to that, professionalism is an attitude. Mm -hmm. The doctor doesn't wake up in the morning and say, you know, I don't feel like operating on your brain. It's a job. It's what you've been trained to do. It's what you do, so do your job. Mm -hmm. So you don't wake up in the morning and think, oh, I don't feel like it. I just feel just to dance. No, it's a job. And that's why you have places like the Edna Manley College where people are being trained to do what they do. And so what happens as well is that just as Saeed says, we are a part of a system where um, it's not like Cuba where you, they, they might be looking at you from you just started and they're pushing you into these different streams. spaces, these different streams that are more appropriate for your personality type and your capacities and your talents and stuff like that. That's not what is happening here. So that's why I'm grateful for the Jamaica Creative Space so that we can start doing a lot more talent maximization. Mm -hmm. I was heading in, you know, when you reach third form, and you, you do all of those subjects. Um, you do about 10 subjects for them to decide which subject stream to put you in. And me did seem like a brightish, so I passed everything. And they pushed me into an, Sci a, a science sciences, stream. They pushed me into course. the science stream. And so I was in a science stream. And then I failed, of course, miserably. By the time I reached fourth form, I was just like, oh my God, what is this? And then fifth form, admat, what is that? <laughs> you know, and then so... Um, and I failed, and I got a chance to repeat at Woolmers, the Woolmers voice. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got a chance to repeat at Woolmers, and I switched stream 
English literature, literature at UOE, and Definitely. so on. And so talent maximization is an important part of this whole thing. So young people, I love what Clement said, follow your dream, especially the one about boldness has um, greatness, has power and magic in it. It's just so, such a beautiful thing. And um, I just think that if you want to do it, do it. And the fact that you are here now, I'm saying, uh, everybody in this room who is a creative, who is creative-minded, follow your dream. That, the same thing as the ukum is the flow. You get into a flow state and you know that this is the right space for you. If you know it's the right space for you, go for it. Absolutely. Dale, add something and then Gregory, I'm coming to yeah, you. I just wanted to say, um, Chantal Jackson. I have to use Chantal as an example whenever I talk to young people. So a, a group of young people came to work with me straight out of high school, Arden. Mm -hmm. Chantal was the front of house. She was tearing tickets um, because I didn't have the space to put them on stage, but I know this is what they loved, and so they came. They, they're my stage managers, front of house. I can't sleep and just turn up at the show because they know how to do everything. One day, one of the actors fooling around, and I said, Chantal, go learn these lines because I'm not going to keep telling this girl how to do it. She learned the lines. Since then, Chantal, handpicked by Idris Elba to be in his, his, his directorial debut, Yadi. She just completed Death in Paradise, yes, the newest the officer, member of the cast, as the been officer. signed for another season. And I'm saying this because she started off at the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She started off at the door. So mm -hmm. a lot of young people message me, they reach out to me. I want to be in your shows. I want to be in your plays. It's not going to always be on the stage. But, but her experience, just, just being at the door every night, watching how it works. She, works with, she was my production manager on Ring Games while filming with Idris. She come off of the plane. She said, Auntie, you're still filming? I said, yeah, but go and get some sleep. By the time I look, she was, she, her father dropped her off. She said, you're filming? I'm here. She just finished film with Idris. Now, if I just finished film with Idris, I don't even know if I'm coming back to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, please do not call me. I am not holding no light on no set. What? <laughs> she left the airport and came to where we were. And she was back behind the scenes mm -hmm. doing production work. Mm -hmm. so, and, and that empowers her when she's in front of the camera. Right. So I'm saying, young people, sometimes... It, it, it's the door don't open, but you can't climb through the window. You know? And, Amen. And that's how you No, man, I'm coming to you. Come, Gregory. Go, 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 go. I have a door. If you ever get a JCDC gold medal, say morning. Yes. Yes. Rush he speaks yes. for, he speaks for we JCDC. We have a door. And it's so important to get started. And that's what you can do, especially if you're like me. When I grew up in Mobile, I never had no theater, this and them something. The, the dance company, them their town, everybody their town, all them something. I there. hear people say yes, yes. You, yes. Know, you can have no, see the door, you walk through it mm -hmm. at the JCDC, get started. And so many of us, Festival Queen, how are you doing? <laughs> so many of us have started at the JCDC and continue to do so. But you have to understand it's a start. So going back to understand the global context of who you are as a mm -hmm. performer. A lot of you on the global stage already, I make TikTok and all them something there, and you'll discuss that later on today. But you are appealing to an international audience. But if you want to go to the global level, you've got to be trained. Yes. You've got to put in some work, especially as someone who started piano at age five. I understand you, sir. I got them loud up. I think all of us as performers, especially in classical arts, get that knock on the knuckle. But you've got to ensure that you grow, set a plan, have this sort of training, and maximize on the opportunities in relating who you are to where you want to go in life. So make sure you check out JCDC, shameless plug, no. right? <laughs> Competitions are coming up right now and get started on your journey to excellence. Let me ask you this, Gregory, mm. because that's a very good point, but let me ask you this, Gregory. In a world where we see a lot of persons becoming 
you know, and I'm going to say overnight sensations. You know, they go viral without any kind of training and they just kind of pick up that speed, they pick up that momentum, they keep it going. And then we have a lot of youngsters who use them as the example, right? They're not an exception, they become the rule. I don't need to do this. I don't really need to know how to spell, but I'm going to write a book. I don't really need to do this because I'm going to, you know, how do we balance between their creativity but going back to the part that even if you get your foot in the door, you have to keep on getting the training and don't get caught up in this whole thing of, you know, wing it, wing it. We're just winging it through life and winging it with Jesus. So, so, so one thing that training builds is technique mm -hmm. and technique leads to sustenance. So if a trained dancer, for example, is looking at somebody doing them whatever it is, and they say, mm -hmm, that they need to go out in a two year. It not go last, right? I'm, I'm trained in, in voice and I'm listening. I'm hearing, yeah, whoa. The bell sound good, but it all plays wrong and it not go nowhere. Yeah, that the voice are going to mash up. You're going to develop nodes. You're going to have some issues mm -hmm. in the future. Something is wrong right there. If you want to transcend into having a sustained, impactful career, that sort of thing about who you are and the magic that's there, that comes from God, universe, whatever you call it, is yours. Mm -hmm. And that will grow. But you've got to balance it with some things, some techniques, some training, some sort substance. of substance in terms of transforming yourself into a professional. Mm -hmm. So you can sing and belt the top C eight nights a week and not mash up your voice. Absolutely. That's the difference between training. natural talent and training. But me nah, not down natural talent. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's so important. That's what I look for when I'm recruiting singers and all them something. Me need a something there. You need it. Not true, Michael. And if you don't have it, it's hard to find. You understand? You won't expect me to be training for the 100 meter dash anytime soon. <laughs> Or, or to, 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 to dance ballet at the ball show. Eh? Perhaps not right now. You know, not now. Not, na not now. Just a little bit more time before that sort of thing comes in. No. Not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no. But, but that's important. It's so important for us to be trained and start. Thank so find you. the opportunities to start. Get the sort of training. There are Edna Manley College, if you, are, have, if you have the opportunity to find the semi-professional, professional companies and groups, Ashe, Dance Troupe, um, all them something, they're, they're, they're the Jamaica Youth Choral, whatever. Yeah, they're, they're, those are opportunities that you can try. Exed, there are good programs at the Northern Caribbean University. So it takes University research too. as well. So, it it take, it, 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 so we can't just say we want to be, but we actually have to go now and look to the spaces that are intentional about it. I'm going to go to questions and answers, but Said, very quickly, I noticed in your, in, in your profile, you had the ability, you started here, yeah? You started as an audio technician, you worked your way up, and you've been able to also leverage your talent to work with renowned persons in a global space. Is there anything that our youngsters need to work on, not just the talent, but, but having that appeal, that professionalism that, we, that is able to transcend culture where people no longer look at you as a little person in Jamaica, but that they believe you have the talent to collaborate um, with on a, on a larger scale. What are some of the advices or the tips that you can give them? Yeah, the first thing I would say is, as I said before, be bold. Um, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, I reached out to many people. I reached out to Auntie Maxine, mm -hmm. just for experience. So Auntie Maxine, I want to learn more about this film thing. She brought me on as a production assistant, and I just worked. Um, so, and then the, the more experience you get is, is the more you know, where, understand about other things like the workflow, um, understand the language, understanding how people communicate within the space. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely be bold, reach out, research. Is definitely another thing. I, I did not go to school for audio engineering, but I can tell you I researched. I went on a lot of YouTube. I went on a lot of LinkedIn learning. Um, and I have smaller certificates for the, for the art and for the practice. Um, and then the other thing is understand that it is an art mm -hmm. and it is a practice. Um, there are specific things that you do need to learn um, in order to Grow. advance yourself. So you can just, well, you can, but I wouldn't advise you to just get up and do it and then label yourself an expert. 
So it's about learning and learning that workflow and learning the language. Actually, you just mentioned something that was so important, the fact that persons get up overnight and label themselves as experts, as opposed to actually Mighty going... God. Mighty God. Okay, Gregory. Okay, Gregory. But um, that is also very important in terms of credibility. Do we have any questions? We have questions. Do we have... Okay, thank you so very much. So we have a young lady right there with the mic. We're going to try to get through our questions and answers as quickly as possible. All right. I think uh, we have about two or two to three minutes to get through them, so be very... Yeah, um, yeah so good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Um, to the panelists, um, good afternoon. And today, uh, big fun. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so my quick question, first of all, to Mr. Thomas. Um, actually, I had a few questions, but most of them actually answered through. Like, every time I came up with a question, you actually answered them. Um, first of all, um, I'm really advocating for the ghetto youth um, in Percy. I have friends um, back in Clarendon who, oh sorry, who want to pursue um, different creative fields. I have persons at UWE who are from a very bad area who are hiding out um, in the, at, the, at a campus or other places to avoid certain circumstances. These persons have great ideas. For example, my friend um, McCoy, who has his business, um, Visual Studio, it's not, a, it's not a branded business or an official business, but how does a creative like him, who paints, he, he's in the film industry, go about reaching out to certain persons because as much as he will Instagram or send emails or want to seek sponsorship um, from other persons to propel his business, a lot of students are unaware of or uneducated to the fact of how they can go about networking, how exactly do they reach out to persons? How okay. do you encourage students to go about doing something like that? Especially students who come from at-risk communities or vulnerable communities. All right, Gregory, I think the... Or oh, Saeed, excuse me, that was your yeah. question. Check. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, I would say if there are certain avenues. Um, school is one where you can build a network. Uh, if it is that you can't afford to go to that, a particular institution. i definitely say an industry association. I am a true believer of industry associations. I am currently the president for Jamaica Film and Television Association. Nice. So it is nice. reaching out to these industry associations, joining, joining them, um, and then from there you, you realize that the industry is very small. In no time at all you can build a network, you can build a community. Um, and as I had said, it's really just getting that experience thereafter and then growing from there. All right, thank you. Sure, you can. And, I, and then I'm going to take uh, a question in the back. Hello, yeah. Just wanted to say um, that I love what you said, but not just the associations, performing arts groups. There, there are all of these spaces. You just jump into a space, investigate, do the work. You can't want to get um, somewhere big and you're not willing to do the work. Do the research, go out of your way to make it happen because if you're not going to do it for you, nobody's going to do it for you. And another important thing is to, to get the kind of mentorship that Saeed talked about with Antim. Um, Maxine, he <laughs> said. So that mentorship is extremely important as well. Find a mentor. At this stage and age of my development, I have about three or four mentors. There you go. Question in the back. Um, good day, everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm greatly honored to be in the presence of all your panelists, especially you, Miss Harris. Um, go CC One College. Uh, do you feel, I think this is more directed to Delia, do you feel that the theatrical community is dying or is in need of support from existing entities or um, interest from the youth? Yeah. Um, one, of my, one of my hard takes is that we don't have a performance space in every parish. Mm -hmm. And so theatre basically happens in Kingston when a lot of talent is all over the island. So I feel that like that's something that has to be addressed at an infrastructure level. But what I like to say to young people is that this is your time because we don't have to wait on the four walls. With all that's happening now with, with digital content and with your phone and with everything, you don't have to wait on a producer to call you anymore. You can come together and record your like a two minute, three Tag. minute, five minute. So, so the theater space 
is now what you make it. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage um, a lot of young people to get that done because that also answers your question, young man, that when you're in that space, tag a director, tag a producer, tag an actor mm -hmm. um, so that they can see the, the abilities that you have and you'd be amazed to see just the connections that happen. So, so infrastructurally, we, we are nowhere near there. Each parish should have at least one theater space, one formal theater space. But um, my co work with what we have. Right, absolutely. Have. Thank you so very much. For those of you who have questions, we will have a section later on where you'll be able to engage with the panelists. So just hold on to your questions just so that in a matter of time, we will be able to move to the, the second panelist, uh, the second panel discussion, excuse me. So just write down your questions, keep them so that when you engage with the panelists at the end of the day, you will be able to ask your questions one-on-one. -on -one. We are going to move to our second panel, uh, panel discussion, but thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our esteemed panelists, Michael, Saeed, Dahlia, and Gregory, performing arts and film. This way, Gregory. This way, guys. Hello, 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 hello. Guys, you cannot pay for this, you know. I wonder if you realize how many gems and nuggets you're getting in this entire presentation. Do you agree? Yes? All right. So, as, as, as someone who I watch TED Talks all the time, Big Up Terry, I watch Idris Elba, all of the... I always wonder, how do you get from here to here? And it seems like the stories are always, they have a constant and a golden thread. Hard work, dedication, asking the right questions, being bold and taking decisions in critical moments, difficult decisions, decisions that you're not really comfortable with that break you out of your comfort zone. And so I'm very happy to have the next panel, fashion and culinary arts. But before we go into that, the Tourism Enhancement Fund is a key partner of the Ministry of Culture, Entertainment, Gender and Sport. And so, I would love to hear from the Executive Director, Dr. Kerry Wallace, as he addresses us. Please make him welcome. Thank you, thank you very much. And I must say, I'm delighted to be here among such greatness. I look at all of you and I just think, my goodness, I respect the ground you walk on. And here I am bringing greetings on behalf of tourism, Jamaica's number one industry. And we stand proud and tall with tourism and the way we have structured ourselves and the way we've organized ourselves and the way we've provided our funding for ourselves. Since 2005, we had looked at our tourism development, uh, sustainable tourism development master plan and needed to fund that development. Similarly to any other industry, you had the brain power that came together, the um, experts in, in those fields that came together, came up with a, a master plan, but needed that fuel, needed that resource to sustain that master plan. And they came up with the idea of the Tourism Enhancement Fund. What we did was we charged every cruise and airline passenger who came in and use that fee to create a fund that then fuel the development plans that we had in tourism. We are the number one industry. Our rate of growth over the last uh, few decades have been 30 times the national average. 30 times the national average. Thank you. No, I'm not sh saying this to show off by any means. I'm saying this to say there's an opportunity here because Brand Jamaica Our, our, our creative industries has a more powerful effect on brand Jamaica than tourism. If we, all of us now, zoom off to Timbuktu in a massive spacecraft, and they drop us off, and the dust settles, 
and the locals come out of their huts or houses and look at us and say, where are you from? And we say, Jamaica. The next word they're going to say is not going to be nice beaches and waterfalls and so on. It's going to be Bob or Usain or something more to do with the, the people part of Jamaica. So here we have t a tower, skyscrapers of, of, of industries, but yet tourism is our number one. Yes, we have synergies because when you shine on the world stage, we benefit. But my point is, how can we fuel your industry as well so that the, the, the structure, the development plan, we're, we don't have to be worried about money. You don't have to be coming to the TEF hat in, hand in hand, hat in hand, sorry. Or any other, you know, the Chase Fund, I know it's there, but that gets funding from uh, the betting gaming, gaming and lotteries. Um, receipts and so on, and, and, I, I, and the TEF's funding is directly related to the, the growth, the industry, so the growth of the industry translates into more money from the fees we collect. So the more tourism grew, the more money we got for the TEF, which that, so it's, a, it's an upward spiral that we've created from the way we've um, structured our funding. So I know I'm here to bring greetings and it should be nice and cushy and smiley and warm, but I believe there, I sense the opportunity and I'm hoping I can plant a seed in these brilliant minds that I've known some of them for many years, Delia, and I won't disclose Negro days and so on, but the, the opportunity, we, we as a country should be first world. To be first world, we need a, a variety of industries that are making good money for Jamaica. W one of the quotations from Minister Nigel Clark a few years ago was that if he could only have another industry like tourism, they would, we would be uh, accomplishing our growth targets. And, and you, you, you are that. You are the industry. And, and, and from where I sit, you know, when I heard about the stories of persons starting out in geography and so on and then ending up in the creative industries, I started to think, hmm, I could be a closet creative. <laughs> I really feel it in my, in the passion inside of me, but yet I'm in a corporate job or in an office on Northwood Boulevard, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't know. You'll see. One day, daily, maybe you can be my mentor. So, uh, so it, is a, it is bringing greetings and wishing you all the best for this outstanding event, a Career Expo, to again structure the advancement of our young talent into a formal way of getting into the industry. And, I, and to the youngsters, I say, listen, my goodness, if I could live over my life and live in these times with the opportunities that are here with, with digital uh, technology, social media, anybody, once you have the talent and you're smart, diligent and everything, you, the, the sky is the limit. I think of Julie Mango and those persons who, what, a year ago weren't on the radar. Look at them now. You know, so, so it's, it's a glorious time, a great structure of creating the Career Expo, and as a result, the TEF is thrilled to support this venture. And I just like to say thank you and all the best. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. Now, tourism is like our big brother who comes to the reunion and say, guys, get it together. Because I am making money and I'm encouraging you to join the money table, right? So the beauty of the creative industry is that it is the fastest growing industry. We're not there yet, but we're growing and we're on our way. So this is an encouragement. We have an opportunity for growth. And when we say of opportunity, as Delia said, if it do or lock, you jump through the window. All right. I want you guys to do me a favor. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your toes. All of you have on shoes, right? And all of you have on clothes, right? And what we're going to do after this, we're going to eat, right? So this industry touches our lives. Every single person here has interacted with this industry in some way. So as much as you want to say, boy, I'm in the, in the fashion, because fashion is a stush people thing, you have on a shirt. 
As much as you say, boy, I'm in the, in the bag of eating because of mackerel alone, me eat. Mackerel is food. And so, we invite our next panel, the fashion and culinary arts. Meet our panelists. We invite them to come. Taste is everything. It defines us. It reminds us who we are by stimulating our senses. How we appreciate colors, scents, textiles is an important part of our cultural and creative industries. These creatives are kings and queens of style, sense, and sensibility. Award-winning executive chef Brian Lumley ranks among Jamaica's best homegrown and trained culinarians. His trademark white jacket and black rimmed frames defines a rich reserve of dedication and creativity. Chef Lumley is highly regarded amongst industry stakeholders and stands out for his humility, warmth and an impeccable work ethic. A creative visionary at the tender age of 26, he became head chef behind what was one of Jamaica's most loved restaurants, 689 by Brian Lumley. Doing Jamaica proud, in 2013, the young prodigy earned the top individual prize of Caribbean Chef of the Year at the Taste of the Caribbean Regional Culinary Showcase. An award of this magnitude had not been won by a Jamaican chef since 1999. Traversing oceans, he took up stints in Doha, Qatar, and St. George's, Grenada, before returning to Kingston, Jamaica. Today, Chef Lamley leads a team of passionate chefs at the R Hotel Kingston, serving as their executive chef. Novia McDonald White is a conceptualizer, curator, coordinator extraordinaire, who is also senior associate editor, lifestyle and social content at the Jamaica Observer. Her initiatives move mountains in support of the cultural and creative industries. By virtue of the many initiatives afforded by the Jamaica Observer, creatives can work on the annual Jamaica Observer Table Talk Food Awards. In addition to a minimum of six scholarships, UTech Hospitality students, a minimum of 40, are paid to work on the day of the awards. This affords networking opportunities as well as payment and credits towards their degree. Additionally, Fashion's Night Out, now TSO, is an opportunity for creatives from artists to artisans to sell their work and derive revenue. Design Week spotlights are interior designers, architects, upholsterers, plumbers, painters, electricians. Salu brings bartenders to the fore with their cocktail artistry. Page 2 is an opportunity for graphic designers to stretch their creative skills as they, along with the editorial team, relate the news of how we live. Carlton Brown is a Jamaican menswear fashion designer committed to evolving clothing solutions for the contemporary, global, savvy individual. Charged and inspired with the rich stimulus of his environment, his design DNA reinterprets the suit into a modern, relevant armor engineering pathway of success. Produced by a local team of five tailors, the suits expertly cut by Carlton underscores the bespoke service his clients have come to expect. Having shown collections internationally and in the Caribbean, his over 15 years in operation has had him serving clientele from the top of the government, professional and entertainment worlds. A staple for many inclusive of Usain Bolt, Asafa Powell, Agent Sasko, Beanie Man, Bounty Killer, amongst others, his deft hand continues to cut a path to global success. Haveli was founded in Kingston, Jamaica by Mina Robertson to foster connection to the divinity within and around us. A graduate of ESMOD, ISEM, Paris, former intern of Studio 189 in Accra, and board director of Jampro, Mina is inspired by the power of fashion as an agent for social change. Established in January 2020, Haveli has launched a feminine ready-to-wear line. It's more masculine line, fragrances and homeware capsule collections, as well as the Thickets Collective, a handcraft startup based in St. Anne, focused on community development and female empowerment through creation. The brand expanded to a new retail location at 11 Devon Road in Kingston and operates an e-commerce website, myhaveli.com. The team at Haveli is currently made up of its founder, creative director, head of operations, director of digital media and sales associate, as well as a team of artisans, fabric dyers, printers, pattern cutters, seamstresses, and tailors in Jaipur, India. Donald Miranda is a bespoke luxury women's wear designer who has been professionally designing under the name Rednerim since 2014 and lecturing in fashion at the University of Technology, Jamaica since 2019. 
He's a recipient of the Prime Minister's Youth Award for Excellence in Arts and Culture and a Miss Jamaica World Golden Scissors awardee. His brand, Rednerim, has designed wardrobes for influential women such as Member of Parliament and the wife of the Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Most Honorable Juliet Holness, Olympian Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and Miss Universe second runner-up Davina Bennett. The label's unique selling points, the quality and customization options behind each product, as well as the client care experience are at the foundation of Rednerim's brand ethos and continue to add to its competitive edge. In 2020, Miranda became the first fashion designer from the Caribbean to receive a Chevening Award, a scholarship which allowed him to successfully pursue a Master of Arts in Fashion Business Management at the University of Westminster, London. His practical exposure to sustainability in London has also piqued his interest and currently bolsters his primary area of research, sustainability in Jamaican fashion. As brand Rednerim prepares for a fall 2022 return, Miranda is committed now more than ever to developing sustainable practices at the core of Rednerim's brand identity and culture, poised to impact the industry of Jamaican fashion in a robust, meaningful way. Are our panelists. Panelists, welcome, 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 welcome. I got goosebumps listening to that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I was uh, uh, style, senses, and sensibility. No, we have a seat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mina, Carlton, and Donald. Please, can I have a round of applause for them again? So, so this is the, this is the look, this is the, the, the hot panel. Everybody hot. And I'm wearing Carlton Brown because I had to be hot. Now, panelists, I am happy that we played the, the, the bios because I'm kind of going out of life story now. We hear the life story, that's great. We're talking practical, straightforward, honest advice. Novia, I know you love that. And so I will start with you, Novia, because our first interaction, you said to me, Rush, it is very important that we send the elevator down, yes. right? Which, for those who don't understand, it means that, you know, you, for you to send the elevator down, where you have to be? Oh. Up. So when you send the elevator down, you're grooming, mentoring young talent. From your experience over the years, can I get one quality that you've seen in it? every single star mentee that you've had that these students can look at and say, okay, I'm going to try and work on that and have that quality. You have to be hungry. And when I say hungry, literally starving. And if you're not hungry, you will not succeed. It's as simple as that. Ishmael actually said it. You have to send the elevator back down, plus extensions in the detail, meaning that every single day, the newspaper keeps you humble and it keeps you hungry too, because every single day you have to start from ground zero. Yes. Because today's news is used to wrap tomorrow's fish and chips. It's very simple, right? So every single day you are building and you don't have the luxury of saying to your readers, dear reader, because of the challenges of COVID, <laughs> there is no content no this week. No today, right. But, so, Novia, in, an, in, in a space that some people would say is, some people, not me, Novia, I promise, not me. Some people say that print is dying. How do you stay innovative? How do you reinvent the wheel? How do you stay on top of things to ensure that you're fresh? Okay, you're hungry, but how do you ensure that you're being fed? Well, you know, print has been dying for a long time. Thankfully, it's not <laughs> dead yet. But um, thanks to people, you've got to have friends. You know, you, you don't just get out there by yourself. You've got to always have people who actually believe in you. So when things happen that are not expected, you've just got to go to bed and you've got to think and you've got to wake up. And whether you're calling Delano at um, phase three and saying to him, well, there's a picture of Oprah here and she's surrounded by screens and she's just speaking. 
or if it's Anna Wintour, and Delana will say, okay, well, we don't have the 100 TV screens, Novia, but the one that Anna is doing, we can kind of work that one. And you've also got to have your team at work who believe in you as well. So I've always got to shout out Natalie Chin. You know, the madder the idea, the more eager she is to support. Yeah. Right? You've got to, you've, and, but basically you must believe in yourself. You've got to have that knot in your stomach as well. Because if it fails, you know that you've got to pack your bags and leave very quickly. Wow, so failure is not an option, no. Failure Bill. can't be an option. It is not an <laughs> option. Not an option. Now, Mina, we're talking about being innovative. You launched your brand in 2020. And for those who don't know, spoiler alert, 2020 was a very rough year. <laughs> was it really? How did you manage that launch? And I know that you had to close and reopen. Tell us about that little journey and the lessons that you learned during that. I love that question. Thanks, Roche. So, start opened January 2020, and at the time, I had just seen that we could open and sent out a blast on WhatsApp, sent it out to the community, a one humble post on Instagram, and fortunately, as was said before, community community came out, the sharing, the support was there. And within three days, we had sold out. And I'm, on, I'm in this momentum, and we're getting orders from all over the world. I'm so excited. Oh it's, yeah. I, yeah, I'm Ready. like, this is amazing. This is gonna be great. Go back to India, work on you know, product development, refine everything, place an order that met that momentum. Right, so I'm now confident, putting, investing heavy, I'm doubling down on my investment. And then we reopened, because we had to close because we were sold out. We reopened March 4th, I think it was, and March 14th. Closed. That's it, had to close. And I had just cleared, and you know, customs is no joke, I had just cleared that order that we had, I had gone back to India and worked so hard on. But the lesson, so I'm not gonna candy coat it for anybody in this room. It was devastating that there was a feeling, a, a feeling in my stomach I can't describe. And this, but at the same time, this faith, just, I stayed calm, I stayed cool. I said, okay, this is happening. It's happening to everyone. I'm not special, <laughs> this is global, yeah. and it's now the call, it's time for grace. It's time to look out for those who have invested in me and invested in my vision, because that's, that's a big part of creative entrepreneurship, is that people are investing in their livelihoods in your vision, and you're, you've made a promise to people that you have to keep, and so, I, that was my first priority, I'm thinking that way, and it's something that has held that business is about relationships. So, it's. yeah, so it's, it's maintaining that and making sure that at the end of the day, what matters matters, and holding on to that. Managing finances, I had to get very stringent, very careful, and we can get into another story about the reopening of the new store. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, getting very critical about where every single dollar goes and how I'm going to get that return on investment. And then most importantly, it taught me to trust my intuition because when the pandemic hit, no one had the answers. You have these stalwarts in business 40 years on, no one had ever seen anything like what had happened to us. So it made me have to just trust I know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to have to follow my gut. I'm going to make the decision. I'm going to take ownership for this. And it, that trusting my into, trust in my intuition has really helped the business grow. So, so far, I'm hearing, uh, again, there's a golden thread. No pun intended, since we're all talking about fashion. Not you, well, you're fashionable. So can, but there's, there's a golden thread about that hunger and also the gut. So everything, everything is here, right? And since we're talking about here, Brian, it's gut time. 
Everybody knows that Jamaican people can cook. Everybody can Check. cook. Everybody Check. can cook. You have an auntie around the road, auntie a cook for your Christmas dinner. Yeah. You have a cook shop around the road. How do you distinguish between being a culinary professional and being someone who can cook? Is it the schooling? Is it the experience? And someone who is watching, how do they get that experience? Um, well, that's a very good question. But before I, I get into the question, as I, as I look in the room and, and I hear alluded to earlier, the, the students may not grasp the amount of gems, the players, the experts who are in this room. I think you, you're probably going to get it when you actually venture out to your thing and say, um, you see a name come across of who you need to contact to yeah. get into your field, and you're going to be remembering, like, oh, I sat two tables across from him That's or her. Exactly. You know what I mean? Or, or the head of this industry was at the top table at the room. Like, if you have no idea yet, the heavyweights who are in this room right now. So, I mean, I, I'm honored to be a part of this and, and shout out to the stakeholders and the organizers for putting this on. It is a necessary expo, and I just hope to see it grow bigger and bigger and bigger. With that being said, and, and that comes with the background of a lot of things in my yes. creative journey, but we won't get into that. To your question, yes. So, I, I grew up in the culinary field in, in two halves. Right? I went through the traditional sense where I was trained at a culinary school. And I am from Kingston, so I'm from a place where a lot of caterers are, right? Who necessarily didn't go the traditional route. So when I got to a place where I was smack middle in middle of hotel chefs and home chefs, as my I was taught by a home chef, you know. It doesn't take anything away from the home chef talent, mm -hmm. right? Because I will tell you, there are things that the home chef can do that the hotel chef can't. And there are things that the hotel chef can do that the home chef can't, That's right. right? It doesn't mean one is necessarily better than the other. They're just placed in their respective areas, right? So I would say that to say there are many hotel chefs who struggle to go in front of a TV, and present and cook and have that personality to come across something, you know, or do something great. Or a hotel chef can't go into uh, a nine night and cook something for the rural people or local people, you know, man, I say, what that? that? Your chicken too light, man. You need some browning and, you know, for cook and you call yourself a five star chef. You know what I mean? You need some salt, yeah. So, you will, you, I come across these stories and, and I say it's an excellent question because it's just where you apply. I've seen, I've seen chefs come now and Roble and others who come and we pair dinners together. And he will look at me and say, bro, I don't know how you guys do this. Because in the States, you can go to one store and get everything you need. Yeah. In Jamaica, you get something up on Mega Mart, you go Price Mart, you go Fresh Approach. You go, they're in six different places. There's not one place you can get everything you need to do a function that you have. So just the landscape and how to navigate it. I mean, I, I, I don't judge. Um, the different backgrounds of people who cook. Everybody feels like they can cook. I don't say anything. Yes. But when they realize the amount of work that goes into it, so, then you see the separation of the cooks versus the chefs. So yeah. again, it's, it's, it's the conversation about opportunities and opportunities for growth. Let us say that, for example, you're unable to pay the big fee and start at a culinary school. Perhaps you could intern with a chef or develop his skills or whatever, or use YouTube. Or, but the point that Brian is making, which I have learned from also YouTube, which we'll talk about later, is just taking a route and figuring it out. And if, if you don't go the formal way, you can still learn. And if, if you go this way, you can still learn. Yes? Let me tie it up for you. It's, and I heard other creatives alluded to it. It's the professionalism that you bring to the place. Say that again, please. Because it's the, it's the people the, that might eat the soup and they so might <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. So, so between a cook or somebody who makes clothes or somebody who writes blogs and feel like they are award-winning journalists now, it's the professionalism that you dedicate to the craft that 
it's not an off button. You don't have an off button. When you're called to the stage, it's that attention to training and dedication that prepares you for that moment. You All understand? Right. That's the difference between, I think, uh, those who, get it and those who, who can do it and who can't. Right. All right. Thank you. Uh, at Car Carlton, thank you for the jacket. I love it. Um, I wanted to to talk to you about what we normally think of when we think of like fashion business and how we grew up. You know, a man we can't sew. You know, a man we can't sew, you know. He can't sew. But you have a business with, f you have employees, all of that. Someone who is looking to scale a business, right? I'm thinking of, okay, three, a checklist, three things. You're thinking of moving from being a dressmaker around one part where you go and take in your pants to Carlton Brown. Three things I need to consider. And by the way, if you take long, I'm going to cut you off. Three shot in a cart and more want it. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, but um, oh, good morning <laughs> or afternoon, everyone. Yes. You know, I'm really happy to be here. Um, let me be honest. Is <laughs> you know, after this first, nobody sitting beside me, right? And the reason why, the reason why, well, the question I asked is coming right back there. When I did my first show and you know, get right up in the paper and I see it and I say yes, I mean, so. Never. It was a worse write-up. And to this day, I have that. And I remember the second show I did, the other right, eh, it's okay. But I remember I, get, I got some phone calls, one from different media houses, right? And everybody said, yes, it's because of my location at the time. Well, you know, it's because of my location. Yes, we're coming, coming, nothing. I remember I got a call and said, where's, where's so-and-so and so? So I said, all right, cool. Two twos, I said, the observer, the, the observer van at my gate. And this fabulous lady walk out, mm -hmm. swing the handbag, and she come in. Mm -hmm. And I will never, ever forget it. Living in our yard, a tenement yard, because I'm alone living there. I'm being straight. And I remember this, I will never, ever forget it. And I remember Novel asked me for the work, and I bring it out, and she put it on the fence. Right? The wire and zinc up there, she put it up there. And while another tree, she catch it, and she take the photo to them. And in her words, pardon me, Nova, she said, Carlton, you're going to be a star. Never forget it. And to this day, I can tell you, years after, myself, Kenny Linton, Georgia, and Nova McDonald White sits on a mission character panel. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't make up that story. And what that did for me was to tell me, I, you, you have to believe. All right, and that's the first thing. The question you ask, it comes right back. You have to believe in you and you have to believe in your product, right? I remember growing up in, maybe some of you know, but you're gonna know now, I grew up in foster care. And growing up in foster care is that there was a machine there and that's where it really started for me. And just by being there, the machine was there and I remember the lady, you know, we call her mommy. You want to learn to sew? I said, yes, ma'am, ready. I string needle for about three years. <laughs> to the point when we have you know, you know, you have sports, they have Negle and Traders, Egg and Spoon. I win every Negle and Trader race. Right. Everyone may win. Right? And what that was doing for me at the time was practice. Practice, practice. I mean, every point, we have to use glasses now, but at the time, <laughs> we just saw string Negle. I broke all records. String Negle, walk, go walk, come back, and I'm still not string it yet. But the lesson for me there, just growing up in that, is what. What was there, I had to work with it. What it did for me is that I had to believe. Apart from believing, you can love it, you know, but you can fall out of it. And that's, it goes in life and relationships Ooh. and everything. But if you have that passion, you know. Carlton, people are drinking the fruit punch. Say that part there again. <laughs> Say that part there again for me. You can yeah. love it, but yeah. Yeah, man, you, you, you can like something and you like it no more. You can love it, you can fall out of love with it. But once you have that passion for it, it never leaves. And she spoke about gut feeling. And you believe in your gut. It's no joke. It's just like when I'm at a picnic, she has a picnic, that's the first thing she does this. Because I read that you'd come from. You know what I mean? So I remember even talking to some of the mission catwalk, you know, contestants sometimes. And, you know, I'm seeing, I've, I've go to like, you know, the heart, I go to Edna sometimes, and, you know, there's reason with students and things. And a lot of these guys, you students, and, and not only kids, but big man and big woman on a whole, them say, you know, so make I get up on sort tomorrow. 
I'm, and this is a mistake a lot of a lot of you make. And I'm being honest. The minute you see your something on TV or in the paper, you reach. Yes. I'm you on, don't start yet. Oh my God! I was on Smile Jamaica. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I've Daily, seen I'm it. Make it. And I remember. It's true. My, my, my professor Andrew Amroop in London on Savile Row and even Nova, Nova said it to me years ago. She said, it doesn't matter what you do. And he said it. And I like, everything just come back. Because I heard this thing in Jamaica and I, and I hear the same thing in London. Right? It has to photograph well. Because seeing it on the runway is one, but when it's seen up close is another. And that's a, lot, that's a lot of these guys don't get. I remember when I went to Hart. I just went to Hart because of, you know, you have to get the papers and stuff. I went there. And even when I was at heart, it's like, when it started, it was 51 students. And this is where like, love, and passions come from. There were 51 students. As the course go on, it dropped to 31. Mm. That 51, I was the only one boy. When it dropped to 31, I was still the only one boy. Because what you find is a lot of people start, and as the journey go along, them just, eh, Fatigue. and them fade, and them fade, and fade. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't have the, that drive and that passion to say, yes, I can, I can, I will do it. You know what I mean? I mean, there are many times the heat lick Brian in the kitchen, where am I going to run out, wipe him, sweat, and continue. Correct? That's how it sure. works. So, and at the end of the day, when, every, when, when, that, when, when that course was finished at heart, <laughs> I was the only one boy collecting all those awards. And to this day, half of who the persons I see from then till now, they're not doing it. Because the, 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 the story is that talent is not enough. It's, it's, it's not enough. Because we're talking about scaling, you know, we're talking about business, and we're talking about oh, how you can make money from this. You can so yes. But... And another, another thing I find so... Um, is that a lot of people say, yes, I can sew their designers, but they have other people doing the work. Mm -hmm. But what I realized is that the minute those persons who don't have COVID, who are running belly, who care foot, foot now work and don't come in, guess what happens? It stops. Because you, the name and the face, can't do it. And it stops right there. <laughs> I, I have a... I, I'm going to allow persons to ask questions. I have to get to Donald, but, but, but I have, I have a follow-up question that is not problematic, but it is a great opening because Mina, you have a title as creative director and founder of your brand. You know, so the things them. Can we create that distinction for persons listening and sh show them that there is an opportunity as well for that path? Please. So, when I was in school, and this is something, someone brought it up, when I was maybe five or six years old, you know when they do that exercise where you put the apple on the table and you have to draw the apple? Mm -hmm. From that first art class, I was told, you're not an artist. You can't do this. Yes. Meanwhile, I wasn't good at math either, but nobody was telling me I don't need to be doing math. You get what I'm saying? The yes. distinction is made where you either have the talent in a specific way, or you don't, from very early on. And I carried that with me. I was good in school, so I did well in school. And so I thought I was going to be an academic. I always thought that my career path was going to be something that, even though I had creative passion, it just wasn't going to be a career for me. It's not serious but enough. But me now, when I think of creative right? director, I just think about the girl who just have a good eye. She can, she can so. she have a good eye. Because that's what people think. Oh, she, yeah, yeah. she have a good eye. What, what does it really entail? And Donald, I have some questions for you. So hold on. Okay. So to fast forward, being a creative director means you can create a brand that people can speak about as if it were a person. The greatest compliment someone can give me is that's Haveli vibes. It's Haveli. It's giving me Haveli. And what that means is I are why. Haveli was founded with the purpose of creating or fostering divinity, fostering the connection to the divinity within and around us. That translates into what we do and how we do it. So fostering connection to the divinity within and around us, honoring heritage through artisanal production, 
working with artisans who have been in this for generations and preserving that. We can talk about sustainability and how that carries through because we need to create harmony on this earth and within, within uh, or among its inhabitants. Then we talk about how we do, how we operate. So investing in the communities of our inspiration, not just pulling inspiration, but actually creating right there. And then the how of it, we only use natural biodegradable fabric, natural and non-toxic dyes, we're committed. And so creating that co cohesion and that consistency, that's the role of a creative director. And then maintaining that it's in every single thing we do. There's not an image that does not foster connection. It's our website, it's in our language, it's in every single piece that's created and designed. So I design, but no, I'm not able to. I'm not trained as a, as a to, to actually sew and create. But I work with and, and create the direction yes, and design the collections that an incredible team of artisans produce. Thank you. No, Donald has a, a very interesting point of view because as we said in his bio, Donald is the first Shevling scholar, Shevling scholar to pursue fashion. Also, I know that you teach as well. Let's talk about the intersectionality or the nexus between education, fashion. Why was it important for you to go to school when I don't know for so, I don't know how to do the things, I have vogue in my yard, I can do all of them, something why I need to go to school. Tell us. Thank you. Thank you, Rush, for that question. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is, I believe it is important for us to, to certify our skill set because, well, I find that in Jamaica, a lot of the creatives, they're, they're, their businesses, it's built on experiential knowledge, right? And that's good, yes, it's good to be able to say, grandma, I sat in the room, because I sat in the room, in my living room with my grandma as well. She taught me, you know, little tricks and so on. But it's very important as well to understand the, the, the history, the background, the different techniques, right? Um, Everything that they said is so important, and of course, they would have learned it somewhere, you know, from somewhere and from someone. It's important to have mentors, right? I find that because it's just based on experiential knowledge, you find that a lot of creatives, they don't know their worth, they don't know their value, and when you're able to, to differentiate certain things within the field, like when you're able to know that, all right, this here, there's, you have your fashion journalists, uh, you, have your, you have your journalists, you have your editors, you have your, your stitchers, your creative directors, right? It's important to know the, the difference. It's, it's, you need to really know the difference because you can't run a business, right, without knowing the, 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 the ins and outs like of being an entrepreneur, right? So it's not just about getting up and sewing and so on. And it's also important because at that time when you, you'll then be able to add value to your product, you'll be able to add value to your business. It's not just coming from just, okay, the living room, but it's coming from, okay, I studied this and that, and I did this, and I was trained to do so, so I know what I'm doing, and I know why I'm charging this amount for this product, right? When we speak about value and charging what, what, what you're supposed to charge, right? So it is important, I believe, to, to, to go to school and get the necessary certified skill set. I have a follow-up question before we questions from the audience Donald what is the biggest misconception or one of the biggest misconceptions you've noticed from your students who come to you at UTEC so let me come and them say yes sir me I got on fashion designer whatever what do you think people misunderstand about the, the, the industry and the brand it's all fun and games you know, as Carlton said, just like myself, I have a similar story. When I started, I was very intimidated, being the only guy in the classroom, and they don't know this, so they're finding out now. But I felt um, alone, you know, but thankfully I had supportive family and friends. I wanted to give up, actually, in first year at UTEC, 
right? Because prior to UTEC, I had no sewing skills. Um, however, family, again, they were very um, encouraging and they, they said, you know, no, it's good to have a skill. You don't want to give this up. Push on, right? The drive, we heard some buzzwords earlier, buzzwords like relationships, right? Passion, drive, sustainability. It's, it's knowing what you want. When we started out, just like you, Carlton, it was 20-something of us in the class. And when it was time to graduate, it was only five of us. You know, drop like fly. You know, every, just every year you'd see just less and less students. You know, so it's the passion. It's the drive. It's they think it's fun and games, and it's not. You have to want it. You have to be hungry. You have to be starving, like Novia said. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, food, fashion. Of course, there's that misconception because um, you see the person, I think Terry said it initially, you see the person at the end. Yes. You don't see the person at the beginning. So you don't understand whether it's, uh, I always use this example. You know, you have the President of the United States visiting Jamaica, who happens to be a popular president around the world. And he doesn't understand why he's on stage and a Brian Lumley would get a bigger forward than him. I think, I think to this day he's still shocked. But you have to, you don't just wake up and become Brian, right? I think we met Brian at the Observer when he was 12 and a half, wow. right? And um, he's been through a lot. It's a, it's a lot. It's, you know, it's ups, it's down, it's, as Donald said, you have to be the, sometimes the only one standing right? Because people are dropping as flies, but you've got to want it. It's not something that happens overnight. I always preach that excellence is in the detail. It's in the detail. You've always got to start again and look and learn, invest in yourself once more, and then give the world the more, right? You don't have to worry about well, you do, Donald, about pricing, because you know you can't price yourself out, you know, outside of the market. That's the reality, right? And especially because it has taken ages for us to even respect. I can tell you, I sit where I sit. It has taken years, to, you know, for people to understand what it is that you do. Yes. You know, what is it that you bring to the table? So, Ooh. it is... Guys, I... I, I, I I don't think you guys understand that you cannot go down to Observer and go to the gate and say, can I talk to Novia, please? This, yes, you can, but will you get, will, will you get an answer? No, but you, you cannot pay. You cannot pay for this advice. And so I'm going to allow you to ask questions. I'm going to take a few questions. Oh, we have a hand. I feel like I'm at an auction. We have a hand and... Uh, where is my microphone? Come on, Vanna White. Vanna, you have to walk faster. Come on. Yes. So we have questions from the audience. And again, panelists, thank you so much. Remember, we want to give practical advice. And yes, the word is hungry. The other word is gut. Yes. What else is the other word, Bran? Passion. Yes, invest in yourself, discipline. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask that when you get on the mic, hello, my name is from, okay? So if you're a high schooler, whatever, we need to know. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jovan Thompson, a student at the College of Agriculture, Science, and Education. I'm also a JNWA Youth Ambassador. And my question is directed to the persons in the fashion industry. Um, I just want to say, though, that it's truly an honor. It's really amazing to be amongst women of excellence and gentlemen of honor. It's, it's an amazing feeling wow. to be here. I, applaud. I love that one. <laughs> women of excellence, gentlemen of honor. Wow. And my question is this. Um, for persons who are living in like rural areas, there are so many persons who don't have access to the resources and... For example, myself, I remember when I was in high school, I was like, yo, I want to be a fashion designer. I was like, I'm going to bring back Jamaica's textile industry. I want to go and win Mission Catwalk. But then 
you realize that when you're there, certain resources are being exposed to you and your you, persons are coming to you and saying, okay, you need to be more practical. You need to, you need to be, find something more lucrative. You need to, to think about an actual career. And so it is more of a traditional careers that are being pushed um, in schools. What is, what is your advice for persons who are struggling? So like for myself, I had to change, you know, and say, you know, let me study environmental science because I'm good at the sciences instead of doing fashion designing because, as I said, persons are like, it's not an actual career or it's, it's something that's going to be hard to make it in well, because it's competitive. What is your advice for persons who are struggling in that area? And what is it that we can do as a country to kind of change the dynamic as we see careers moving ahead? So before, before, we, bef before we have the answer, I would love if we change the narrative from in the room um, about, the, uh, about the viability of these industries. That's why we have this panel. Look on the panel. All of these people are making money off their careers. None of them up here in a brook. So, well, I, I, you're struggling? Oh my God, Carlton, I didn't know. But <laughs> we're changing the narrative around creatives, right? So, yes, we, we understand where you're coming from, but we're going to change that narrative. That's number one. Number two, I would, I would want to frame the question in, in, in terms of the rural part and the, the part about accessibility because the Jamaica part is, is a bigger conversation to have. So, who wants to? Oh, Brian says it was directed to them, but he has lived it, so he wants to also answer. Yes. So, to answer your question, young man, for me, I went to, and, and let me just say, I went to Jamaica College. There's nothing culinary about Jamaica College. <laughs> I went to an all-boys school. It is the mecca of macho, and Tracks. you know, it, is, it has one set traditional careers headed towards that. It's a, it's a mecca of excellence. So when I was this little pleb in third form, choosing subjects, knowing that I wanted to be a chef, everybody looked at me weird, like, what do you mean a chef? You want to be a cook boy, a canteen? It's just like their, their minds were so set on one particular output for you. So everybody started to tell me, you know, what my future would be. And I saw a very different picture. Now, you talk about access to resources. And I know I have a baby face, but this was 20 years ago. When I was in high school, well, 25 years ago in third form. Right? And okay. when you look at <laughs> what I would choose to do and the resources that I had access to me, it was either two places, UTEC or Heart. And I did my research, and you said country. I had to go to country to get the right training. <laughs> Kingston wouldn't give me that, you know what I mean? And when I made that decision to go, um, that was what I thought in my mind was the best resource. Now, I passed all my subjects qualified to go to UER or UTEC, but I chose to go to HART, you know what I mean? Because I found that that was the best practical solution for me and my career decision. And I haven't looked back since. I mean, when I, when I was, there's so many stories I can't confirm, but I don't want to go into it. But that's where I met Novia. Novia, as, it, as Carlton said, came down in the ghetto on the trenches, putting up the thing. Novia was there when I won my first competition. Big upset. This 21-year-old kid won Taste of Jamaica um, for the whole island. You know what I mean? Going up against executive chefs all over the place, and I, and I won that competition. You know, that was my first article in The Observer. Big spread. You know, would I now say I reach? No. Novia and people like Dennis McIntosh kept me humble. This is just the beginning. You know what I mean? You have to now prove to people that this wasn't a book ups. Yeah. <laughs> and of I'm, Luke. I'm, I'm, I'm being given the, the wrap-up, right? But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go against this. A joke. Mina, one, 30 seconds, and I give Carlton 30 seconds. I'll pay for it. It's fine. It is an incredible time to be doing what we're doing. Everything is figure outable. There is an app. I'll t be very quick. Eight years ago, I was working on an e-commerce project, and we were trying to get product shots done, and it was a big to do and thinking, do we have to rent this studio, this, that, the other. Last week, I took my phone, 
put my pieces on a mannequin, shot them, removed the background with a free app, and uploaded them to my website. You can do so much. It's, there are apps to do almost an anything, and this is where the hunger Nina, comes there's a from. Resource. Okay. The 30 seconds, I've, I've given yeah. it to you. Be hungry <laughs> and just keep doing the research and ask and be humble and keep going and getting that mentorship. And it doesn't have to be exactly in the industry. You think work in service, work in hospitality, work anywhere you can get some work experience, go for it. Thank you so much. Now, I, I said that we were wrapped up, but I have a question from a special guest. Special guest, hello. Hi, my name is... You know, Novia, you mentioned the hunger. Mina, you've just mentioned the hunger again, but there are a lot of young people in here who do not understand what you mean by the hunger because they don't know what that feels like. They don't know what it looks like. There's a certain anatomy to what that hunger looks like. And I wanted to ask each of you to perhaps in your own way, in your own journey, what did that hunger feel like and look like for you? What did, what did it, it, did, what did it, did, did, <laughs> you hear me now about the, stumble over the word dictate. <laughs> what did the hunger dictate for you in your everyday life that meant you needed to get up and work? Wow. So I'm going to do 30 seconds per person and I'm going to start from Donald and I'm going to... Um, Donald, what did the hunger look like for you? For me, um, it's in the eyes of my, my siblings as I'm, and my nieces and my nephews. It's wanting to do uh, more for them so that I can set, be, a, be, a, be, be an example so that they have someone to look up to. I mean, I didn't really have someone to look up to as a fashion designer. And so I just want to be able to, for me, it's that moment, knowing that I want to be more for them. Perfect. Mina, hunger. I come from a karmic heritage and environment of excellence. You see that video of the national anthem, I can't get through it without crying every single time. It is a desire to serve and make an impact and to better myself in service of that purpose and those around me. Perfect. Carl Tan, 30 it's, seconds. For me, it is simple. It's, it's growing up in a space where you see Taylor Rani, Wiggles, other Taylors. It is sad and you grow up and see these guys basically sowing all their lives, owning nothing. And then you're growing up in a system where it's government take care of you. If you don't get your pocket money, you're dead for hungry, basically. But you, when I say that, I don't mean, you know, you're hungry. But seeing all of that, I said to myself, no, but this can't work, right? And I remember when just, just going at it, going at it, going at it. And when I went going to, going to heart and see everybody, as, as, as um, what's his name said, by the time you, the, the days pass, the months, weeks pass, you say five, then you say three, then you say two, then you say one. Right? Clearly, they're not hungry for it. You stay because you want it, and you, and you have that hunger for it. So is, it is different because these guys nowadays, it is in your hands. It is in your hands. The YouTube is there. I never had YouTube. I never had them something there. You know what I mean? So you have to find the books. And you know, one of the sad things for me is that you can walk in any bookstore right now in Jamaica. You can't find a fashion book. It's sad. They teach you what to do. You, know, you want to learn something. It's not there. It is not. So it's when this room I travels when I go to these different places, I've, I've researched and find these books and I buy them. Right? So having that hunger is, is going, out, going to get it, not waiting on anyone to say, eh. All right. Right? Not because we know it's e culture. We're not there on it. Not waiting on anybody cool. to say, eh. <laughs> Novia, your time. 30 seconds. I'll give you 45. For me, it was, I just wanted to prove that lifestyle wasn't foo foo and that there were big bucks associated with lifestyle that you, you know, you didn't just have a desk where you just put out prettiness, that the prettiness could actually generate revenue and um, mission so far accomplished. Prettiness can generate revenue. I love prettiness. that. <laughs> yeah, very, Brian, very quickly, for, for me, um, you have this motivational speaker called Eric Thomas. I don't know how many people know him, but he talked about a, a story about the guru, and the guru, this kid asking the guru, you know, what can I do to succeed? What I, and he said, you know, let me teach you how to swim. And he, he came out to the water, and the guy said, all right, come a little deeper. And he said, oh, I can't really swim now. You're teaching me. How are you going to teach me? He said, come a little deeper. And he come a little deeper until he fell down underneath it. And, you know, if, if many of you live on the North Coast, most people can't swim. I don't know why you're so close to the water. But he's flapping around, trying to get up for air, and he's just struggling to come up. And when the guy came up, 
and the guru pulled him up. He said, he said, the moment that you're struggling for air and you want to breathe, he said, until you want it as bad as you want to breathe. Wow. That's when you're going to be successful. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, I think we had a very good conversation. A very, very, thank you so much for being practical, for being straightforward, for being honest. And I look forward to having these conversations sometime again in the future. Guys, scan the QR code because many of the panelists are in the digital magazine. You can get to work with them, call them, text them, WhatsApp them, maybe not know you, send an Instagram message perhaps. These are the leaders in the industry, and you can't pay for this. Thank you very much, guys. A round of applause for the panel on fashion and the culinary arts. Thank you very much. Terry. another round of applause for my you did a great job boo I did no I'm so inspired especially by Havali because I can't even sew a button but then I realized that I can still be at the head even though I can't really do the the finer details thank you so very much to all of our panelists who've been a part of the first presentation as well as the second now the person I'm about to introduce to you is a wearer of many hats She's the Jill of all trades, and she's the master of all. Attorney at law, founder, artistic, creative director of Play for the Arts, principal dancer, if you do not know, in the NDTC. Her form is impeccable. She's a policymaker, and she's a champion for creatives, dedicated to ensure that Jamaica has its place creatively, and culturally, we would love to invite to the stage at this time the National Director of Jamaica Creative. Please put your hands together for Marissa Benin. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was telling Rushcam and Terry last night that it's, it would have been easier to dance <laughs> than to come up here. They didn't believe me, and I insisted that I needed a podium because I needed to hold on for dear life. <laughs> um, before I begin, let me just welcome my permanent secretary who is here and in his usual style is sitting and hiding in the back. That's Mr. Denzel Thorpe. And um, my principal director of culture who is also here and was not acknowledged earlier, Miss Joanne Archibald. And um, all the other dignitaries that are here, the executive director of TEF, Dr. Kerry Wallace, the head of UNESCO, and all the other dignitaries, thank you for coming. It was Victor Hugo, Hugo who said, there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And we are here, aren't we? Yeah, you can clap. <laughs> this is all I really need to say because by virtue of the fact that you are all here this afternoon from this morning, and I know you are in agreement with me, I may be preaching to the choir, to the saved rather, but I must say that this inaugural Creative Career Expo done in this format is long overdue. We need to be talking to each other as creatives and as aspiring creatives talking to young creatives, talking to business-minded individuals, and talking to our nation with one powerful voice. This is the orange economy in action, and we are all players. Today, I am playing my part, my small part, 
being led and encouraged by the Honorable Minister Grange as a convener of the event, and I hope to be a chief driver of many more of these conversations and the actions they inspire. I'm a woman of action, and I believe strongly in concerted action, led by people who have done stuff that works and resonates. I also believe in mentorship and the passing of the baton to young minds who have interest and capacity. So that's why we are all here. And it is not time to hear from me, so I just want to say thank you. And there are a few persons who I know I can't ring their phones for maybe another month because it's been so rough the last two weeks. The land of Forbes from phase three, Christian from phase three. I'm sure I cannot call Christian's phone for another two weeks. Catherine from Mystique. I don't know if she's not grace under fire because as much as I get rattled, I've never heard her lose it. She's, yes, Marissa, everything will be okay. Her tone has never changed. And I thank Mr. Valenthorpe who continues to add flesh to the dry bones of my ideas. And Mr. Roger Hines, my partner who is here, who has to labor through listening the ideas. Oh, you know, I think that's so-and-so and so. Yes, I think that's a great idea. He's never going to say, don't try it. Michael Holgate, who oh boy, there's never a time that I have called, Michael, I need so-and-so, and I need it tomorrow by 12 o'clock. It's done. And all the presenters, I don't know if you understand, I'm not sure I've ever seen any panel with all of them together. If I'm wrong, let me know. The truth is, whatever you do in life, you always have somebody, you have to have somebody that you can call, and it cannot be Ghostbusters. <laughs> you have to have somebody that you can call, you have to make those connections. It cannot be a fragmented existence all the time. Also, Clement, um, I met Clement a few years ago when he came to audition for The Lion King. And, you know, the conversations, you know, were just very engaging. And I, you know, you come up with these ideas and I'm thinking, oh, can it be fierce? Oh, you know, what can I add? You know, maybe this person, maybe that person, you know, and I want somebody that, you know, is foreign, but there's a connection here. And you heard me scream when, when, when he mentioned David Blake. David Blake is my best friend from I was about 12 years old. And when I lived in London and he's in The Lion King, I usually watch it every Saturday morning from the lighting box sometimes. And it never got old. So I know how important The Lion King is to Jamaicans because it has created careers and a lifestyle for so many Jamaicans and they continue to do it. So I know that Clement has a little surprise because, as you know, this is not a one-off one thing. The, the internships, the partnerships, all of the presenters, and there are other persons who are not presenters. You will hear from me, Corporate Jamaica. We're handing over 60 paid internships for Jamaica 60. Um, Minister Grange will announce uh, several students today, but Corporate Jamaica, you will hear from me because we have to, the whole aim of this expo is this. Students are studying. There is never enough money that a government can hand to you. But I strongly believe, as Michael Hulgett shares with me all the time, a government is supposed to provide a path to progression for all its citizens. And this is a path that we are trying to create, the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, through the Jamaica Creative Team. And when I tell you the Jamaica Creative Team was small, you know, was small. 
But let me tell you, we work, we're going to work wonders. I have a strong team. Sonia, Max, Robinson, Kiddist, CJ. Let me tell you, we work. I left there 12 o'clock this morning. And I think I raised up the entire phase three team because I am not going to come into this room and have any surprises. I must see what I am coming to see before it's supposed to happen. And that is show business. Okay? I believe it is magic. And I believe this is magic. But I'm not going to come into a room and be surprised. There are lots of persons in this room that have helped me and guided me and mentored me. And when I fall enough, no, Marissa, it can happen. And I really, really want to thank everyone for coming and everyone that is watching online. I have my teacher from Toronto, Canute Lawrence, who is watching, my first literature teacher. And he's been here for every single event that I have. So thank you. And phase three, Mystique, main event. You know, these are persons that Mystique is new to my creative family, but I've never done anything without Solomon Sharp. And phase three is also new. Thank you. And thank you for all the dignitaries that are coming. And students, I hope you leave here thinking of a profession in the creative arts, in the creative industries rather, that you can be a part of. And it is never sexy to only survive. We all need to thrive in this business. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna need you guys, I need for you guys to do a much better job. Did you, did you hear when Marissa Benin said that there'll be 60? What, 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 uh, uh, what, what's together. the word? Right. This is something that we have seen many people debate on Twitter. We've seen many youngsters who say, yeah, they want the experience, but a lot of youngsters take the bus or sometimes they take a robot taxi. So they want the experience, but they don't actually have the money or the resources to actually get to the internship. Yeah, and this is how we level the playing field. That's because a big opportunity deal. is it. Terry, when Marissa called me, you know, Marissa said, Rush, I'm going to keep an expo. And I said, Marissa, why are you keeping an expo? Marissa said, because I want people to realize that creative can make money. Absolutely. And that creatives can thrive, not just survive. And so it's amazing to me that in an industry that we say, oh, you know, I have no buzz, whatever, that people can go get the experience, earn, and build up their catalog. No, congratulations. Yes. Like, congratulations to Jamaica Creative. My first job, they paid me $2,000 a week. Wow. wow. Jamaican. Wow. Wow. When let was me that, Terry? We're not going to talk about the year. Terry, when let was me, that? Let me explain something to you. My first job paid me 2000 Jamaican dollars. And it was not an internship. It was a J-O-B. Wow. But let me explain something to you, and it is a common thread that all of the panelists said earlier. Sometimes you're going to get your degree, you're going to get your master's, you're going to do all of those things, and you're still not going to get the big money, or the big job, or the big title, or the big office. No matter how talented you are, sometimes you are going to start on that 2000 Jamaican dollars. No, you have a choice. You have a choice. You can either go into the people in place and say, well, I'm only paying me $2,000, so I'm not even going to stay, I'm not even going to try. Them can't even pay me. Them can't me Or you take mm -hmm. the 2000 Jamaican dollars and you show them why you deserve to be paid more. You show them why you deserve to be moved from an intern position to a full-time position. And so even that job, when I was leaving, they now looked at me, Rush, and they said, we would love to offer you more, more because we saw what you are capable of doing. So your excellence has to be unconditional. So congratulations again to Jamaica Creative.
What does this mean, Terry? That means I feel good, man. I feel good. How no. is the food? You, you know the who I heard, nice? Kim? I heard that Monroe is here. From Monroe College? Monroe College, are you here? Where are the... M no, Monroe, Monroe is... We have to hear you. Monroe College, are you here? What was that? What was that? What was that? Wow. Well. I almost did a dance to it. Wow. That, that sounded a lot like Hakuna Matata. matata. They're, they're getting ready for land. King. Hakuna Matata. No, that's absolutely lovely. But what you just did is that sometimes your name will be called in a room. And this is how you answer that call that will leave an impression. I will never forget you. So lunch has started. Um, kick back, enjoy, relax. We're just taking a short break and then minutes? we'll be back just to get right back into our discussions where we look at content creation, wow. creative services, yes. and we also look at production and entertainment. And Do enjoy. All right.
Moments are once in a lifetime. Moments are magic. Moments are precious. Make them memorable with Main Event. From concept to creation, we use your vision to create magical memories, bringing you the best of the world. Main Event Entertainment Group Limited, taking the imagination beyond. Hi, I'm Olivia Babsa Grange, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. I'm Delia Harris. I'm Chef Brian Lumley. I'm Delana Forbes. I am Nadia Rothmer. I am Hans Apartment. I am Ian Randall. My name is Kimala Bennett. My name is Solomon Sharp. My name is Michael Holgate. I am a player in the orange economy. That is, the entertainment, culture and creative industries is the fastest growing sector in the world. And is based on world-class delivery of goods and services to intellectual property. So, when I say orange economy, I mean I am performing arts. I am film. I am publishing. I am physical culture, and that is sport. I am an investor, driver, and facilitator. I am technical theater. I am culinary arts. I am film. I am the performing arts. We are the creative industries. Come hear from us at the Jamaica Creative Career Expo. And let us build something great together.
Moments are once in a lifetime. Moments are magic. Moments are precious. Make them memorable with Main Event. From concept to creation, we use your vision to create magical memories, bringing you the best of the world. Main Event Entertainment Group Limited, taking the imagination beyond. Hi, I'm Olivia Babsa Grange, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. I'm Delia Harris. I'm Chef Brian Lumley. I'm Delana Forbes. I am Nadia Rothmer. I am Hans Apartment. I am Ian Randall. My name is Kimala Bennett. My name is Solomon Sharp. My name is Michael Holgate. I am a player in the orange economy. That is, the entertainment, culture and creative industries is the fastest growing sector in the world. And is based on world-class delivery of goods and services to intellectual property. So, when I say orange economy, I mean I am performing arts. I am film. I am publishing. I am physical culture, and that is sport. I am an investor, driver, and facilitator. I am technical theater. I am culinary arts. I am film. I am the performing arts. We are the creative industries. Come hear from us at the Jamaica Creative Career Expo. And let us build something great together.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to resume. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to resume. Please take your seats. Hello. It's been wonderful so far, and we are looking forward to more excitement. We just want to get through the day, and we're asking you, please take your seats. We're about to resume. Please take your seats. We know Terry Carell is awesome, but please take your seats. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. We invite everyone, Dora Delio, you get a free pass. You're VIPs, peace, 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 peace. At this time, we invite all of you. I know that we took a break. I met a few of you from some schools. I know I invite you to kindly take your seats as we begin the second half of today's expo. I actually just met a, a student who admitted that she came all the way from Westmoreland just to be here. And I think it's kind of ref it's a reflection of the hunger that we heard some of the panelists speak of. You know, even though she lives very, very far, she made this her priority. So I'm very happy and very pleased to have met a lot of the students here. So now that everyone's kind of seated, let us um, continue. We spoke about the Jamaica Creative uh, Career Expo as being the first of its kind, right? And something like this cannot take place without supporters, collaborators, and persons who are always there to help in any way. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Elon Parkinson, Head of Public Relations, Digicel Jamaica. I just waited. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. It's never easy to command the attention of an audience immediately after lunch. But I will insist upon it. So beg you pay me some attention. The association between Digicel and our creatives dates back a far way. 
Indeed, we're going to be 21 in April of this year. And it would really be 21 years of a journey with people from many facets of the Jamaican society. But one thing that remains true throughout the tenure of that relationship is how our creatives would have enabled us to stay close to our customers over those two decades. When you look at the energy, the vibrancy, the creativity of the ads we've become known for, some of you are probably sounding off a few of them in your head. That may very well be an indication of how old you are, you know? The Gimme Five and all of that stuff, be extraordinary. The campaigns that really changed the way we relate to, to Digicel and each other. That's the power of Jamaica's creative industry and how it has enabled organizations like ours to strengthen our partnerships with our stakeholders and our communities and our customers. And now we've burst into the digital age. Everybody's talking about the fourth industrial revolution powered by technology. We've morphed into becoming the region's first digital operator we launched in October 2020. And what does Digicel as a digital operator mean for our creative industries? It means that we are providing that digital engine that's going to take your creativity to newer and farther places. It means that we've invested in an elaborate network, not only of fiber to the home technology, but certainly super fast LTE mobile data that will take that content far and wide. In the very same way you are here right now this afternoon, and you're able to snap some photos with Marissa and the team. I saw a lot of you rushing to get photos with Rush and um, and Terry Carell. And you're able to share that. We provide the network to make it happen. We also provide the network for the next round of innovation that our creatives are going to come with. And that is why we're here. That is why we continue to invest. But this afternoon, I particularly want to challenge our creatives to come up with the world's next best app. Something like that can come from Jamaica too. TikTok came from tens of thousands of miles away. The Americans through Zuckerberg would have created Facebook. And you can name the many other innovators. I believe that we can create a local app with global influence and reach. And I would want to challenge our creators in as much as we provide our suite of apps so far for you to upload your content via GoLoud and our DMusic apps, that you too can add to the Digicel family of apps, come up with that local app that's going to have a revolutionary impact upon the globe. And of course, we will continue to provide the network to make it all happen. Thank you, and good afternoon. Thank you so very much, Elon. Why rush? Why rush? So, so this, is, this is where the creative part comes in, because you see, when you are multidimensional and multifaceted, what happens is that, you know, one moment you are the host, but then the next moment you will appear as a panelist. panelist. Yes. And therefore, Rush said, my darling, you didn't really expect me to wear the same outfit. I can't wear the same outfit, but, but I must say, I am wearing Jamaican-made Haveli from Mina. Very nice. So yeah. he's just making sure that when he's photographed as the host, his caption will be different. While at the very same event, he would be captioned 
differently. Yes. You look good. Thank you, Terry. You good. I still look good. But thank you. I try. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, you're right. No, we just had lunch. We just heard from uh, Digicel mm -hmm. Elon. Thank you so very much for always supporting. And we started off with Ashe, right? Yes. We had the, the, the energy with Rainis. Bombastic. Then Ashe. Right. But we want to take the ante up even more if that is possible. Right. So, so what do we have next? These gentlemen, if you're on social media or if you've been on that rock, <laughs> right. But how are yeah. we shouting already? No, no. I sure we're there, not Terry. I sure we're there. So you guys might recognize them from the car. Them always in the little car. Yeah. And they but, started with the song, We're Not Going Under. I'll get a use. Get a... <laughs> right. Singers, we know them as. But they're also songwriters and arrangers. So we just want to make you know, say, them train and under the dibby dibby. Right. And everywhere we look over social media, they went viral, not just for Jamaican songs, but foreign. international, big foreign songs. Yes. Who the, are these guys? I understand there are three kings. Kings. So we have Just then, King. Then there is Lee King. Then and then have there is DL King. Do you know who we're talking about? Yeah. What's the name? No, 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 you What's can't build up so. Oh my goodness. After three, one, two, three. Island, Island Kings. Kings. Oh my God, what an introduction. Thank you so much, Terry Curran and Rush Cam. All right, if you know these songs, sing, with us, sing along with us. Come on. Hey. <laughs> I shall sing as long as I live and as long as I live. I shall sing, I shall sing as long as I live and as long as I live. I shall sing what we know, even though I'm old but I'm young, a little weak but no, I am strong. Old enough to know what's right, young enough to dance all night, too weak to hold it back, uh, strong enough to give you heart attack. The situation sweet my soul, as long as I live, I shall sing, as long as I live, and as long as I live, I shall sing, I shall sing, as long as I live. And as long as I live, I shall sing again. I shall sing as long as I live. And as long as I live, I shall sing. I shall sing as long as I live. And as long as I live, I shall sing. I shall. I feel like jumping, yeah. Ooh, ooh. I feel like moving, ooh, ooh. I feel like dancing, yeah. Ooh, ooh. I feel like jumping, yeah. Ooh, ooh. La 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 Just King, tell them. 54, 46 was my number, yeah. And right now, someone else got my number. Help me out, guys. 54, 46 was my number. And right now, someone else got that number. Help me out, come on. Say, I say yeah. I say yeah. I say yes, sir. I say yeah. 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 Do you believe I will take something with me and give it to the policeman? I wouldn't do that. No, no, no. I'm not a fool to hurt myself. I say yeah, I say yeah, baby. I say 
Thank you so much for having us. As I said before, we're Island Kings. It's all right. And we just have these amazing songs to do for you. I want you to have a good time. And if you know the song, sing along save with us. Here we go. Save it. Save it. So what you do? What you do? Where you at? Where you at? Oh, you got plans. You got plans. But don't say that. Shut your trap. I'm sipping wine. Sip, sip. I'm in a row. I look too good. Look too good. To be alone. Ooh, my house clean. My house clean. My pool warm. My pool warm. I just shake. Smooth like a newborn. I should be dancing, romancing in the east wing and the best week on the mansion was happening. I am playing around every word that I say, baby, straight from the heart. So if you try to lay in these arms, I'ma leave the door open. 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 Hoping that you feel the way I feel and I want you like you want me to not, baby. Tell me what you're coming through. Ooh. Hey, you're so sweet, so sweet, so right, so right. I won't bite, uh -uh. Uh -uh. unless you like, unless you like. If you smoke, if you smoke, I got the haze. haze. And if you're hungry, girl, I got the lays now. Ooh, baby, don't keep me waiting. waiting. There's so much love we could be making. Show some up. we could be kissing, cuddling. Rose petals in the bathroom, girl, it's jumping, let's go playing. I ain't playing no games, every word that I say is straight from the heart. So if you try to play in these arms, I'ma leave the door. I'ma leave the door open. If you know it, leave the door open. I'ma leave the door open. That you're coming through. Ooh. Yeah, I'm La la la. La 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 la. I see you, baby. La la la. La 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 la. I've got to see you, baby. La la la. La 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 la. And as persons of color, we have endured, but we are still here because we are strong. And as we celebrate ourselves this month, let us remember that we will continue to endure because we are strong. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulder 
Just in case I have way to run. <laughs> See, I got eyes way in the back of my head. Just in case I have to run. I do what I can, what I can, what I can for my people. While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night. So I'm going to stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, do you hear freedom calling, calling me? Gonna keep on keeping on. I can feel it in my bones. Yeah. Early in the morning, before the sun begins to shine. We gotta keep moving towards the separating line. I'm waiting through mighty waters. I know I gotta make up my yeah. And I don't mind if I lose any blood on my way to salvation. And, and I'll, I'll fight, fight with the strength that I got until I die. So I'm going to stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, did you hear freedom calling, calling me to answer. Going to keep on keeping on. Far across the river, do you hear freedom calling, calling me to answer? Gonna keep on keeping on. Say, say I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, can you hear freedom calling? Thank you, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you, thank you. All right, we have some oldies for you guys. You know, I've got sunshine. Come on. On a cloudy day. If you know we sing along, if you know we sing along, come on. When it's cold and shivering outside, we baby got the month of May. I guess you'd say what? what can make me feel this way My girl, my girl, my girl Talking about my girl, my girl My girl, my girl, my girl 
talking about my girl. My girl, come on, girl, man, man, man. I got so much honey. The bees, they envy me. Oh, now, 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 listen, miss. I got a sweeter song, sweeter song oh, oh, than the birds in the tree. <laughs> and you can sing this part with me. Let's go. I guess you say what? what can make me feel this way, my girl. Talking about my girl, my girl, my girl, my girl, talking about my girl, my girl. Take it away, girl. Come on, so in love with you, whatever you want to do, it's all right with me. feel so brand new and I want to spend my life with you oh, oh, oh let's let's stay together let's stay together loving you weather weather times are good When I wake up in the put your morning, hands love. hey, put your need claps, eh. need claps, eh. need claps, eh. 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 the smile I had up on my face is gone. I can't see the sunshine from the rain. Come on, so when I think of you, when I think of you, when I think of you and the world's alright with me, and the world's alright with me. Hey. Just one thought of you. Just one thought of you. And I know it's gone. And I know it's gone. Come on, come on, come on. A lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. Come on, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. Lovely. Come on, God, let's go. So when I think of you, when I think of you, and the world's alright with, all right with me. Oh, just one thought of you. Just one thought of you. And I know it's good. And I know it's good. I love the guys in the back. Let's go, let's go. A lovely day. I love it. I love it. I see you guys. Love it. I see you. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Don't say. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. Lovely day. 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 Thank you so much for having us. We you are your us. Island Kings. Continue to have an exceptional rest of your day. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. You guys can do a much better job than that. We're at a Jamaica Creative Career Expo with creatives, so we have to make the most nice for our career. Boy, them going good. I saw people like doing this over there, and see you big up yourself. I see you singing every single word. I saw you guys over here. And I want to thank the Island Kings for choosing songs for common entrance babies. You know, those of us who graduated, where my country, common entrance babies at? Because we only need three subjects, and that is maths, English, and... We don't need no more than that. So when you got into that last part, I was like, yeah, something old but good. Thank you so very much. You guys enjoying yourself? So you're getting a nice bit of like a balance between entertainment and information, right? 
So we had two panel discussions earlier, and I think I, I can bet that we're going to have a lot of questions from you guys in this particular panel discussion. We are looking at creative services and content creation. Let's meet the panelists. In this new millennium, content is both king and queen, and the creative services that have been the lifeblood of the Jamaican culture and society is ripe with the bountiful presence of these creatives. After completing her degree in psychology with a minor in film studies, Himala Bennett set out to be one of the best directors in the film fraternity. She accomplished that aim and so much more. She is the managing director of the Production Lab, which is a fully integrated, 100% Jamaican born and bred advertising agency with global reach and an island swagger. They are a strategic, creative, passionate, solutions-oriented and no-nonsense group with a heavy emphasis on getting stuff done. The lab uses focused research to create branding, positioning and strategic campaigns for several companies in Jamaica, the Caribbean and further afield. Their unique business model combines a small, dynamic management core with an exhaustive roster of creative and production personnel. They create campaigns that speak directly to the majority of the population, always garnering excellent response. Valon Thorpe sits at the helm of Mystique Integrated Services Limited, which, in eight short years, has become one of the leading 360 marketing agencies in the industry. From early on, he had a vision to transform Jamaica's marketing landscape and in so doing, fuel the creative industry and create opportunities for young people like himself. From a small office space with a team of three persons, he has grown Mystique to a booming staff complement of over 40 individuals, housed in his own complex, where the creativity of his employees is allowed to reign free. The Mystique Integrated Team, guided by Valon, demonstrates its innovation not just from an artistic perspective, but also by figuring out the why to connect the big picture and create effective solutions. The heart and soul of the company is reflected in his mantra, less steps with deeper footprints. Spanning varying industries, Mystique Integrated has worked with a number of global brands, including Diageo, Scotiabank, and Campari Group, to further their impact across the Caribbean. Named after its founder, Ian Randall Publishers at first focused on history and the social sciences, which allowed young academics to publish their findings locally, helping the region to become less dependent on writers from the United Kingdom. In later years, Randall expanded the range of books to include biography, culture, cookery and sports, while producing texts for undergraduate level students and the upper levels of the Caribbean secondary school system. His list contains the most comprehensive offerings on the regional integration movement and on the Caribbean community, CARICOM. His published list contains over 350 printed titles and some electronic editions. The direction of the firm is now in the hands of Randall's daughter, Christine, while he himself has continued in fields such as marketing, public relations and consultancy. In 2000, Randall helped establish the Caribbean Publishers Network, CAPNET, and became its first president serving for two two-year terms, during which he established links with the international publishing community and with publishers in Africa through the sister organization, APNET. Attorney turned creator, host, Roshane Rushkam, is a practiced attorney at law who graduated from the University of the West Indies and Norman Manley Law School at the top of his class. He was, however, drawn toward a more creative calling, which followed on the heels of a lifestyle blog he produced while studying. Stepping out on faith, he began a full-time journey as a YouTuber and content creator, garnering several thousand subscribers on his YouTube channel. He educates and entertains, packing up his audience with gems, nuggets of advice and laughter. Captivated by his island man aesthetic, his candid advice and unique personality, his fan base has grown and continues to grow at a rapid rate as he continues producing content that persons have described as inspiring and relatable to millennials and Gen X alike to enjoy. Make sure that you write down your questions from now. I think I'm going to jump into the question um, segment very, very quickly. So please remember that they're here for you. So welcome. I love this panel. And I'm, I'm, I'm particularly pleased to see you, um, Ian, simply because even with the content creation and there's a lot of video and, you know, everyone is talking about the TikToks and the Instagram. And yet still, when we look at the publishing world, there's a lot happening over in that space. 
hard copy, e-books, audio books. So I'm very, very pleased to see this lovely mix of content creation um, and creative services. Now, I know you would have seen Kimala Bennett for the lab, but for those of you who do not know, this is Tashara Lee Johnson, who I consider to be Kimala's right hand woman. So just in case you're going, oh, oh she was, <laughs> welcome. All right, let me start with, um, with, with, with Ian. I'm gonna start with you in terms of, we have students here, and as I, as I said earlier, there's a lot of talk about video and TikTok, and there's nothing wrong with that because everybody has a market and, 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 and an audience to engage. Talk to us about the, the publishing. We've seen a lot of um, persons within the Caribbean, even in Jamaica here, writing more books, and more people are speaking about self-publishing rather than going through a formal channel. What do you have to, to, to say about that? The mic. Space for everyone. Um, you know, the publisher really is an enabler. Um, we take content that's been created by creative people, we package it, and we finance it, and we present it to the world. Um, basically, uh, you know, we're no different from a property developer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have an idea, um, but you don't do the quantity surveying, you don't do the architecture, you don't do the building, you don't even do the marketing and the selling. What you do is to gather all of those experts, put those ideas together, manage the whole process, and presto, you have a book. Um, to, to shift the idea of self-publishing, um, you know, you know, within our industry, we created this mystique about what publishing is about, mm -hmm. and we put down um, vanity publishing, and we put down self-publishing. Fact of the matter is that you can be your own publisher. You can do exactly what the publisher does, but you have to know what to do, yeah. who to go to, and how to manage it. And that is why, even being a traditional publisher, I would encourage people who want to self-publish, manage their own publishing. There is space for you, not just as a writer, not just as an artist, not just as an editor, but also you can be all things. You can also be the publisher. All right, thank you so very much for that. Valon, I'm coming over to you because I think, well, we saw, we spoke to Saeed earlier who said he went to school for Geography, great, you guys are paying attention. I remember I was saying that I don't remember meeting somebody who went to school for geography. Well, meet Valanthorpe, who, if I'm not mistaken, went to school for rocks. Geography. <laughs> to go and learn about <laughs> rocks, right? And I remember being in the car with you at the time and you were speaking about that and then looking at how you were taking this new um, innovative way of uh, creative services. And you were super young at the time. How young were you when you started your own um, agency? Just so that I can provide context for the question. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd say I was 23 when I started, and Saeed and I are from the same program. We went to high school together, and then we went to university together. All right, so you are 23, and you're in a space that is basically handled by bigger players, well-established, credible, what was your thought process coming in? Because we might have students here who have great ideas, but are told you're too young. You're too young to conceptualize those ideas. You're too young to even manifest those ideas. What were some of the things that you drew from? What were the biggest lessons? Um, I think we can start, I can start answering that question by even saying people who open the door for you and um, send the elevator down for you. So I have a strong mentor in Solomon Sharp. Mm -hmm. um, I was interning somewhere and he just saw me and it's not like he knew how to do my work. He just said, go and do your work. <laughs> so I feel like um, just even having that belief in yourself that your ideas um, could be shared mm -hmm. because people seem to hold back themselves a lot and they make these archaic things hold them back in terms of their thinking. And I mean, just having somebody say, tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. So that was one part of it. But then I also had my own thoughts and I believed in them and I worked very hard at the craft because I didn't go to school for it. So a lot of studying had to go into it. I just knew I liked um, the whole idea of the creative industries. And I heard Mina, Mina talk about it earlier that, oh, she wasn't good at art, but 
you know, you feel kind of lost in that space at school because you don't know um, what kind of other jobs entail. Like, I ended up doing a geography degree, and here I am running a marketing and advertising agency. So, I mean, in just self-belief and doing it for more than just yourself. Absolutely, and you made mention of Mina, and so I'm going to ask, you know, on behalf of the students here, that not everyone is going to be a content creator, meaning an individual. Not everyone is going to be a writer, but there are persons who I call the master architects who can bring people together in a room to either pitch an idea or to help a client elaborate on an idea. For those persons who might want to go into the space of, of what you do, what are some of the skills that you think they must have or at least an attitude that they must have in order to do what you do? Um, I think a lot of the things that we do is very innate. You're like, you know if you have that creative eye, you see visions, you know that you want to execute something, you know, you dress a certain way, you have a little quirk about you, but that's just not, that's not it alone, because you know we always have different types of creatives. But I mean, just to be passionate about something, to be passionate about work and to work hard at it. Um, I feel like, I feel like I work hard every day and I don't have any time to stop. And uh, the success is a byproduct of hard work. So I think putting your head down and staying focused, um, finding your why and a purpose about what you're doing, because for me, I found out that my purpose was you know, helping my friends, helping young people. Um, I saw a lot of people kind of lost, like how I was lost as well. So at some point, it became like the thing that, drew, that fueled me to make me keep on moving. Like everybody know, as you said earlier, well, the, the real said, you know, from it was like two of us, three of us, and now it's over 40 of us going on to 50. And the, av <laughs> Thank you. And the average age there is 25. Um, so it's a lot of young people. I've been to your space, and I'm the, always the oldest person in the room. So yes, thank you for that. But it's hardworking young people. And hard working, you know, I feel, I feel so good when Marissa was speaking about Catherine earlier, because Catherine is also such a hard worker to just to feel, to just know that we can make an impact and not, at this age, a lot of this is everybody's first job, and it takes a lot of work to get everybody in line, but you know, once you do what you love, mm -hmm. I won't finish it, it's um, too cliche. Yeah, no, beautiful. <laughs> Tashara, we are always in contact. We go back and forth, we are always emailing, and there is something about the behind the scenes that a lot of persons don't know. So we hear content creation, we hear marketing, we hear advertising, and it sounds really cool. And because as consumers, we are seeing the ads, we're seeing what you put together on behalf of the client. But there's a lot of work ethics and client management and team management and logistics that go, in, you know, that go on in the background. Help our students understand what are some of the other areas deeper within the agency that they can start to uh, focus on. Okay, so you are absolutely correct. It is much deeper and rigorous than what we see as a final output. Um, you hear people say it's the glitz and glamour, but behind that is a lot of hands, a lot of people just pulling. Um, Auntie Maxine, who is over there, always says to us, the pre-production process of any production is the gut-wrenching part. And that is where you have Terry practicing, um, rehearsing day by day, Marissa saying that last night she stayed here until she saw it. That is a lot of the hard work that we don't see before we see this. And um, there are a lot of careers or a lot of paths to, to um, stick to or to choose from in that. Um, you have persons who do makeup, um, you have persons who do styling, you have persons who are technicians. But inside an agency, for example, it's almost like sales rep. They're the ones who speak to the clients. It's client relations, building that. You also have persons who are front desk receptionists. You have persons who are office attendants, auxiliary staff, just a lot of little things that carries the domino effect. So what we see is the end product, but there is a lot of chains and connections to that to fuel what we see in the end. Beautiful. Roshkam, I'm coming to you. A lot of the times when students or people in general hear the term content creation, they only think of like social media creation. And it was just recently we realized that, well, there are people who create by writing. They write on behalf of, of, of clients in the form of 
blogs, official blogs, official newsletters, but then we know the ones that are more popularly known as the content creators. Um, what is the biggest misconception? What is it that our people need to understand? Because we understand that it is lucrative. It can be lucrative if you position properly. But having spoken to persons who are interested in getting into the area that you are getting into, what is the biggest miss for them? And what is your advice? Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I think that people believe that we just wake up, turn on the camera, and it's vibes. Nothing else, just, just vibes. It's not a business, it's not anything structured. You just go off how you feel. So today I'm gonna feel good, I'm gonna do it. Tomorrow I'm gonna feel good, I'm gonna do it, whatever. And the other part is that people believe that once you have a big hit, like you're viral for one moment, that's then it. that's it. No work after that. No. I would say to many persons that you have to create content even if no one is watching. There are times when I go on YouTube, I may make the video, Terry, nobody watches it. And next week, I have to show up again and make another video. There's a time when people are saying, boy, Rush, can me a buzz. You have the biggest buzz, yeah. And I can't take that and say, yeah, man, yeah, man, I have the buzz. Because next week, again, mm -hmm. crickets, nobody's watching. So you have to be showing up for yourself and for your audience every single week as if it's your last week. Yes. I appreciate that. No, you mentioned viral. Should they? Absolutely. The question I have for you, because there's also a tendency to focus on going viral, being viral. Should that be the focus as a content creator? Being viral or no, be okay? No, no. And I will tell you, um, no offense to anybody else, but there's a, there's a reason I'm on the stage, right? There's, no, as in I'm going to tell you, this is, a, this is a business that has to be sustained yes. over a period of time. Yes. Doing things that go viral, the way that you get there, you cannot work with corporate. You cannot work with certain brands. You cannot do certain things. You cannot show up and look in the mirror tomorrow morning and everybody looking at you with respect. So being viral, yes, everybody is like, yeah, man, you have a buzz, but what happens with that buzz? Buzz can't carry to the supermarket. Hmm. And most of our jobs, most of our jobs are connected to brand work. And so being viral, yes, it helps your numbers, but it doesn't help that sustainable brand over a period of time. I appreciate yes. that. I'm coming back to Valon now, and I'm coming back to Tashara, then I'm coming to Sir, uh, Sir Ian. There is a certain level of morality, no? That, or, or a measure of it, a compass, right? I have seen where I've gone into the lab, for example, and I've heard the team say, well, if we have these persons as clients, typically we will not accept the competitor because it's like a conflict of interest. And so I think it's important for us to kind of dive a little bit deeper with this topic because sometimes people think it's okay to just kind of work with everybody, share everybody's secret. What, what, what do they need to understand when it comes to whether you're running a business or whether you are an individual, an individual personality, how important is it for you to manage that brand so that there is no brand confusion, there's no conflict of interest? How did you navigate the, the, the space? I'm going to start with, with Sasha Ali. Um, as Rush said, you know, this is a business and involved in any business, there's an element of trust. Mm -hmm. There's an element of trust that you have to hold on to for your brand and also for your clients. And I speak from the client seat to say that they expect, even when we're, they're not watching or no one is watching, that we are upholding their standards that high. Um, I think outside of trust, there's also the moral compass that everybody has. And as a business, it's something that's critical to us. Of course, we'd want all the money or all the brands, but you, know, you do have to navigate that um, line very closely and be careful because... You, you're building brands and people can read integrity, authenticity, and it's something that we have to ensure that we're not just whitewashing across the place. Um, in addition to that, there is a level of being yourself that's customer service for us, but it's also authenticity for like a rush cam who is, you know, him naturally. You see the passion and you feel it. And I think um, 
in managing any brand, those are two integral things outside of profits and revenue and you know, being great at creativity, there's a level of humility and humanness that comes in through trust and also through the moral compass. I hear that. Valon, you want to add to that? Sure. Um, I think Tash touched on basic, basically most of everything. Um, but for us, I think a big part of it is defining and understanding who we are and what kind of company that we'd like to be, or even as a person that you'd want to be, and aligning those values with the people you want to work with. Um, a conflict doesn't arise because you feel a part of the team. It's a partnership by that point. And there is work that I wouldn't take, and there is work that I've said no to just because it doesn't fit within my core values, it doesn't fit within my company values, or what I am teaching or trying to teach. And I found that in just, Absolutely. In just staying in that lane. Absolutely. No, 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 I'm giving them the opportunity to applaud yeah. because I hear people applauding. Yeah. Because integrity is something that is dwindling where people are just like, who cares? And you have to understand that integrity really holds your entire brand reputation together. Continue. <laughs> you got me. It's fine. We, no, that, no, that is a very big yeah. part that you played. So yeah, that's basically it for us. Um, you'll always know, we'll always have the mystique about it. And I think that that's a big part of our brand equity and especially in building responsible young people. I don't have to worry about what they're doing outside of work either because our culture is so um, ingrained with everyone. We believe in the same things. I hire based on passion and personality rather than talent, which is very interesting for me because I feel like the work is, ab you're able to teach that work but you know, I'm mostly, you know, I end up wanting to fall in love with the people that I'm working with. I want to learn from them. I believe that, I believe you can learn from anybody, to be honest. So we all have to have a united front. I have to believe in the same things. And that's how we choose our brands. And that's how conflicts now arise. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sir Ian, I have a concept. I have an idea, whether it's a book, whether it's, um, whether it's novel, fiction, nonfiction, prose, poetry. Do we understand, um, you know, as a people about intellectual property in terms of this is mine, this is my creation? Because I think that's one of the biggest things that we hear within the creative industry, right? We have people who have the content, they have the creativity, but when it comes to actually protecting that intellectual property, it's somewhere where we fall off. For persons who might be interested in getting into publishing, they want to be authors, what are some of the things that they, they need to be aware of or they need to consider? Well, first of all, the, you know, as, as a publisher, um, one of your greatest responsibility is to respect the work of the author. Um, you know, even when you are rejecting um, a proposal, um, you, you have to be cognizant of the fact that it is perhaps their, their dearest possession. And one of the problems we have, for instance, is working along with an author, having a deadline and trying to get a manuscript out of them, and they won't release it because they want to perfect it and because it's so close to them, um, so personal, that once they release it to a publisher, they're releasing their soul to the world. Um, and, and, and therefore, that places an enormous amount of trust on the publisher to not only respect the work of the author, but also to protect it. And, you know, that is one of the problems that people who self-publish, I will come back to the self-publishing thing because I'm actually now dealing with an, with, with an author, a school teacher in Grenada, who years ago published a volume of poetry um, had it published by some vanity publisher in the United States um, who has been selling her book now for years. She wants to do a new edition and she, she doesn't want to change the title but she cannot get back her book from that person. And now we have redone the book for her we, we can't get it on Amazon, we can't get it on most of these platforms because they say this book is there already by another publisher. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the whole business of who you deal with, 
the level of trust you have with that person and the respect they have for your work and for giving it back to you when you want it um, is just vitally important. Even as publishers, you know, we, we have that problem. Um, years ago, uh, you know, um, when, I, when we were fairly young, um, and we had produced this best-selling cookbook, The Real Taste of Jamaica by Enid Donaldson, printed with a printer in China who we had never met, and wanted to change printers. And uh, the original printer um, refused to release my film and everything. And I remember getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning um, to speak to this printer in China. And I can never forget the words he said to me. He said, Mr. Randall, I refuse to obey you. You refuse to give me back. And we had to start all over again. Chinese, Chinese printer, yes. Chinese. Not in Chinese, no. <laughs> <laughs> so even as publishers, we have, have to, to be, be careful, careful about the agreements we get into and who we work with. And it's the same thing with authors. Mm. You have to be absolutely clear about who you're dealing with, who you're giving your work to, and how you protect, protect. yourself. Not just in getting your royalties paid, but in getting back your property when you want it. That's a very good point, and it's, it's, it's extremely important. I mean, we're speaking about creative services as well as content creation, but we're also speaking about integrity and being very careful with who your partners are. So it's not just the glitz and the glamour that a lot of the time is glorified, but really it's the work that goes in underneath. There's a young lady who had a, a, a drawing. She had a, a graphic designer do artwork for her. She was selling her things. Her things were doing very well. She was selling out. And then she got taken down, her website, everything. She got sued for copyright infringement because the graphic designer who she hired actually went and trademarked the actual design. And so now the actual conceptualizer is in court battling right now. And so what we're saying is that even though you're being creative in the moment, make sure that you learn to protect your creativity. But can I also say, um, don't be lured by just the money mm -hmm. and thinking about how much you can make by doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Because having done it yourself, you then have to get it to an audience. And if you don't have the capabilities for doing that, then your work would have been in vain. And not only that, you know, as people um, often say, you know, if, if, if you have a dental problem, you don't go to a carpenter. Um, and therefore, if you go to that carpenter, what you're going to get is what a carpenter can produce. Exactly. Uh, you're going to get something that is shoddy. You're going chaka, to get chaka. something that can't chaka, be, chaka. yeah, that, 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 that can't achieve what you want and what the work deserves. Absolutely. And therefore, you need to go to a professional. Absolutely. I'm going to open up the questions. I'm going to open up the floor for questions. We're looking at the creative aid, um, services as well as content creation. So if, we could, if you could just raise your hand. This is the moment. We have a lot of you in the audience who might be TikTokers, content creators, bloggers. Let us get these questions. I have a hand over here. All right. Thank you so very much. So that we can get a lot of dialogue. Good afternoon. I'm Roxanne White, a student at the Northern Caribbean University. This particular question is for you, Rush. We, you would have mentioned before about the whole idea of going viral. My question is, how do you fortify yourself to deal with the negativity that comes from producing your content, especially if you speak to something that the majority doesn't necessarily agree with? Good question. Thank you. Um, I said it on TikTok the other day, and I hold it true. I know who I am. I am not defined by anybody else. And so negative comments that are not grounded in fact do not deter me or move me. 
when you're going on the internet, the internet has how many bill billions of people? You have to know who you are and be grounded in that. Because otherwise, you're going to be like a ship without a sail. Just over your Sirocco books, over your Sirocco books. Are you this left and right in the ocean? I go left and right. So, my advice to you would be to ground yourself, be around people who you trust, ask their opinion. Sometimes the negative feedback is actually valid, by the way. Sometimes it's constructive, yes. And if you take the right parts out of it, yes. But also, don't take it personally. They don't know you. They, the same people who are telling you that, Terry, I love your top. They love your top. They don't know you. So tomorrow, they can say, Terry, I hate your attitude. Because they don't know you. So the same people who will cheer for you will tear you down. It's not a big deal. Don't take it personally. Move on. All right. I hear that. Who is the next person? Ah, oh, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. I'm elated to be here in the presence of all you esteemed, you know, people. We feel the same um, way. <laughs> I'm Rasheen Kuri. I'm an entertainment design student at um, UTEC, um, along with my fellow classmates here. All right. Um, as an entertainment design student, there are, there are a lot of projects that... Um, have led us, have led us to some inf insightful thoughts and ideas that we think may be quite impactful. So my question to the panel is, what advice can you share with us with regards to financing and helping us to further these ideas? So do I look to Valon, Mr. Rich? Or do I look to Tashara Lee for that question? So we have someone who says, hey, they may have ideas. And you could tell us too, or would you be the right person to speak to in that, in that, in that space? I would say there are um, many people to speak to. It seems like a closed door sometimes, but it's never too you know, early to start or to try. Um, we have a program at the lab called the Innovation Fund where we open up to persons within, but even outside of that, interns who come in to pitch ideas, share it with us. In fact, we have an intern with us from UTEC right now who um, has a few ideas and is sharing with us. So you can always reach out to us via our website or direct message. The good thing about digital now is that you can access, access us in an instant. So you'll have my Instagram or Kimala's Instagram, for example, outside of formal companies and fund, they're funding through grant programs. I'm fortunate to sit also on the board of JACTA, which is the Jamaica Film and Television Association. And um, once you become a member, you're privy to all, and you have access to all the opportunities that come our way. And as one of the formal organizations in the industry, a lot comes through us via JAMPRO or even via other entities around. So that is one avenue. All right, Valon, you want to add? Dan? Okay, question? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, Hello. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Giovanni Lewin from the University of the West Indies. I'm the deputy PR. I'm here with our guild councillors. Lovely. Madam President. Um, I have a question for Rush Cam, mainly because people say that you're my doppelganger. Don't see it, but you know. <laughs> so it's primarily because of the social media influence that you have. So how do we effectively, effectively train people who are coming up to wanting to be content creators, content curators, and social media influencers um, by the standard that you and people like Quiet Perry would have branded um, you know, from the social hosts and so on and so forth, given that level of integrity in this industry because it is a new and upcoming industry? Well, oh, it's back. Haha, I was premature. Thank you for the question. Um, I think that, I think perhaps the way to step back and look at it is, is through the lens of it being a business. And it, the same way that you would develop a business is the same way you would develop yourself as a content creator and the content that comes from you. So it's like, okay, what are my core values? All right? What is authentic to me? What do I provide? So when we think of what you provide, some people provide skits. Perfect. Some people provide inspiration and motivation. Fine. Some people provide this. Okay. Next. 
All right, which brands do I want to work with? Terry talks about integrity. You see, if you want a sustainable brand and one that grows over time, you're going to have to say a lot of no's, especially at the start. Because the there are brands, are we all adults here? There are brands who will ask you to post like intimate toys, for example. And that, Alicia Moulton White is here from Sajikor. Sajikor is not going to call you after she sees you posting an intimate toy on your page, for example. She's not. So I'm just thinking, okay, step back, look at it, big picture. Where do I want to get in five years? How do I develop thing, something over time sustainably to get there? And I think also just be patient um, because this is something that goes off views and likes and everything, but it will come, I promise you. I'm not even there yet, I think, but I have really done well for myself by just being authentic and sticking to the plan. So Valon tells me all the time, Valon says, get up every day and do the same thing and work towards it a step at a time and have a plan. You might not get there today, but you'll get there. So the, the, the big answer is to have a plan. Absolutely. Yes. And to, and to, to add to the doppelganger, um, Giovanni, I think you, you said your name is, uh, it is to always remember that you can't be everything to everyone. You're not here to serve everyone. You're not Please. here to appeal to everyone. So what's going on is that people want to be social media uh, influencers and they want to be content creators, but they, they see a trend over here and they itch up in it. They see something over here, they itch up. It's just like, what are you doing? Who are you? So I would say, you know, be okay with just appealing to the kind of audience you want and to attract. Terry, I would just add quickly that if we think of business again, think of it as you can have a niche, right? You can, you can literally maximize a niche and not have to worry about over Anybody there. Else. You can maximize the East Wing and the East Wing and say, wow, 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 rush cam, rush cam everywhere and you eat a food. And you haven't stepped over to the West at all by being what you're not. So it's okay if you are in a specific realm doing exactly what you want to do. You can go a makeup shop and get shoes. Remember that. Well, unless, unless it's a wholesale, but yeah, sure, for sure. Uh, question. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Hello. Uh, my name is Theonai Tomlinson from the National Secondary Student Council. Nice. Uh, my question is directed to the lab. Uh, you emphasize in doing behind the scenes work in terms of flame in the bio that was being displayed. I saw the different short flames with the commercials of Tropical Rhythm, Usain Bolt, but th that's my, as Rushkam said, that's my niche, that's my ukum, you know, and oh, <laughs> I, 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 want to, I want to ask, you know, when you're up in the deep hours of the night, in the wee hours of the night, what gives you the drive to continue, even when you're tired and you see like what the idea that you have in your mind it's not coming through on the Premiere Pro, but you still want to keep pushing. And we could ask that question to Valon as well. Yeah. It's what um, everybody said up here, you why. Um, for me, it is my why. I love production, for example, and I know the lab why is production. We say we want to create wow work on time. <laughs> that is our statement. And wow is when you grasp it and you see it, you don't have no expression but wow. On time is that part that you spoke about, staying up to ensure we hit the deadlines because we're not only working for us, we're working for people and the clients. Um, I would also say it's, it's just your passion and your purpose. You know, It's deeper than any material thing. It is about what you really want to do. And you find the more you're grounded in that, the hard work is second to none. You know, you work throughout the night, you'll stay up, you'll not sleep. You'll do a lot of that because it's deep-rooted in your passion and purpose. Let me ask you a question, Balon. She just spoke about delivery and meeting deadlines and timelines. And when people speak about creatives, sometimes they speak about these timelines and these deadlines. And we have some lovely creatives who are extremely talented, but then guess what? Them ghost you. Them ghost you. No, no, no. Them tell you a deadline, your deadline reach, you call them, you can't get them, them ghost you, them block you. And then two months later, them say, whoa, whoa, go on my dog. And you're like, where's my project? How do you deal with crisis management, not meeting deadlines, and communicating 
communicating honestly with your clients and your team? I think a lot. Let me try. I think a lot of that um, comes from even how you will even accept work and the timelines that you set. Because even in our industry, it's go, 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 go. And like I've been in situations where somebody calls Tuesday, we need a commercial on TV Friday. So we needed to shoot Wednesday, Thursday, and edit through the night. And the thing about Mystique is that you would never feel alone doing that. Um, there's always a team to help you. And the alternative of not doing it is that you're defined by late or sloppy work. And in our industry, or in any industry, and as a person, that's not something you want to be known for. But the difference is, when you, when, once you're around like-minded people, um, you have people who share the same passions as you. It never feels like that. It feels like we're working on our passion project. And that's the difference with creatives. Um, and that's why we don't really fit in the nine to five box all the time. It's just that you know, there are visions, and you need to make them a reality. And it needs to be perfect to how it's supposed to be done. So I kind of straight from the beginning, you should set the timeline right. But sometimes it doesn't work. Just quick conversation. Do not tell me at 3 o'clock that, that it's not going to be done at 3 o'clock. Exactly. You know, a day before, you should know. But that comes with experience as well. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. And being able to say, no, I can't do that for you. I cannot meet that deadline. I think that is a very important part that creatives sometimes say, yeah, man, we can do it. If you know that there's too much on your plate, be okay with saying, guys, I would love to, but the deadline I won't be able to meet. Alicia Moulton White. Good afternoon, everyone. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon to Welcome. all of the fabulous students and personalities in this room. And I asked Marissa if I could make a comment after what Roshane said. I want to encourage everyone. It is very important that you start to curate your content from now. You don't want later on in your life that corporate Jamaica is looking at you because we hire, for example, at Sajakor, creatives all the time. As Dahlia said, we're looking for performers in every aspect of the job. So begin to curate the content. Don't be fake, but curate what is on your social media pages. Um, and curate also the way you speak from now because it speaks to who you are as your brand as you go forward. You may not be a content curator, but you may be the person that Roshane is hiring. So I encourage you, start today, like right now, to delete the photos and the videos that will prevent you from being hired. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much for that comment. And she represents corporate, right? They're always looking for new talent. Therefore, don't become a liability. You always want to be an asset. I'm going to take two final questions and then I'm going to close off this panel discussion so that we can jump into our final one. Novia. Every time I see Novia, you know, I just have to say, you know, whatever you do, just don't be a pop down in front of Novia. Um. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And um, thank you very much. This has been excellent. And Marissa really ought to take a bow, three bows perhaps at the end. I'd like to ask Val on this. Um, as somebody who sits where I sit, and you say that you sometimes have to say no, and in terms of meeting deadlines as well, because we invariably, I always ask the question, and you'll smile, Valon. Is it, did you just wake up and create this event? Which event? Meaning, no, generally, because you, you, you get a telephone call <laughs> at um, two o'clock in the afternoon to say, oh, this is happening. And my response is invariably, oh, did you just oh. happen to put this event together? I'm always a messenger. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you... I had the pleasure of discovering your office just the other day for a webinar, but how do you instill excellence in the detail? Mm -hmm. Because when you have to um, send press releases out to media, for example, when you have to work with people like myself, who I don't do pop-down, yes. I have a very high standard, 
and I will not compromise. I really don't care. I will not. I'm too old. But how do you get people to understand that? Because um, it is easy when you want to wake up and become um, Rush Camp. It's very easy. It's very easy when people walk into your establishment or to the lab and they say, oh, yeah, this is me in three days, not the time that it took you guys to to build and build and build and start from zero. So how do you get that across? Because I find, you know, the shortcuts, I, I see them. I see the shortcuts because my, my, I'm blind because I have to edit. I see the shortcuts. So how do we ensure that excellence continues? Mm -hmm. um, I would say for something like that, our industry doesn't really have a playbook of success. And success that um, Mystique has been able to generate has come from passion to do good work. Um, I'm not sh I feel like you're giving me a compliment about press releases, <laughs> so I'm going to go on that. Um, you know, you know your client. You know when you're going to engage in OVR. You know when you're going to send a release. You know it should be double, triple, quadruple checked just in general. Just even, but even where you start and what you present as your first draft is also very important. And that, to me, is the most important draft because that kind of tells me how interested you are and things like that. So we have so many processes that we've taken the years to develop internally to guide how to do certain things. Um, it's not written in books, really, because not everything works in a Jamaican market, but that's where experience comes into play. And really showing up in that way all the time is really a differentiator because everybody else has to fall in line. Mm -hmm. You feel completely out of whack by not showing up like your managers or the people around you because everybody takes so much pride in it. And when you have to deliver something to Anovia, to be honest, I'm being honest now, and you get a seal of approval in the email with no changes, <laughs> you're just like, yeah, that's how you do good work. <laughs> so um, there are a lot of good feelings like that, but, but it just comes from doing the devil in the details in the beginning. Um, plotting out the success chart, how is it going to happen, and then getting everybody on board after that. Yeah, and I think it, I think it takes a lot of um, making it a part of the DNA and the culture of the company. So everyone knows that this is just how it is, yeah. it is done. I told you, when I think about Nova, what you don't want to be is a total pop down because she will absolutely tell you. Thank you so very, oh, oh, oh okay, I'm sorry. Last, last question, is that, okay, last question. Hello, good afternoon, everyone and good. panelists. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Shakara Davis. I'm a media student, finally a media student at the University of Technology. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> um, so in the future, I would love to be a filmmaker and a content creator. So my question is, is Jamaica investing in the creative industry? Meaning, is it um, providing avenues for persons like me to share my ideas and get my ideas done to the, like with great quality and all of that. And also my question to Rushcam is, how do you stay consistent with all that you have to do in terms of creating YouTube videos and brandings, et cetera, et cetera? Okay, so I think answer the second question. Your first question I will leave for the next panel based on the, the topic, okay? I'm going to be very honest with you. Next week will be the first week in my entire life that I'm like a full-time creative, like doing full-time YouTube, full-time uh, Instagram, all of that. Because before this, I was like part-timing for an agency. Now, on the outside, you look and you say, boy, Rush, oh, you maintain a consistency. I have a content calendar, and I, I have had to take things very seriously um, and that means neglecting social events sometimes. That means not being able to balance and have fun sometimes, palav. It also means having grace and giving yourself grace because sometimes you're not going to be able to be consistent. So I've changed the, the game in terms of what I think consistency is. Consistency for me is the quality of work that I produce and not the quantity. 
So if I'm able to show up every single time with top tier content and I'm doing excellent work and all of that, I am I'm pleased with myself. Versus me, I broke my neck every week. Lord Jesus, may I have to come up with one video and a video not even make no sense. You understand? So change the way that you look at yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Be consistent in your quality. Take your time and set attainable goals for yourself. Because it don't make sense. You say I go post three videos a week. And you know, say, it's not possible. It not possible. Cool. All right. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the third panel, creative services and content creators thank you so very much at this time i'd like to actually no you certainly as in you may go yeah i'd like to acknowledge the presence of our state minister the honorable alando terrelong ministry of culture gender entertainment and sport for those of you who do not know he speaks 500 languages we danced together with tony wilson dance theater company so he's also a trained dancer welcome welcome minister so that was our third panel discussion, and at this time, I would like to invite one of our sponsors. This is a sponsor greeting. Okay, fantastic. So we're going to run straight into the fourth panel discussion. So I'm giving you just enough time, Rushcam, to come around. This panel discussion is about production and entertainment. So we will take your question that you asked in the previous uh, discussion for this one. Mind you, we want to remind you that at the end of today, we will be announcing 10 persons, 10 individuals, 10 students who will win a paid internship. So do I see you clapping or you know something that you know something I don't know. So you would have been invited to submit your resumes. We would have had some of our panelists look at those resumes to determine who they would choose to be a part of their paid internship. So don't run off. You want to stay to hear who those names are. Oh. Hello everyone, hello, hello, hello. See a lot of movement around. Hello everyone. No, no, I'm not hearing any answers. Yui, hello, hello. Hi, Yui people that just come. All right, so Marisa, had, who is the director of Jamaica Creative, we, we, we've had several conversations about the different panels, right? which is the at panel, which is the this panel, which is the that panel. This panel, I think these are the, the, the bosses, the money panel. So when we talk about money and we talk about, remember I've said, you know, we're trying to show you that this is lucrative. There's an opportunity in it for you to grow and to expand and not to be a struggling artist. This is very important. So allow me to introduce the panelists in production and entertainment. The backbone of the cultural and creative industries is production. 
Entertainment production professionals not only build the infrastructure and architecture for the light, sound, and set elements, but also the interpersonal scaffolding for promotion, distribution, and representation of creatives. Jerome Hamilton sits at the helm of Headline Entertainment, which maintains a significant presence in the Caribbean and chiefly the reggae music business. Incorporated in 1997, Headline Entertainment is focused on three main areas, talent booking, entertainment consultancy, and public relations. Headline Entertainment continues to represent a diverse pool of Caribbean-based entertainers, including performing artists, musical bands, sound systems, disc jockeys, and more, exclusively and non-exclusively. The company serves marquee talents like Damien and Stephen Marley, Sean Paul, and Coffee. Apart from doing bookings, they provide support in many different ways. Headline Entertainment also provides PR services covering Jamaica, the Caribbean, and across the diaspora for major festivals, including the Barbados Reggae Festival, St. Kitts Music Festival, Jamaica Jazz and Blues Festival, and Reggae Sumfest. Delano Forbes is the CEO and Creative Director of Phase 3 Productions Limited. Co-founded in 1984 by Richard and Marcia Forbes, a Jamaican husband and wife team, Phase 3 Productions Limited is a leading television and multimedia production company that specializes in large-scale, multi-camera coverage of corporate, sporting, and entertainment events in 4K and high-definition format. Other key services include live streaming, PA and AV design, and directing LED screens indoor and outdoor. Support services for international crews and overseas media, including equipment rental and logistical solutions, are other important services offered by Phase 3. Nadia Roxburg is a consummate technical director with a passion for live events. Her presence on a creative project ensures that all the technical bases are covered in fine style. She has a degree in theatre practices with an emphasis on lighting design from Rose Bruford College in England. Her portfolio includes technical theatre, lighting design, production planning, coordination and implementation. Major projects include lighting design for Jamaica Independence Grand Galas, as well as other national events. For the past 15 years, she has been the go-to technical theatre director for numerous dance, drama, musical productions, working with amateur and professional theatre companies in varied capacities. Nadia is currently the technical manager at the Philip Sherlock Center for the Creative Arts. Duties include lighting design and operation, sound operation, stage management, supervising full-time and casual staff, and training of new staff members and students. She was the production manager for UE's 2021 virtual graduation. Solomon Sharp, the straight-talking businessman, is the chief executive officer at Main Event Entertainment Group. The company was founded by a team of unrivaled industry experts who are passionate about creating innovation. Their vision? To be the region's number one brand in delivering phenomenal experiences has followed through with almost two decades of excellence in the events and promotions industry in Jamaica. Sharp makes it clear that financial gain is not the first order of business for main event, but it is providing service of the highest quality to its list of clients. He also considers himself the biggest service provider to his young team of creatives and events coordinators. Main Event's strong reputation is built on producing organized, top-quality corporate and private events from a space of responsiveness and flexibility to their clients' varying needs. They do event management from conceptual design through planning and organization to hassle-free management of all noteworthy elements of an event. As one of Jamaica's most globally respected cultural ambassadors, Maxine Walters has lived and loved her passion as a producer of scores of international music, film and photography projects shot in Jamaica. She was one of the five founders of Reggae Sunsplash, along with Tony Robinson, Don Green, Ronnie Burke and John Wakeling. Her company, Walters Productions Jamaica, is a Caribbean-based production house that works in every aspect of the film industry, that uses Jamaica and the Caribbean as a location. Maxine Walters was honored by the Jamaican government in 2017 with an order of distinction for her inimitable talent, which has been called upon for big-budget Jamaican-filmed motion pictures starring Hollywood A-listers like Tom Cruise, Denzel Washington, Whoopi Goldberg, and Robin Williams. Walters has also been integrally involved in the production of renowned music videos fronted by Lauryn Hill, Damon Marley, Wycliffe Jean, Lord, and Beanie Man and she has exclusively produced almost all of the international commercials for track legend Usain Bolt in Jamaica. 
With nearly three decades of experience in the film industry, Waters Productions Jamaica has the best of the Caribbean film crews at their disposal and delivers first world service. Let's hear it for our panelists. Panelists, welcome, 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 welcome. I'm good, how are you? Can I still say Happy New Year to people? Everybody first, say, Happy New Year, panelists. Happy New Year. Well, I, I saw you this year. Yeah, yes, we talk. Yeah, Auntie Maxine. All right, so I have so many questions, and I will be mindful of the time. And as we have a lot of panelists, I'm asking that you be mindful of the time as well. Auntie Maxine, I'm not going to rush you, I promise, but yes. Uh, Solomon, when I, I went to an event when I was probably 15, and I looked up and I look around and I say, oh, that place here looks so nice. The place buzzy, 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 buzzy like a bees. Then I found out that it was main event. I wonder how you're able to maintain quality control when you have so many persons working for you, doing so many different things in so many different places. How do you maintain that quality? Um, it's very tough, but you have to hire the right people first. So it's about putting the right people on the bus. Um, how you do the onboarding exercises. Um, I'm big on the whole orientation process and empowering people. So I don't like to hire robots. So um, Valon spoke to that earlier about you know, who is that right person to hire? Is it the most educated person or is the most passionate person? So when you go through that whole interview process, which most of the time I'm at the, I'm the last one that interviews that individual and I'll ask quirky questions. And I look on somebody who comes in through the door and they say, I say, what are you here for? And they say, X, Y, Z. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't provide jobs. I provide opportunities. So it's about what do you want to achieve in life? And then I will put you on that pathway and the rest is history. You're not, you're not building somebody from scratch. We're getting people who have that drive and who have all of those different ingredients. But I guess I, there's someone that comes from high school who is trying to figure things out and says, hey, boy, Mr. Sharp, I don't really know how it goes, I don't really know anything, but I want a boss. What do you say to that person? Should that person go and get some, some online training? Should that person go and get a degree? Or will you, are you in a space to train from the ground up? We hire everybody, so once a person comes with that right passion and that want to do, right? Um, I don't know, there's just a little bit of a trick to it when you're doing that whole interview process and um, you catch a vibe of, of, you know, that right energy that comes forward from that individual. So, again, it doesn't matter if you go back to school, but if you come to the space with the wrong energy, then you're not going to get very far, so... Just come, show up, bring the right energy, and then you'll be fine. We talk about energy, and Jerome, I'll, I'll, I'll go to you because you work with a lot of people who, some people might say them hype. They have egos, right? You have the artists. I know artists stay when artists, artists late for hours, all those, allegedly. Um, what kind of personality traits do you look for in the people in your team to deal with people like that? And how do you handle the egos in the workspace? Um, first, um, thanks to the organizers for this wonderful event. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see an opportunity for persons in high school, persons new in university, getting this great look into the creative industry. So, Thanks, it's great. And I hope, I see a lot of you on your phones and slightly distracted. The phones aren't gonna be there afterwards. What you pick up here, you might never hear again. So please pay some more attention. Um, quickly, um, you said very well, one of the characteristics, and, and I think it's, it's important, and I found out later that I had it to be on my side of the business, which for clarity, I'm primarily a booking agent. You want to book certain talent, you approach me and we take the arrangement. Um, but it's tolerance. 
tolerance in my side of the business is important, and you have to find that in the team members, and you also have to have a certain amount of calmness, you know, calmness to deal with certain situations, because um, just as in production, it is very time-based. You're booking a certain talent to be on this show at a certain time to perform a certain length, and a lot of things sometimes have to happen and not happen the way it should be. You know, we know a lot of stories. So tolerance and, and a certain understanding of different personalities is important because we encounter, especially in the creative space, I find that people, um, and you see the world over, who are talented, some to, I wouldn't call it quirkiness, I'd actually call it craziness. They have a little side to them that it's more, it comes, it's almost part of the process. So it's important to understand that, to be able to deal with that. Um, I've always realized from early that I was, I, I thought I was going to be a singer at first, and I was told in no uncertain term when I tried for the choir at Glenmuir that it was my forte, and I had a love for the music, so I still wanted to do it. So even, even going to university, I got into it then, and I realized early that you have to appreciate that not only are there stars themselves, each artist that you deal with, but they're also competing with each other. And so it, it, it takes, we talked about the drive earlier, it, it, it takes more than a drive, but it takes a, a willingness to understand how they are and to work with them. And you know, I work with a diverse group and, and I've learned that over time. Thank you very much. I, I'm hearing, you see, again, I talk about the golden thread from this morning, from daylight till now, we've heard about specific characteristics. And if you're paying attention and if you're keen, you'd realize that in any industry, we could have a doctor here, we could have a lawyer. Well, praise God we don't. But we could have those, we have me, but we could have those conversations with anybody in any industry and it still takes that hard work. Talent is not enough. Auntie Maxine, I've, I, everyone's story includes you. I've been around a long time. And you know what? That is the question. Because in 2022, where you have, all right, you have a little TikTok, COVID, all those different things, how have you been able to still have that magic sauce? What's in the sauce, Auntie Maxine? What is that, that thing about you? Well, there's one thread that runs through my life, and it's passion. If you have the passion, you can accomplish anything. There's also the, uh, this morning our main speaker said you've got to be bold, you've got to be courageous, and you've got to have a little magic. I think because I, I believe I can, I can do, I will try anything at least once. And I have tried most things at least once. <laughs> but by doing that, you get the experience of knowing how to accomplish things. And sometimes you don't even know. Many years ago when a television series came here going to extremes, and they hired me as the, the I was the associate producer, much to the air of a lot of Americans who wanted the job. And I was shocked at what I, at what I knew. I went through all these, all these areas I'd worked in and suddenly it all came together as one. And because I loved it, because I had the passion for it, it didn't matter. Because I would go that extra mile any time to achieve what I needed to achieve, it was there. Because I also knew that I was a bridge, I was born a bridge, to connect people to each other, to connect worlds, to connect internationals. Because of that, it's, it, 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 you know, encourage the passion. And as that bridge, I managed to stay in the game because I'm 72 this year. Wow, can I get a round of applause, <laughs> please? Come on. And I am very proud of it, which is why I speak about it, because a whole heap of young people I know aren't here anymore. But at the same time, those 72 years, I have lived a part of almost everybody's life. I've watched these panels up here in every situation. I have had experience. I worked with everybody here except Nadia. Who I, I worked with you, Nadia. Okay, <laughs> there you go. It's the age with the memory, but that's what keeps me going: the passion. The passion. Thank you, thank you, Auntie Maxine. And as we're here, we would just like to definitely acknowledge the presence of our minister, the Honourable Olivia Babsi Grange, as well as State Minister Alanda Terlong in the Ministry of Culture, Gender. Entertainment and sport. Oh, wave. 
Honorable Minister, yes. Thank you. And thank you for such an amazing initiative because it is very important. Well, I said it a hundred times, I promise. I believe it. Nadia, you're in a part of the, the industry that when people envision their lives, they're not say, boy, I want to do technical things. I want to work backstage. I want to do light. How did you end up here and you've been doing it for so long and so well? What's been keeping you going? Is, and something other than passion, by the way. Yeah, it's something. I think it is something other than passion for me. Um, funnily enough, I wanted to be on stage. Um, I went to drama school, auditioned twice. I didn't make it. <laughs> I went to UWE, um, and I ended up backstage at UWE, and the guys started teaching me about lights and lighting and sound, and here we are today. Um, Definitely, I have developed a passion for lighting and technical theater. The bigger part of what I do, though, is not the show for me. It is the training. So I consider myself a professional trainer. Um, so overall, I mean, I benefited from three amazing mentors at Philip Sherlock, Steve Locke, Rowan Garrix, and John DaCosta. They taught me everything for free. So I give that back as much as I can now. So I have students, some random that just walk up to the theater and become my students, some that I teach formally like the students at UTech. And also, I just have students every day when I work. These guys, if you ever work with me, you'll know. I will stop and say, you know why I do this? This is why we do this, that kind of stuff. I'm like that. So my passion is passing it on, Sending I guess. the elevator down, as we've been talking about and discussing from the start. Delano, COVID comes and Everybody wants a live stream. Live stream non-stop. We, we, we do live stream 2020 March. We're in 2022 and we're doing live streams. Your business model, how do you ensure that you are leveling up as you like, engage in this space? Because you could be doing the same thing every single month and just collect the money and say, all right, go on. Well, I should first by, by saying thank you for having me here and it's great to see everybody in a physical room um, at an event. In terms of keeping on the cutting edge, for us at Phase 3, obviously that word that everybody has mentioned comes top of mind because we absolutely love what we do and have a genuine passion for it. But you know, even going back to onboarding team members, that kind of thing, I always go through the office a curious mind. That's something I constantly repeat to everybody in the team because now information is so accessible there's no reason not to know something. You know, I've, I was fortunate to be trained through, you know, all the industry pro professionals, many of, them, many of them on the stage here. You know, I went to formal training, studied film, but the University of YouTube at this point, I'm not gonna discredit any formal training in any way. I went to CPTC, went through all of that, but curious mind, going on YouTube, learning, bringing on new team members with fresh ideas, all of those things kind of keep us, keep us going and also making that investment. There's investment in terms of the time and there's also the investment as a number of us know in the hard cash. You have to take a risk. It's not easy talking to my accountant in the middle of COVID to try and explain, hey, we need to invest in this. No. And they're like, why? Because that's what's next. You know, so it's always about looking and seeing what's next. And as I think Wayne Gretzky said, it's not about where the puck is now. It's about moving to where it's going to be. Wow, investment in self, investment in the business, and also doing the research. I, w w we see a business here in 2022, but we don't know how it got here. Solomon, do you have a valley moment? Like something that you remember that you were like, honestly, if I get out of this, I eat this, I go shout from the mountain top and give glory. How did you get out of that valley moment? And is that two-ish and a half? What's the lesson? What was the lesson from it? So that valley moment where you were low, and what did you learn from it? I have those every week. <laughs> wow, shocker! <laughs> um, so I owe a lot to football, right? Because I played a little ball back many pounds ago, as some people would say. So. I go back to my ball days every time we're in a spot, right? 
So are you up to love and how do you play that game? Are you down to love and how do you play that game? If you're in a draw, you need a win, how do you make the adjustments? So in every day in the boardroom, you have to be nimble, you have to be agile, you have to be dynamic. And the boardroom doesn't necessarily mean that physical space, everybody. For those who know me well, my boardroom most times is in a car. So I was kind of prepared for COVID before because I was always moving. So whenever you get that situation, and my good friend over there in Novio, we have um, kept a certain event, we've had a certain event in May, and you know, it rains. You know, what do you do? How do you just remove the water after you've had, um, you know, four inches of rain? So you have to go into the, the moment um, all the time being prepared for any eventuality and just know and just have a strong mind that you're going to get out of it. So in everything, I just constantly say, we're going to get out of it. So as it said, um, I'm there for my staff. I work for them. And I'm there to remove all the barriers all the time. So I'm always trying to think ahead. My dad was a pilot, and he always told me, you know, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. So it was always preparation for every single eventuality. Delana spoke about investment. That's where the investment comes in. You have to be prepared for what you don't even know is going to happen. So you have to invest in everything and be very prepared at every moment to get yourself out of those spots. And then when you do get yourself out of that spot, you have to now develop a relationship with your client to say, look, I can't always remove four inches of water all the time, right? So you have to prepare yourself for that next time. What if, if there's rain, how do you deal with that? And you know, you don't, you don't get to plan an event the day before when you know when the, the rain is really coming. So you have to be, those constant preparation is, and um, Delana again said, you know, you know, how do you, you how you YouTube, how you Google, and um, and that's what I used to call myself Google uh, with my team, right? Um, and that's what my clients are there for. They call on me for every and anything, and that's 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 how you have to just set your to set your life like that, solution oriented all the time, and prepare. And to Maxine, you are a mentor to several, but there's a conversation, we've heard it, oh, I don't know nobody. I send her a WhatsApp or I send her an IG message and she not answer. I send her an email and she not answer. How do you gatekeep for mentorship? Like, who do you decide that you're going to work with? How do you decide that? And do you think that these people on the stage, all of the industry experts are truly accessible, or is it a lie? I can only speak for myself. And basically, anybody, and I mean anybody and everybody who writes to me and contacts me, gets a reply. It doesn't matter who it is, from where they're coming from, home or abroad, they get a reply. Because I was there one day, at one point. I wanted to get somewhere too. So, and I wanted that reply. You know, so it's really important that you do that. Plus, you have to nurture. And you have to, as Solomon was saying, preparation is a big part of it. And preparation is not just preparing for the actual job that's sitting in front of you. Preparation is preparing for the future. I find I train, I would say, probably 80% of the people who work in the film industry. And the other producers take them. The moment they get to that level, you know, and then I have to train again. So it's all a pre preparatory thing, it's preparation. You have to prep and then you have to guard, as Solomon says. Your job once you've prepared is to watch what's happening when you're there on the set. Because if you're not ready and if you don't have six backups behind you, especially working in a place like Jamaica, which is not easy, and I project myself as being first world in a third world situation, mm -hmm. You have to be ready, and you have to be able to flip at that last minute and make it happen when it can't. In film, it's easier than, say, in some of the events you do, Solomon, because we also have things called cover sets. So if you have a scene with rain, you hold that to the end, because you know if it rains, you can shoot it in the rain, right? If you need to shoot something under a bridge, you leave that again to the end, because you can go under the bridge and shoot, or indoor stuff. You can shoot day for night. 
you can, there's lots of things you can, you can work and what you prepare for that. So as a producer, if you're going to be in the production business, you must know your script better than anybody else. Once you know your script, you're prepared because you will know what may happen and how you can make it not happen or solve it if it does happen. It, it, wow, I feel like I'm at a TED talk. <laughs> I, I'm, it's, it's, we're talking about preparation. I want to know, you said you have to know the script better than anyone there. Nadia, what does preparation look like for you when we're getting ready for the stage? Because a lot of stagehands feel like they must just show up and just say, yeah, man, you know, I'm a black, what you need? What does preparation look like for you? All right, so when I ever have to give a talk at a high school or so, and they ask me what subjects, one of the first things I always say is English literature. Like, if you want to go into production, I think English literature is, should be your favorite subject. Before the physics and the, all of that is English literature. You need to be able to read and understand whatever story is going to be told. Right? Everything is, people laugh at me because on corporate jobs I call the thing a show. I never say an event or a launch, everything is a show for me. So everything we're doing is a show. And so we need to understand what's the story that the client wants to tell. Whether the client is a producer in a theater or a corporate brand that's launching a new product. We have to know what story they want to tell. So understanding and reading, any stagehand who works with me, they will tell you, you have to read, you have to know beforehand, you should not go into that meeting not understanding what the job is about, right? So we need to prepare in that way as well. Make some notes, right? I'll tell you, if I'm speaking to you and I'm not writing, I wasn't there. I don't remember anything. Facts. So you have to keep <laughs> making notes. I yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, I make a lot of notes. So I think those things help you as um, Maxine was saying, it helps you to prepare. So on the day when that thing where you never expect happen, you're okay, because you have a long list of other things that you were prepared for. Excellent. Delano, I have a question for you, and then I'm going to ask Jerome a money question. De Delano, you, like this event, for example, there are like 10 people there, 12 people there, Go on. Big, up the Big up the production team. Big up the production team. Let's hear it for the production team. When we talk about creatives, we don't usually think about the persons in the creative industry, like a sound technician and all of that. What do you think? Well, let me rephrase the question before I say it. Uh, can I get like five or five to eight roles. Just roles from phase three. Come on now, guide, pen and paper. On the take out on the pen and paper now because these are roles that you might not even think to apply about. Yeah, that would touch on a production. So we're at well, the production now, yeah. right? Give me like a tutorial. Who is yeah. here? All right, well, well, let's just make a distinction because I don't think a lot of people realize that when we use the word production, we use it loosely. Yes. Event production and the skill set for event production True. is somewhat different from Maxine when she does her feature films and big international shoots that come, which are even slightly different from when we do, let's say, a sporting event, you know? Right. So there are different, different roles and different classes of roles. But specifically, I guess, for you know, an event today, an event like that, what we're doing that, now, yeah, you would have an tutorial. audio person, a camera person, a floor manager, a uh, LD, you know, um, you would have a technical What does LD dire mean? A, a lighting director. I'm lighting sorry, director. such as Nadia, who is our so premier. So the just turn on and No, shine. no. Okay. And they would be working out the colors with the theme and creating a, a, a room, a, a ambiance in the room. Somebody the decor set up oh. provided by Mr. Sharp and his team. So big up the main event and the M-style team. Um, so there are many different, you know, as an as a outline, there are many different roles that that you can fill. And even production is a work in progress. As you see right now, I'm moving up and down. I change mic, everything. Thank you. I have, a, I, have, I have a money question for you, Jerome. You have, I would love if you answer as well, Auntie Maxine. I'd just like to address the roles in film production. Yes, thank because you. Because there are a lot. Film production has two areas, above the line, below the line. Mm -hmm. Above the line starts with your producer, your writer, your, your production, your production, there's like probably three or four producers above. Um, you're, you're, and, then you, and then you hit your 
associate producer who's at top of the, of the bottom of the above the line. Then you move into production management. And within production management, you have a production coordinator, you have a production manager, you have um, production assistants who work in various departments. You have um, assistants from the guy who, the PA, who is the, who is the grounds PA, the locations PA, who cleans work, up the place. Work, the work. PA whose job is taking care of the talent who are on set. You have assistant directors, one who works very closely to the director and helps things you know, through. And then you have the, the second assistant director who again supervises talent. You have, so just in that area of production alone, then you have the lighting department, where you have your d d director of, of, of filming, DP he's called. And the DP has a gaffer who is a lighting chief. He has grips who work behind. He has electricians who work wow. in that department as well. Wow. So there are all these areas just there. Then you go into the art department. The art department has a production designer who designs the look of the film. He works very closely with the director and the DP to create that, whatever you see. But under him is an art director. There's a buyer. There's a, there's a, there's a set decorator. There's a prop person. There's prop assistants. There's a carpenter. There are carpenters. There are carpenters assistants. You know, there are scenics and painters. You know, you know, there you are so movie. many positions. Hold on. We go back to the, the, the director, and there's somebody called a script supervisor who's a continuity person, who's a very key person on the film. They, if the watch was on the left hand today, when they come back to shoot tomorrow, you have to make sure that watch is still on the left hand and not the right hand. There, is, there are so many areas within film, there are so many positions that are possible for young people today to work in this industry. There are stories to be told. We have stories up and down the yin-yang in Jamaica. We're storytellers. That's what we are. And we can tell these stories and work in these, in these professions. And how do you learn? You keep your eye clear. You can go on YouTube. You call up somebody like Auntie Maxine. You, call, you, know, you speak to people you know in the industry. And you keep going. You keep going for it because it is you who wants it. And if you really want it, that's where the passion comes in. Then you will really go for it. And those are tons of jobs in the industry. Wow, wow, wow. I was, I was thinking, I was just saying to Delano, when you watch a movie, you ever sit down and watch the credits? Credits long enough. PA, everything. And that is not even half of the persons involved. Now, we're going to be taking questions from the audience, but Jerome, I want to know about pricing. Just, just, a, just a quick question about pricing. We are not a formalized industry according to many. According to many, we are not a formalized industry. <laughs> We're not? According to many. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> We're a very important formalized um, industry. We and definitely are. Jamaica is a perfect playground. Do you all agree? Yes. And our industry is going to take Jamaica out of COVID and take this economy to the next level has to and we have our council members here from the ministry they have a specific council that is geared towards creative industries i guess the question that i was i, I was posing to jerome is how do you ensure from my angle you reach out to me and you say rush boy i want you to host xyz how do you ensure that you don't price yourself out of the market or that you are not underpricing yourself. Like some, or, cause you, Jerome, you deal with us, you might say, boy, I rushed that at too much money. How do you determine that I'm not worth that? What a question. <laughs> um, it's a little tricky. Pricing is very, is very subjective. I tell people sometimes pricing is like playing poker. You know, you, you, you really name, say what you have in your hand and pretend that what you don't have. And because you don't have certain benchmark, if you're doing a, a show in a, in a major venue in the United States, you know, I would get an offer for Sean. It gives me a capacity, it gives me the ticket price, it gives me the range. So when I name my figure, they tell me right away whether they can or cannot afford it. However, in the Caribbean and a lot of the, the, the diaspora promoters and market, it's not like that. So a lot of prices are, are not based on any fixed stats it's based on what other people might charge 
firstly, that's a big influence. In, in, and I'm speaking primarily for the live music, for Jamaican popular artists performing primarily and, and, and support service musicians and so on. So a lot of times the pricing comes back because a lot of promoters don't work their number. But that's the beautiful thing about the music business. The music business can generate opportunities from little and nothing. So therefore today, when you just start where you are now, it's amazing. And, and you can now ask me for much more than you did six months yes. ago. Yes. So a lot of it ties in. And then the marketplace is changing a lot for us, you know. First, you used to have everybody have to listen to one source or watch one place. No, it's coming to you and you choose from it. So we're getting prices before that's going to be based on your followers and how much numbers and interaction. So it's hard to say what isn't and it is and isn't. I just did a project a while ago with some persons in this room. Some prices were considered particularly high. And some people justified why it should be so, and they were in, in, in turn paid accordingly. Yes. And on the other hand, you know, some people don't. I never look at him. But no, no, we <laughs> might look hard. No, no. Yes. So it's hard, but, but I like that's about the music. I use one example. When Sean Paul did Give Me the Light and I heard it, I'm like, eh, eh. Give me the light? And I, no, give yes, me the light. when I first heard it, but this one song took him, he started, and the rest, as they say, is history. So it's hard to say. Perfect. And I, me and Terry were talking about it earlier. You can also ask around. If, if you hear that Terry charge $1 and you've been around for half of Terry's time, you, you, you don't have her wealth of experience, you cannot be asking for $15 when Terry's charging $1. Look at the industry. Use that sense. Okay, we're going to take questions <laughs> from the audience. Oh. <laughs> We have questions from the audience. The Over here, Rashkam. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kimberly Bruce. I'm right here. Hi. Kimberly. My name is Kimberly Bruce. Oh, How right. is everybody doing today? I can say that I'm feeling quite awesome. Um, so before even asking my question, I want to just you know, express my gratitude to the team behind, you know, the Career Expo with a quote from the Ubuntu tribe that is, I am because you are. So I just want to say thank you for what you're doing for so many youngsters. We really appreciate it because we've been longing for something like this. So my question, so my question, I'm from St. Elizabeth from a small community called Malvern. I went to Hampton School. I'm surrounded by a lot of vegetation. My first exposure to anything of this sort was in church. So I used to do little skits, you know, little writing here and there, little acting, uh, audio, and I never knew that something like this existed before coming to Kingston. And I'm like, okay, so this is new, but I like it. So uh, Auntie Maxine spoke about being the bridge. So what I want to ask really is, are there any initiatives uh, that are geared towards molding and nurturing young creative minds in small communities at current or in the near future? Oh, anybody can answer. Oh. Um, there, Melissa? Yes, the, um, there's the, there are two organizations that exist. There's JAFTA, we had um, with us earlier, Saeed, who is the president of JAFTA. By the way, Saeed started, you know, he'd been trained, he had gotten himself trained and he started me as a PA. And I'm so proud of him now, I can't even begin to tell you how I feel about that young man. As did Tash, who is the CEO of the thing there. I mean, unbelievable people. There is a, an organization called Women in Film and Television. And they, uh, and they have some support for young people um, to become members and they get mentorship from within the Jamaican base and also from overseas, internationals. Um, from what I'm seeing that Marissa is trying to do right now, this event is, 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 is nurturing you. This yeah. event is getting you started off the ground. It's an amazing event. We've needed this for so long. I can't begin to tell you. So you are right here at the core, at the beginning of something that could be amazing. We have government supporting this. I mean, this is a first step. So we move from here, hopefully forward. Thank you. Uh, Oh, thank you. Delano, then. 
Right. I was just going to add, um, I'm not sure in terms of in the actual areas, but a number of us, I mean, phase three, I, I know main event as well and others, a number of us offer internship programs. Um, our internship was a little, you know, in COVID, it was kind of hard to take on new persons, but hopefully for the summer, you know, we take on anywhere from about 20 to 30 persons during the summer for internships. Perfect. So that's an opportunity. And then Nadia and Jerome. <laughs> my, my answer to you, Kimberly, and to others, because um, it's easier for some of us, like I lived in Kingston, I don't pay rent, I live with my parents, so I was able to intern everywhere, right? It's harder for students who are in rural communities and so your church is a good start. I think Delano will tell you a lot of his great um, technicians come out of church people. Um, your church is a great start, but also these are the kind of things that you ask your political representatives about. Bring those initiatives to us. Bring them into our communities. A lot of these things happen for communities in Kingston, but we can get those initiatives out there. I know Main Event did um, M Academy out in the West, right? And we had students from Clarendon, St. and Trelawney, all those parishes coming to Montego Bay to be trained in technical production. So ask, guys. This, this is how you get people, your government, to work for you. You know, these initiatives can come to any community, right? They are movable. We can put on a show anywhere. We can train people anywhere. Jerome, Jerome and then Solomon. Yes, I'd just love to add, um, we as well, except for COVID, had offered internship to university students, both from UTEC uh, and University at the West Indies. One of the things I'd like to say, however, um, however, the world has changed a lot, so I know you can reach out to people. Creative is a kind of industry here, where you'll have to come out of your shell. You have to reach out there. You have to get out there. You find ways to communicate because we don't have a formalized structure in many ways and there's so much the government can do and, and, and we won't change a lot of that. But you have to really find your ways. When I started, I, I went up to somebody and told them that I was going to work with them. Even though I was at university doing math and economics, I knew I was going into entertainment. So you have to really get out of yourself and go and make it in this business. Solomon. And it's for that very reason that we started um, M Academy. Um, we did uh, one in Kingston, one in Montego Bay. We trained over 100 persons. Um, COVID has only slowed down the process. But as I said, it's important for us to understand how important we are in this industry um, and that we're going to rebuild and we're going to educate everyone. Um, I've been a big proponent in working with UTEC as well in um, how we deal with lighting and how we deal with sound because those things are critical to the movie, to the football match, to horse racing, to the live production, to what we're doing today. So we need to just get everyone educated. We know everybody won't stay. Some are going to migrate. So we're also exporting talent. Um, but for who wants to stay, let's educate them and let's make Jamaica rock. Yes, and I, I think Jeremy, Jerome sorry, was very correct in saying that you have to pursue those opportunities as well. Gone are the days when you have to write a letter and send the letter and hope that the letter reach and then knock on somebody's door. Mina was telling me that she would call the observer every day when we're like in, hello, because never had social media. There's so many opportunities now, and... Uh, Internet is there for you to seek those opportunities. Can I get a mic to the front, please? Next question. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Terry Wright, a student in the Department of Communication Studies at Northern Caribbean University. My question is directed to Ms. Maxine Walters. Having been in the media, industri media and creative industry for quite some time, what would you say is the most important lesson that you learned during your career which you think young creatives could benefit from? Thank you. Wow, there's a few. Um, first of all, always be on time. Never be late for what you're, you're, you're going to. If you're, if you're late, you're out. It's, a, it's as simple as that. Um, also, God help me, Delana. There's... Um, I mean, I'll give you an example. I had a caterer once who was two hours late for a shoot. I berated him, I have to tell you, because you can't afford to be late. Ten years later, he came to me and he said, 
You taught me such a valuable letter, le lesson. I have never been late since. This guy was now catering across the island for everything you could possibly think of. So never be late. Never waste your time to think about what happened before. Solution is a question, is a situation. What happened, happened. So you go towards solution of the, of the problem. Don't waste your time saying, oh, it's his fault or is that one's fault. You can deal with that after you're finished. But f solve the problem and go forward. Um, trying to think. Yeah. Um, that's good enough? I OK. Think, I, think I, I wanted to excellent. say something else, too. The, the students, I'm available. So if you speak to your schools, I am happy to come and give career day talks there. I'm happy to come and tell you about you know, yeah, what's happening. Feel free to call me. I always answer. Um, and if not, there's another Maxine in my office. She'll answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, really, ha ask your schools to call and set that up. I've, I've spoken to Northern Caribbean University before. Probably not when you were there. But anytime, just call. We need people in this industry so badly that you, you have jobs that are waiting for you if you go for it. Thank you so much. I have a point of order. I really want to get a microphone to... Oh, it's, it's, it's from this table? Okay, perfect. This is the last question. No, but could, could you do me a favor, please? Could you pass the mic? Yes, to, yes. Oh, he yields. Okay, okay, okay. I appreciate it. All right, I'll be oh, quick. This is I'll be quick, I'll be quick, thank you. Christina Williams, President of Jamaica Union of Tertiary Students. So I have two things, one is a question, one is a recommendation. For the recommendation, I believe that something that we need to talk about is gatekeeping, particularly with certain schools and programs. So as the President of the Jamaica Union of Tertiary Students, I can speak to say that there are students who are not necessarily a part of creative and cultural programs. Right? So they may not be in a journalism or a media program. And so while it is that you may offer internships and you may say, well, if you're from a creative or cultural program, this is offered, there are actually students who are brimming at the seams with potential and talent and they want to get into the industry, but they can't find that in because they're not a part of the programs that currently in their tertiary institutions. It may not seem like something that may appear at the front, it may not be apparent, but it's actually something that many students have complained about. Even for this very same expo, there are students who have reached out to me and said, Christina, we want to be able to attend the expo, but only the, um, the tertiary institutions within the creative industry may have been invited. And I understand why they'll be prioritized. I understand, don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. But there are students who may not be in these programs. As Auntie Maxine said, the industry needs more. So they should be given access as well. And Thank you. Well, I, and then I am so sure, sorry. I sure. will not be able to take the question, sure. but it was a wonderful recommendation. No Thank problem. you very Thank much. You. All right, so we will not... I will have to take this last question. I will have to. I will have to. I am very fluttered and flattered. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, Honorable Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as a country, we do not celebrate our highs, our achievements. And this is a day never to be forgotten, a day always to be remembered. And in this spirit, I respectfully ask that we stand and offer three chairs to all those responsible. Please stand. <laughs> Obey the teacher. Yes, yes. We... Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Another hip, hip. <laughs> Next year, please sit, please. Please sit. <laughs> Thank you, my Just teacher. Just to say quickly that in commending um, those responsible, I didn't get the chance to ask, to make these comments earlier, but to say there are some other opportunities because I work at a place where we encourage the heritage of Jamaica, tangible and intangible heritage. And I want to suggest that there are opportunities in the cuisine. I am young enough to know there was a time when the only um, meat associated with jerk was pork. And now I live to see that you have jerk, saltfish, and mackerel. 
So there are opportunities there. There is rundown to be promoted. Somebody is asking, what's that? Um, it's not an athletic endeavor. And there is Garami, people from Westmoreland. There is a promotion for you to do. You'll find out that afterwards. And Buzu in Portland, um, it's endemic only to that parish. With regard to art, paintings, there are opportunities for sponsors. The young artists need spaces, private spaces for exhibition. And when you go around the homes, the walls are bare because under colonial education, art was not encouraged. My it good was sir. thought it would be a revival. Um, it would create not a revival, but we would have um, constraints to development. My good sir, thank you so much. Could I, could, I ask, could I ask your name, please, sir? Could I ask his name? Vivian Crawford, head of the Insti National Institute of Jamaica. Young people. Jamaica's Literature, Science and Art. Perfect. And I joined the following day. Perfect. Young people, make a note of his face because you will be able to speak to him after this. Thank you so much, panelists. Thank you very much. We, are, we had a very riveting discussion. Would you guys agree? Yes? All right. So, all right, Auntie Maxine, Auntie Maxine, are you okay? All right, so I told you about triple threat, right? And we had them earlier. They blew the house down, and we would love to hear from them again. So invite me. I, I'll join me as I invite. Come now, polka dots. Come right through. Make some noise for them, please. Join me as I invite to the stage the team with the dance, the drama, and the song, Ashe. Good evening. Good afternoon. How are you? We're going to take you on a journey. A musical journey. With mental, ska, rock steady, reggae, dance hall. Are you ready for this? If you love your culture, let me see your hands in the air. Let me see your hands in the air. We're celebrating creative today. Let's go! One good thing about music When it hits, you feel no pain Sweet Jamaican music When it hits, you feel no pain You live the life you love You love the life you live Everything you have in mind shall will give Everybody good? Let me see everybody put them on up in the air right now. Put them up in the air. Watch out now. I'm dreaming of a new Jamaica. Jamaica. A land of peace and love. Some say they cannot see no hope. That's why they leave this land. But I know without a fear. And that's why I wrote this song. Come along, me say. All Come on. in love. Come sing this song with me. Sing this song now. All who believe in love. Hey. Come sing this song you know? with me. Sweet, sweet Jamaica, me up here and me salt. Rub your mouth, no, no, no. Whoa, hey! Good afternoon, everybody. Do you know the Queen of Reggae, Master Griffith? All right, this is one of her popular songs. If you know it, just sing along. All right. Watch this. There's a land that I. Have heard about so far across the sea. There's a heaven I have heard about so far across the sea. Mister, look here. To have you on our dreamland would be like heaven. To me, and sure I will never die. Sure will never die. Oh, won't you wait, wait, wait. 
Okay, so right now, I'm going to introduce you to the Prince of Reggae. Who's the Prince of Reggae? Dennis Brown. Hey! Should I have faith in you? Should I put my trust in you? Or should you lay me down? Should I flirt around? Why should I think this way? Thinking that you're going away. We could stay together anymore, so... Am I to go? Come on now! Living this way! Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah! Acting, Acting like, like a child, child, so young and yeah. gay! Hey, 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 you, you don't, don't know, know, darling, what, what it means to be a hobby, yeah! You, you don't, don't know, know, baby, how it feels! You dance all it. In your hand in the air, then you rock and you dip. Move to the drum and make your body click. Step forward and come up back quick. That's the new style. Where the old place are do. Rap vocal dance and music sweet you. Vocal around the place tight and this. So that's a rap vocal dance. How many you tune a play? I'm a singer. I'm a vocal singer. She not a vocal, but she a rock same way. For real. Me love how the young girl do it. Rock so deep, so the girl them look sweet. Somewhat shy. Sing it, man. Until I see you. 
Until I have to try Everybody say Oh yes Let me get my words right And then I'll approach Woman treat you like a man is supposed to oh, You never have to cry No, no I know everyone can relate To when they find that special sub Everybody sing Oh, say She's royal Yeah, yeah, yeah So royal And I want her in my life I never know anyone Trust me, so one of a kind No, the way she moves to her own beat She has the qualities of a queen So What's this? No, I don't want to make me quite like you I wouldn't let you baby ever even if I could Me not go by the front You make me want to hold on I got the tune. I sing the song just to prove. I wanna have you, baby. I want every part of you. The, the good, the bad, the old and the new. new. Tell me what you say, baby, but I'm all right. Woo! That's our time. That's Come on now, time. get up off your seat. Time. That's hey, what's your name? 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 And if you can't do that, take where you sell. If you don't like that song, yeah. take where you sell. If you don't like Jamaica, take where you sell. Everybody, oh, put, put your hands, hands up in the air. air. Put your hands up what? in the oh, air. Yeah. Put your hands up in the air. air. Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air. Let's go. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Watch one day. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Watch one day. Watch one day. Watch out for this. I'm a glad to meet ya. Ah, God win good music. I play to me glad to meet ya. Ah, pull up, pull up. Sound a beat and the place a pull up, pull up, pull up. Watch out for this. All right, let me see all the chronic slowers. Chronics, yeah. My side, ready, ready, ready. Head up, go. Cha-cha raise me out of my bed I mean, Go worry if I'm going to wash my dress Me all right, all right Yeah, I jump here cause sunrise Wake, Wake me up this morning And I can hear my mom with that calling All right, all right All right, all right. here's another one Don't waste your time With thoughts of giving up right. It's all, all in your right. mind Let it go, let it go People don't give up. After the rain, no keeping it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the fire. That's the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One good thing about music, when it hits, Come on now. you feel no pain. One good thing about music. We know you know. We know that one ya. We know this. You know this. This does so. Hey. All right then. Bang, 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 bidi bidi ding ding. Bang, 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 bidi bidi ding ding. Ro ba do ko 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 ba ding 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 ding. Ro ba do ding 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 ding. Ro ba do ko ba do ko ba do ko ba ding. Wanna think it done? Yeah! But we just are calm. Ladies! Hey. What this make you feel like no? Yeah. What this make you feel like no? Hey. What this make you feel like no? Yeah! Ladies! What this make you feel like no? What this make you feel like no? What this make you feel like no? Yeah! Hey! Wind up on my body, girl!
into these four different areas and yet still we have this example of what the performing arts and the creative industries looks like 
But what I love particularly about Asher, because I don't want us to overlook that they are exceptionally talented, but there is creative empowerment and social work to what they do. This is yeah. not just a performance. At the end of the day, they hone a lot of crafts and they give back in many, many ways. So they are a 360 full service creative And I will do a plug for Asher right now. Asher has a production on YouTube right now called The Chill Series, season one, and it will give you chills. Oh my God. It is very, very good. So check out their work. Support them, and when I do our next show, book them. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. That's how Can you, I get that is how you support them. So the only person, well not the only person, but some, I mean, after you see a performance like that, you say, well, we're going to come after we're that. We're going to come after this. We should just say, you know, goodbye. No. But the Top person I'm about to, um, that we're about to invite to the stage is a creative, and that is why he's probably one of my, my favorite people in the world. He's known me or we've known each other since we were young, and the creative has always been at his heart. Um, it is a part of his brand, his personal and professional brand. So the fact that he is the Minister of State within this kind of ministry, for me, it makes absolute sense. Now, a gentleman of his caliber, you don't just welcome him, you don't just say welcome or good afternoon, you gotta say, buenos dias, bienvenido, yes. senor. <laughs> you can't just speak in English or Spanish because he also speaks French. So yes. You have to say, bon appétit, bon venu, monsieur. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one and only, the Honorable Alanda Terrellong. Heart. Good afternoon, my fellow creatives. So I could try it a bit more creative. My fellow creatives, big up on the lit selves. Yeah. All right, that's where I like it. But um, uh, thank you so much, Terry Carell. It's always a pleasure to see you. And of course, your co-host, who is a former student of mine, Mr. Brushcam. He must, he must really a lawyer too, you know. But he put on the lawyer thing because lawyers now make no money when compared to what the creative sector is actually making. So smart. You're very, very smart like that. Um, so first of all, it, it's, it's going to be a bit difficult to go through all the protocols, so, but let me just indicate, of course, to Senior Minister who is here, and of course to our partners from UNESCO, I want to say welcome, and to our esteemed panelists. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. First of all, we had Parliament for, I mean, we've been at Parliament since 10 o'clock, and we kind of left Parliament to come here because it was so important. The parliament important, you know, right? But when you talk about the creative industry, the creative sector, and what it means, without the creative industry, yes, you're talking about the creative industry leads to our international reputation. Our cultural wealth in Jamaica is dependent on the work that every single one of you does. And so that is why I want you all to give yourselves a big round of applause, my fellow creatives. So yes, I'm the Minister of State, and, I, and, and Terry, thank you. I'm the Minister of State, but I'm also a creative at heart. And it is my pleasure to work alongside Minister Green in this ministry that, I mean, that, 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 that encapsulates every single one of you. So we speak about national wealth, we speak about international reputation, and I know that Bob Marley and Louise Bennett and all of our great performers and cultural giants and global icons who've gone before are absolutely proud of what we have accomplished here today. And so I want to thank you all for coming, for lending your talent, for lending your voice, for letting every single one of us know that the creative industry is about your set of skills, your talents, and it does not come free. And so whilst we pass the baton along, long gone are the days when people think that, oh yeah, mom, I can't get a dance here, man. I'm gonna just do it for fun now. Yeah, mom, I can't get the actor here and put them on stage, I'm gonna do it for fun now. Yeah, man, she's gonna do the lighting for it just for fun now. Yeah, man, she's gonna put on black and she's gonna go backstage and yeah, man, they're gonna know. It is your talent, it is your life, and it comes with a cost. And I'm very happy that in Jamaica, we have now recognized that. 
Because my brothers and sisters, my fellow creatives, the creative industry in the UK alone, and they're not half talented like Lady Forbes, Faith Tree, big up yourself. And they're not half talented as us. I can say that because we're Jamaicans. The creative industry in Jamaica, my young creatives, it earns approximately 13 million pounds every hour. Every hour, 13 million pounds is made from the creative sector in the UK alone. This is a global industry that spans art, craft, production, architecture, I mean, food, music, television, radio. It is literally the lifeblood of every single nation. I mean, we saw that the minute Ashi, and you know what, the beauty about a room like this is that I have worked with most of the people here in one way or another. I mean, from Michael Holgate, Dahlia, I mean, Sullivan, I mean, listen, Carlton, I mean, Carlton did the wickedest soup for me last year for my wedding. I mean, you know, I mean, Brian Lumni, chef, I mean, Mina, I've known Mina since Campion. I mean, you talk about Terry and Rushkam, and I mean, and I, I, I mean, it's like a whole bunch of creatives in this room. You know, Marissa herself, a big, big creative, you know what I mean? Like, like, it is absolutely amazing, the energy in here. And you saw that when our students at the back there, they were so lit. I mean, as she was performing, and then the whole room just came alive. And everyone was just like, oh my God, it's good to see the students out. You know, it's good to be out. Because unfortunately, the creative sector was the first to suffer at the hands of COVID. But it is the creative sector that is going to take us out of COVID. And so, a very big... Thank you to every single one of you. Um, I also have the distinct pleasure of introducing our main speaker. And I saw our guest speaker who was here, and I saw him in his mask. Blessed love, my brother. It's good to have you from the United Kingdom. I did see a part of your presentation on my way up, and I love the message about being bold and being courageous. I thought it was most apt. Just be yourself. Um, so allow me to welcome... Our senior minister, Minister Babsy Grange, who herself is a creative. And HM, I know that um, some of our students in the room, they won't know that you've produced the likes of, let's say, Shabba Ranks, for example. I'll stop there. You know, but Trailer Lord, yeah, man, girls, girls, everywhere, Trailer Lord. You're talking about Babsy Grange. She's worked with the plethora coming from West Kingston and beyond. But um, it's a room filled with creative, with creatives. We are passionate about what we do. We're very passionate to have the launch of this expo to our 60, well, over the year, we will have 60 scholarships or 60 internships being given. Minister will announce 10 of them today, but um, it's a great initiative. Thank you all for being here. Blessed love, my fellow creatives. I'm super passionate, super excited to be here with you all. Cheers. Why is everybody so quiet? <laughs> I don't believe this. It's never that quiet when you have young people around. Let me, let me have a scream. Let me hear you scream. That's more like it. So, I want to, I know it's been a long day for you, but you're having fun? Okay, so you will stay just a little bit longer just to hear me. Right? Well, I must first acknowledge Dr. Well, first my Minister of State of London, Terry Long. Isn't he good looking? <laughs> and I first, I, I actually did something this afternoon that he would have loved to have done. If he knew I was going to do it, go dance. Right? He would have been out there dancing too. I must acknowledge my permanent secretary. Where's P.S.? P.S. Thorpe? I think I'm the youngest permanent secretary in the, in the government, you know. I think so. Give him a big, big round of applause. And of course, Dr. Sanchez from UNESCO, who is head of the Caribbean office for UNESCO. And we do a lot of work together. Thank you so much for coming. And she's here with her team, Yuri Peskov and Clement, is it? I'm sorry. Um, 
Alessandro, Alessandro, who is, who is somewhere around. And of course, I mean, there are just so many great persons here to acknowledge, including our guest speaker. Thank you so much for being here, Clement. Right? You can't want a better than Disney World, right? So all the participants, every one of you, I mean, if I were to name all of you, then it would be longer than my speech. So forgive me. I just want to big up all of you. And the media here and young people, good afternoon. Now, I must say to you that as minister, I'm happy to be here. But as um, a creative, I'm also very happy to be here. And it seemed like I was before my time because I had a record label called the Orange Label long before they call the entertainment, culture, and creative sector the Orange Economy. So I was way ahead of my time. One of my biggest hit was this song, like old friend do. Now you're all too young to know this song, right? Let me see the hands. Now I know the ages. Let me see who know this song. Mr. Crawford, don't be afraid to put your hand up. But this was a song I produced, one of the biggest hits in Jamaica, before you were all born, performed by Carleen Davis. It's called Like Old Friends Do. <laughs> okay, so I am part of the creative industry. But today, I just want to say, we little but we, that's us. That's who we are as Jamaicans. More important, our oversized presence on the world stage has given us credibility and power that is unmatched. Simply put, culture and creativity place Jamaica on the map. This includes music, dance, sport, which I call physical culture, theater, drama, so many creative things that we do. All our Jamaican creatives, from our traditional publishers, authors, directors, choreographers, and storytellers like Mr. Crawford, who is one of the shortest maroons I know, to our content creators who live and share their modern day stories on social media, from our media pro production houses that structure content for live and online audiences, to the girl on the corner with a TikTok app on her phone, or the boy with his Instagram reel, driving the crowd crazy with comedy, dance, and just a little bit of that indefinable creativity that is Jamaica. That is what we are about. So a cultural awakening is on the horizon, and it is full time. Why are you all here? Because we have now moved beyond the point of knowing the value of our culture to the point of using it to enrich and prosper Jamaicans. As the various stalwarts participating in today's Creative Career Expo will show you, and I really want to thank them all for being here. I looked on the stage and I looked at Delana Forbes and I remember I am part of his father's era and his mother's era. Well, sort of. Right? Mommy's here, you know, stand up and take a bow, Marcia Forbes. And I remember when his first two or three pieces of equipment was coming into Jamaica. I was the one who assisted in terms of getting it in duty free. And I look at Maxine Walters up here, and I'm saying, Maxine and I, we have traveled so many roads. Hey, Maxine, are you still here? She's gone. I remember the movie, The Lunatic, when 
I was doing the PR for the lunatic. And we actually, um, Paul Campbell lived on the streets with a madman to get into character. And when we wanted a front page in the newspaper, we went and met with the madman. He him posted us a couple of times, but eventually he turned up and we were able to get the picture up, the photo up. So now that we are fully investing in what we call the orange economy, which is the largest growing sector in the world, we will see our cultural resources being actualized for the benefit of the Jamaican people. Young people, you are poised. You are poised to benefit from this great economy. You are at the center of our creativity. And so that is why Jamaica Creative, which was, it's, it is a unit in our ministry, and it was called the Cultural and Creative Industries Council. And we decided that we would, for the short name, we call it Jamaica Creative. And so it was established to facilitate the growth and development of the CCI sector. So make no bones about it. Jamaica is a culturally sophisticated country with its finger on the pulse of greatness. There is no other country that has given the world a cultural icon like Bob Marley. There's no other country in the world that has an artist of the century in Bob Marley. We are a great people. Which other country of our size can boast the fastest man and the fastest woman on planet Earth? You really should clap yourself. We are a great people. We have larger than life musicians making larger than life music. And a little dance culture that reinvents itself every two months, every, every two months you have a new move, and still knows how to tap into that universal human spirit that can have people in Japan singing Jamaican Patwa songs and they don't even know the words. They sing the words, but they don't know what. They are really saying, but whatever it is, them just know it nice. That is what we are packaging in this orange economy to share with the world. We are not just sharing movement, sound, and visual spectacle. We are sharing mood, memories, and energy, and just a an hypnotic vibe. The world can never get enough of us. The world can never get enough of Jamaica and the magic that is built in the brand, Jamaica. And most important, we can never get too much of ourselves. They don't say, oh, we enjoy ourselves this afternoon. Everybody just get up and dance. If we want to dance, we just dance. We just have this feel-good spirit that nobody can take it away from us. Within a COVID pandemic, we still a dance. All when them band the dance, we still a dance. That is how we are, right? So what I mean is that we're not just outwardly focused on the development of the orange economy. We're also inwardly focused on building professionalism, innovation, and sustainability. That is why we're here today. We are committed to building out routes of progression for young people. We are showing them people like themselves. And those are the panelists you heard today. They're like you, Jamaicans, like you. Some of them born poor, like some of you. And some of them never know that they would achieve their dreams, but they pursued their dreams. And they're here today to say to you, you can be like me. Right, Clement? That's right. But it doesn't come easy. It's hard work. It's discipline. It's commitment to a vision. It is a stick to ivity, no matter what. And if you move forward and you run into a roadblock, you just easy yourself and just move again. 
you're going to have to be focused and determined, know where you want to go, and don't take no for an answer. Just go for it. All around the globe, people are searching for renewable sources of energy and income. Meanwhile, Jamaica has always known what its greatest resource is. Through our commitment to the orange economy, we are placing culture at the forefront of development in order to drive our economic prosperity. We are committed to building a future for Jamaican creatives. We are in your corner. Every one of you in this room, we are here for you. That is why you're here today. This event is organized to show our faith in the future, our faith in you, and our faith in the Jamaican culture and creativity. So, as I close, I want, to, I want us all to ask ourselves, what does it take to capitalize on Jamaica's potential as a cultural powerhouse? Ask yourself that question. There are no quick solutions, but we have started to find the answers. We are finding the answers in you young people who are here today. We are clearing a path for you, and we want you to make use of the opportunity we give you today. Jamaica Creative has hit the ground running. Here we are building bridges of connection to multiple possibilities and streams of success, both for industry professionals and for young people. This event gives leaders in the field an opportunity to engage with and inspire bright young minds who will help to shape the future, to shape the culture, and to shape the creative industry in Jamaica. So as a minister with responsibility for culture and entertainment, and I must tell you, I am so happy I'm the minister at this time. I'm very happy that I am your minister at this time. It gives me great pleasure and a huge sense of satisfaction to be here with you at an event such as this. It speaks to government's continued commitment to the development of our culture and creative industries. Our intention in the ministry is to create possibilities for all Jamaicans, including our creatives, whose immeasurable sacrifice and entrepreneurial spirit have helped to put Jamaica on the map and continue to make our nation proud. So to those of you who are here in person and for those joining us online, I encourage you all to take this opportunity and run with it. This is and will be an annual event. I'm looking forward to Some of you will get older next year, right? But it doesn't mean that you won't be here because those who are here today, we are hoping you will stay with it, you will stick with it, and you will benefit from being a part of this sector. We had 175 students in attendance. Isn't that wonderful? And today, we are going to offer internship to 10, but it doesn't end there. So far, we have 60 companies on board. And they have indicated that they want us to assign interns to them. Some of them are very specific, the kind of interns they are looking for. But we will find a home for you, a home away from home for you, as you indicate to us what your interests are. The response from corporate Jamaica has been fantastic. So although we're doing 10 today, and I'll be announcing and handing out myself, 
and Minister Terrellong will be handing out the certificates. There'll be 60 more. And after those 60, there will be more because we're not going to stop until we get a corporate entity or a professional to take one of you, hold you by the hand, and guide you through this creative process. What is so beautiful about today is that we have people from town and country. We have young people from across the island. And anyone, there's, a, there's sometimes the attitude that people in Kingston, brighter, can do things better, but that is not true. Some piece of dance me used to pop down there so earlier. And it was a mix of young people from across the island. St. Thomas, St. Elizabeth, St. Mary, Manchester, Clarendon, St. James, St. Catherine, and I could go on. So nowhere in Jamaica is called country anymore. You're from a parish, but you're not from country. Well, in my days, anyone who didn't come from Kingston, they say, where you come from, country? But no, everywhere is urban. Everywhere is town. So students who are going to get their certificates this afternoon were selected based on their resumes. And their resumes were matched with the organizations that have come on board at this time. Some entities were very specific as to the type of students and skills they are looking for. The companies that are on board today, Main Event, Mystique, The Lab, Jamaica Observer, Maxine Walters, who is an institution in film, Jamaican, the Ashe Company, and the Philip, Philip Sherlock Center. So, at this time, all that left for me to do is to say to you that we don't, we don't just talk. We also put our money where our mouth is. We have programs where we do training, and at the end of the training, we actually give grants to assist young people and, and persons in cultural communities to get a little business up and running. So far, this year, we have spent 48 million doing that. We have done training and established programs in Akompong, the maroon community of Akompong. We have done programs in Trenchtown. We have done programs in St. Thomas and the Blue Mountain program where we have assisted persons to set up business in those communities. So I'm saying to you today, you're not just here to learn, but you also will gain once you have reached a stage where you want to do your little business. So at this point, I'm going to ask Marissa. Where's Marissa? Now, if I don't do this, I'll be in trouble. Marissa Benin has put her heart and soul into this event. So Marissa and her team, along with the team from the culture division, I'm going to ask them to stand and I'm going to ask you to give them a big round of applause. Oh, there, come on, Marissa, come on, come on. Come on, you deserve to be up here with me, come. And for those who don't know, Marissa is a big time dancer with the NDTC. So I don't know why she's being, she's behaving as if she's shy. Very nice, very nice. So give her another big round of applause. Thank you, Marissa. So you're going to say what's next. What do I do next? Hand out the certificate? Yes, they have the list. And uh, the logo.
ciò che vuole. You look, you look great. You look fantastic. Fantastic. So, well, let's move over to the left. We're going to eat. All right, Terry. All right, so are we ready? Yes, 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 yes. Are we ready? Look alive, you know, look alive, because you could be getting that paid internship that we just heard the Honorable Minister speak of. The very first student... I'm so excited. <laughs> ...is... Omari Wilson. Omari, look alive, look alive, Omari. This is the beginning. Yes. Well, All right, the next person who'll be walking away with a paid internship is Rio Raymond. She's like, oh my God, oh, make yes, some noise. Yes. Make some noise for Rio. Rio, you have to run like the Shensia song. Come on. As our minister stated, based on the resume, based on the specificities of the particular entity, this is the reason why they are here. Congratulations. And this is me, the Rhea. first 10, because... First 10. Yes. And up next is Javon Vassal. The man get up so fast a yes, while ago. Spring up. I love it. Congratulations, Congratulations. Sir. Congratulations. And we say congratulations to... Neville Brown. And so we move on to Ramon Gordon. And we say congratulations to Roshane Barkley. <laughs> Roshane, we did it! <laughs> We did it, Rush. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Roshane Bartley. So we have one, two, three, four more names. Terry, I feel like we're at Miss Jamaica. Or like the Oscars, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The next person to the stage with a paid internship is... Fabian Dreckett. <laughs> Fab <laughs> Fabian... Fabian, more Fabian. popular than all of us. We're rooting Auntie for GQs. you. <laughs> We're all rooting for you, Fabian. Wow, wow, wow. Congratulations, Fabian. And the next recipient of an internship is... Robin Mori. Robin. Oh. Is that Robin? Robin was like, what I'm going to give you a minute. What kind of delayed response was that? Robin. It's like after, like after 10 seconds. Yeah, Robin like, said, I'm going to give you a minute to bask. Congratulations. Oh my God, should we announce this one together? All yes. Right. So the next person walking away with a paid internship is Marisol, Marisol Blake. Blake. We knew it. Marisol, congratulations to Marisol. Marisol oh, is not okay. here, but I'm sure she heard. Last but not least, and as the minister said, this is just 10, but in honor of our 60th year, there will be more to announce. But just for today, the person closing out our 10 paid interns is, I'll give you the honor. You know why? Joanne Campbell. Come on, my Campbell. I'm so excited. <laughs> Another round of applause, of applause for all of the recipients. And let this be a lesson. Thank you so very much 
to the minister and of course the minister of state thank you thank so you. very much and marissa again congratulations i guess this is also going back to what um alicia moulton white said earlier about curating and creating your content with intention even the resume process is a very important process so it doesn't mean that maybe you don't have the skills but maybe this is the opportunity for you to step back and go how can i improve and pull out the, the skills that will really jump off of that um, resume. And so. sometimes, guys, it's not just only about what you're putting on the resume, but how you're framing the resume, the approach, the angle that you're taking and the presentation. Absolutely. So this is just a moment yes. to learn. So, speaking of learning, I'm going to invite to give our vote of thanks someone I truly admire from afar, someone I, who is younger than me, but I admire and look up to, she is the president of the Guild of the University of the West Indies. A youth, a youth, leader, night. A youth leader, a yes. girl in tech, a yes. woman in tech. A smart woman. A future and present leader, the one and the only, ready strong, Daniel, Daniel Mullins. Mullins. Ready strong. Honorable Minister Babsy Grange, Honorable Minister of State, Mr. Terry Long, Permanent Secretary, Denzel Thorpe, Ms. Marissa Benane, the National Director of the Jamaica Creative, distinguished guests, hosts, panelists, and students, a pleasant good afternoon. Henri Matisse once said, creativity takes courage. Thus to conceptualize, plan, and execute the Jamaica Creative Career Expo we must require an immense amount of courage. From Ms. Ranice Barrett of the University Singers, the incredible performers from the Ashe Company, and the singing from Island Kings, we heard powerful vocals reminding us of why we're here as a Caribbean and a Jamaican people. This set the stage for the amazing and talented hosts, Ms. Terry Carell Reed and Mr. Roshane Campbell who have led us wonderfully through this program. We greatly appreciate your talent and your services. Our presenters, we've heard from you on the performing arts, film, culinary, fashion, creative services, content creators, entertainment, and production. You reminded us to find our ukum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where, you, where who you are meets why you are. They have taught us that this is a professional space, that you must train and maintain the right attitude and approach to be successful in. I think I speak for all students at this point when I say, to be in the presence of such talent and expertise is an honor. Our guest speaker, Mr. Clement Ishmael, cemented the need for us to find good mentors, Jamaican at that and to remind us to be bold, be prepared, and believe in yourself. You reminded us that whatever you can dream, you can begin to do. Now all students and student leaders know the yearnings of our students to explore new industries and find our passion. We all know that feeling of wondering if this creative thing really got to work out and put food on the table. Thus, on behalf of all students here, I want to give a wholehearted thank you to the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, and especially the unit of the Jamaica Creative. We want to thank you for doing more than just talking, but actually sending the elevator back down. We've learned a wealth of knowledge, expanded our networks, and even gotten the, the opportunity to be awarded internships in our field. That is a life-changing moment for many of the students in here. Thank you for a renewed sense of purpose, a renewed vision, and ultimately for boldly investing in us as the future of the creative industry. To close, i leave us with the same words that our guest speaker gave us earlier. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it because boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Thank you. Well said. Thank you so very much, Thank you. Daniel Thank Mullings. You.
I mean, Sorry. she did a fantastic job at just encapsulating everything with the same power, the same energy, and the same vibe of a creative. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, how was today? I give it a, I give it a hundred out of how ten. How was today? Yeah. Perfect. It was okay, or was it like mm -mm. on a fan on a okum? All right. Please um, don't forget to follow the page. I mean, this is not this is just the beginning, right? Yes. This is not where it ends. There's a there's a page um, the, the, the Jamaica, Jamaica Creative, Creative eight seven six that you might want to follow just to keep up to date to see what is going on. The Jamaica Creative has a lot of ideas and more initiatives that are going to come such as their, their creative um, directory, yes. ensuring that everything is formalized. And the QR codes on the tables give you access to the digital magazine. So you heard from the different panelists and you're like, okay, I want to do a deeper dive on this person or whatever, you can take advantage of that. And speaking of taking advantage, the persons who, one, earned the internships, Make this is business. your moment. Make the most of it. Novia and everyone who came here spoke about sending the elevator down, but you can also walk across the office. Network, share with the persons who are in your space and let them know what you're learning because each one can reach one and, and teach, teach one. one. Yes. Absolutely. So on behalf of Roche and Rosh oh, Cam Campbell. I'm so happy. <laughs> and myself. Thank you so very much for your kind attention, your cooperation, and your, um, your, your openness to just share and exchange in this space. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Please travel safely. Stay safe. Stay safe and stay healthy. Do take care and be creative. And we'll see you next year. Next year, we'll the Minister Senate. Next, next year. Babsa Grange, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. I'm Delia Harris. I'm Chef Brian Lumley. I'm Delana Forbes. I am Nadia Rothmer. I am Hans Apartment. I am Ian Randall. My name is Kimala Bennett. My name is Solomon Sharp. My name is Michael Holgate. I am a player in the orange economy. That is, the entertainment, culture and creative industries is the fastest growing sector in the world. And is based on world-class delivery of goods and services to intellectual property. So, when I say orange economy, I mean I am performing arts. I am film. I am publishing. I am physical culture, and that is sport. I am an investor, driver, and facilitator. I am technical theater. I am culinary arts. I am film. I am the performing arts. We are the creative industries. Come hear from us at the Jamaica Creative Career Expo. And let us build something great together.